chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India.
Seriously? Checkmate. Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew! Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I win Bishop C5, D4 and Queen E4. Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to top eight. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India.
seriously? Checkmate. Aim chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and helps. Hello everyone, welcome to the second day, the second round of the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour final from San Francisco. We have seen some stellar chess yesterday, Magnus Carlsen beating Wesley So in a dramatic match with a lot of ups and downs. All the other matches were also very tight and uh, well, that's exactly what we are waiting for. That's what we expect, that's what we are hoping. And we, of course, have to come up with the apology yeah? that we know exactly that this is a very late hour already in Central European time, nine o'clock. It's, it's not something that, that is usual. And our Indian friends with 1.30 a.m., very big story for, for you guys. I understand you want to loot for Arjun Arigaishi, for Pragnanda. They are playing all these incredible matches. But unfortunately, this is the situation. To compensate everyone for all this uh, un comfortabilities for, for all these inconveniences. Let me introduce my co-commentator, my very good friend, the one and only Rustam Kasimjan of Hi Rustam. Hi Peter, hi guys. Yeah, I actually don't think we need to apologize because I'm pretty sure that the Indians are, are up for this occasion and, uh, and they're watching, but also I think there are so many Indians all over the world. I'm pretty sure that uh, fans of Arjun and Pragnananda, they are not limited to one country. I'm sure they're all over the place. That's that's true. Having said, we already spoke about this, that we know that Pragnanda is in San Francisco. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he basically has the jet lag of this 12 hours or something like this between uh, India and San Francisco. But he, I think, came in advance, so he should mm -hmm. be more or less fine. On the other hand, Arjun Arigashi is playing from India, starting from 1.30 a.m. We mentioned this yesterday that, and you told me that sometimes Arjun is even working on chess at like 4 a.m. or something like this. But I would like to ask you, is it the same to work on chess when you can also rely on computer and it's after all not about mm -hmm. the results or when you have to focus like on every single move? It should be different. It, should, it is, of course, different, right? It is different because I think with, with training, you have periods, right? You have ups and downs of energy. Uh, so sometimes you have this period when you're training and you're not really getting anything done. And then two hours later, you are in top sh shape again. And when you are playing chess, you cannot afford this. Chess is like this, right? We cannot make a single mistake because a single mistake spoils your day, right? Exactly. And also this format, yeah, that just as we have seen yesterday, Arjun against Duda, it was a very interesting. I mean, Duda made this spectacular or interesting speculative sacrifice. 
Uh, Arjun Kanta did basically refuted the sacrifice, but then he lost control. And after losing the control and losing that game, basically I felt like just at night it will be impossible to come back. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's very uh, difficult to come back from a disappointment in this format. Maybe you could just, and we still have some time before the round, maybe you could pull up that game and uh, show the decisive moment. So well, we can... actually, I think we also owe our uh, audience the, the standings after round one because last night it was already 2 a.m. Ah, okay, we, yes. I, I wasn't exactly sure if we, we showed it. Well, basically, we know that Magnus Carlsen has beaten Wesley So, so he got the three points. Janshistov Duda beat Arjun Arigaishi. Shakri Mamed Yalov has beaten uh, Pragnanda. They all got three points because they won in the so-called classical format in the four rapid games. But there is a catch. Anish Giri beat uh, Liam Le in the Blitz playoff. So they are actually splitting some points. It's the ice hockey system. Two points for Anish for winning the match and one point for Liam. Uh, and of course, the, the other three guys remain with three points. They are definitely hoping to bounce back. There is a big game, big match between Magnus Kars and Arjun Arigaishi. I mean, what is your take? Uh, did you talk to Arjun? How would you motivate him for this match? Well, I thought, <laughs> I thought I had enough uh, going on last night anyway. Yeah? So no, I leave Arjun to his own devices when he's playing. Unless he asks for something. And uh, I know that he was struggling against Carlson lately, right? Like in last couple of tournaments, he was doing very, very well uh, until Magnus would stop him somewhere, right? So I think Magnus is, is still a very difficult opponent for him. Well, as usually to everyone, but I, I exactly understand what you mean because, yeah, he was doing very well and then against Magnus he was suffering, but in aim chess, which I also missed out on commenting because I was, I was unfortunately ill and I was lying in bed, you know, like completely destroyed. Uh, but I do recall that I think Arjun beat Magnus in one of the games and it was some very spectacular, crazy uh, game and this might give him the confidence. And uh, okay, I mean, I think always whenever you beat for the very first time Magnus, yeah, then you get this confidence that you know that it's almost impossible, but after all you did it, you might be able to do it again. Well, that's true, yeah. But then you also have other examples, yeah. Because, for instance, Caruana didn't win a classical game against Magnus since 2015, I think. So he was, he knew he could do this because he has done it several times. And then at some point, it just stopped, right? Yeah, because then also the opponent is paying much more attention, yeah. He's not risking anymore so much, yeah, because. Mm -hmm. Usually when a so-called weaker player beats the stronger player, it's often the, the reason that the, the stronger player is taking deliberately more risk than he would otherwise. Yeah, He doesn't play his main openings because it might be a little bit too drawish or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you, you give your chance much more options. But also let's uh, let's talk around about other matches. Anish Giri, I think he Anish is the player who arrives first to the board and and not to the board, to the to the monitor. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Anish is taking on Prague. What is your thought on this match? Well, uh, to be to be honest, I don't know Prague too well. Um, I mean, I know he's very very strong, but I have never worked with him. I never had close contact with him, so I don't know him as a player too well. Uh, Anish, on the other hand, uh, made an almost perfect impression yesterday. Okay, his interview sounded uh, a bit unhinged, but I think it has uh, other reasons. Uh, but his chess made a very, very stable impression. Uh, like, I, I think he played, what, six games, four rapid games and two blitz games. I would hesitate uh, to say that he made a single mistake in those six games. Yeah, maybe he played them more or less flawlessly. Yeah, very, very clean performance. What do you think? I have the same impression and I'm always very happy to see Anish in his best shape because mm -hmm. I feel like in his best shape, he is like very, very up there on the top. I mean, I, I believe like top five in the world, uh, but he has to prove it. Yeah, he has to play this perfect chess, what he's capable of with very good preparation, with total control. Yeah, he's, as I think you mentioned also yesterday that he's not the type of guy, if it gets completely crazy, then he's as comfortable as when he has everything under mm -hmm. control. Yeah, no, he likes to keep things under control. This is a difficult bit in this uh, with this time control, right? To 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 have everything in your hands. So we'll see how it goes. Yesterday was just perfect for him. Yeah, and then there is also yeah. Here we see the camera with all the players. I mean, they are getting ready. Uh, there is also Liam Le against uh, Wesley So. What is your take on this match? 
Well, usually it's very much 50-50, right? Uh, in his best shape, uh, Liam, he's uh, one of the best in the world, at least in this format. Uh, but also Wesley will be eager to come back, right, from his uh, loss yesterday. Um, I'll normally say maybe, okay, they both lost yesterday, but I think Liam is maybe a bit better at recovery, but okay, we'll see. Yeah, for, for sure. Both of them lost. Yeah, Liam lost in the Blitz playoffs, so at least he has one point and also collected already two and a half thousand dollars. We already have liftoff uh, in a couple of games. Mamed Yadov against Duda, the match that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet. This was the this is the match that featured uh, the aim chess uh, final between these two players and in some incredible fight, finally, I think Duda managed to, to win that uh, event. And uh, Shakli also played stellar chess yesterday. The same applies to Duda. What is your take on this match? Yeah, I was very impressed basically by Shakli uh, recent form. Um, but also Duda has been getting stronger every month. Yeah, I have this feeling. So difficult to say. Both of them very, very impressive. Wow. And okay, we have one Grunfeld with Bishop F4. We have Arjun Eligaishi going for Knight FC against Magnus. So no E4 and no peers, but Magnus goes for it. Knight FC G6 inviting E4, D4. Please come. D4. Will, I mean, let's let's ask Rustam, the expert. Will we see E4 or will Arjun just say, no, no, I will play something else? Well, uh, I think if Bishop G7, there is a good chance to see E4. So I think um, Magnus will probably go knight f6 now. Maybe he was uh, inviting something else, yeah? Maybe e4, c5 or something else. Yeah, but it's also kind of, yeah, it's uh, very interesting to see that Magnus after knight f6, g6, for a, we are kind of trying to understand what would have been Magnus's choice after e4, because if he would go anyway bishop g7, then it's kind of would be logical to play bishop g7 after d4. On the other hand, if, for example, something like c5, then, uh, of course, there is a good reason why Magnus is taking his time. Or, or is, it, is it surprising? Is it strange to think or move to? Well, I think Magnus is choosing between various uh, also formats of match strategy, right? He could go d5 and make it very, very solid. He could go bishop g7 asking for trouble, right? And he's asking for trouble. Magnus says, you know what? I went g6. I want to go bishop g7. And uh, and okay, we are seeing Arjun playing super professional. This knight fc bishop c4 move order, I think, is also something that Magnus himself likes to play with white. Yeah, trying to be very solid, not uh, going for any adventures. And, and Magnus blitzes out knight c6. Yeah, shows that he's not surprised. Yeah, he likes this knight on c6. Yeah, usually it's not a very good move, but he likes to provoke d5 and to go back you know, for some reason. Yeah, he's also putting pressure because I think the main point of bishop c4 is that if black continues in the split with knight f6, then white has this very comfortable way of protecting the e4 pawn with queen e2. Mm -hmm. Then you castle, then always e4, e5 is hanging in the air. The knight is a big target on f6. And uh, the move knight c6, Puts pressure on the d4 pawn, so white is not comfortably getting ready for queen e2. Eventually, bishop g4 might come at some point, of course, not at the moment with bishop takes f7 check trick, but white anyway plays the prophylactic h3. Ah, yes, of course, because if white would castle, then would Magnus actually go for knight f6 and queen e2 could be met maybe by bishop g4? Yeah, it's also possible that Black can go e5 at some point and try to bring this knight to e7, right? And uh, at some point, some e5 knight, d5 knight, e7. Um, yeah, well, I mean, in any case, now we see h3, knight f6, queen e2 on the board. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, basically, e5 will most probably happen. They're probably, uh, you mean if Black castles, then, may, then maybe white goes e5, right? This starts yes. to look like Alikine. Takes, yeah, takes knight d5 and it might be uncomfortable yeah you you don't want to let that happen but okay this is now a little bit of a slow affair let's take a quick look at the other games i see a big theoretical battle between uh liam land wesley so 
playing one of my, you know, favorite lines. It featured from C4 is the English and the classical Four Knights, the Hungarian system. I mean, basically in, in the beginning of 90s, every single Hungarian player was reacting like this after C4. And because it's a good system, everybody, I think, kept it in their repertoires. So G3, Queen B6, Knight DB5, Knight E5, one of the sharpest and most critical lines of, of this line, Bishop F4, Knight FG4. And now hold on to your seats, everyone, after E3, A6, Queen A4. This is the moment when I have spent the most time in the hist I mean, I think probably in the history or in, in chess history, because I spent after this queen a4. Ah no, no, because Levon played queen a4 here against me. He played yeah, queen, queen a4 here. I mean, when the pawn on f2 was hanging in Morelia uh, 2008, and I spent 86 minutes. I have the score sheet, that's why I remember exactly. I mean, once upon a time, I'm taking a look 86 minutes that should I take it or not. Finally, I opted for this g5. And we got very similar structure like in the game. But 86 minutes is not a record at not all. Not a record, yeah? Not a, not a record, not at wow, all. Wow, then I have to try harder next time, yeah? Well, you, you, you know that uh, before your game uh, against Levon, some 10 years before that, two and a half hours of 40 moves was still normal. So the records are much closer to two, two hours per move. Yes, so I should have said that the modern time era, yeah, then, then yeah, maybe probably I would modern have... times is quite good. Yeah, even Karpov Kasparov, I think uh, Kasparov once spent one hour and 27 minutes in the English in the famous game. You remember where Kasparov Karpov played e3 this gambit, and then he was hesitating for one and a half hours whether to take this pawn or not. Ah, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was so much, yeah, yeah. in Sevilla, I think, yeah, 1987. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Yeah, because it was, I always played C4, C5, all these C4, E5 games I have never followed so historically. Yeah, it's uh, like I know it happened and I know how it happened, but when when exactly I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure. But I do know that this G5 stuff, this is, for example, Lottie, Dom I mean, uh, Lottie, pardon me, Vashie Lagraf against uh, Dominguez from Istanbul Olympia 2012, something like this. Yeah, this always this 10 years back. Yeah, 2012 seems to be very important for chess theory. Uh, recently also, Maxim lost another important game in this um, um, in this line at some Grand Prix against... Uh, against Pretke. Against, against Pretke, yeah. Pretke, yeah. He, he played at some point uh, a line which didn't look dangerous, but it had a very specific point and Maxim just walked into it, yeah. Yeah, it, it was something very similar, uh, bishop e2, and then somewhere white played some g4 and then h4 against short castle. Yeah, I castle. think it was queen c2 instead of bishop e, e2. Mm -hmm. And then Maxim somewhat naively castled and white played g4, after which preventing h4 turned out to be impossible. This is very much like, like Polga Berkesh, yeah, I think. Yes, from Budapest, yeah. Yeah. You play g4 and then h4 and boom, yeah, and you can never stop the opening of the h file. Yes, yeah, it, it was it was a shocking uh, idea from Judith because she sacrificed the piece to to block it. Here, in fact, White was White has given up the dark square bishop. Yeah, one could argue that giving up a dark square bishop against a knight uh, it's almost like sacrificing a piece, but mm -hmm. still a bit different. So bishop e2 played here. Black plays the move h6, so one can understand immediately that Wesley wants to keep everything under control. And king b1. Having played this game against Levon, and we finally reached, I think, very much the similar position. Uh, because, I, as I said, after queen a4, I did play the move g5. And then he traded on uh, e5. Yeah, so something like this happened. And then later on, we anyway reached this e3 long castle, I mean, long castle e3 business and a6 knight d4. And I remember that. I was thinking that I should be uh, doing perfectly fine with my pair of bishop and, and dark square bishop. I, I really love it. But during the game, maybe because of the time pressure, I was I was non-stop. I, I mean, I just couldn't get this comfortable position that I really wanted. And I was suffering. Yeah, it looks to me like a, a, an uncomfortable position for black, mainly because your king is just not 100%, right? You don't really want it on E8. You don't really want it on G8. It's just not 100%. Yeah, and, and also you have this problem with developing the bishop from, from C8. Yeah, that somehow I feel like 
exactly the reason why the queen on a4 is bothering that you can't simply keep the king on e8 and mm -hmm. then go d6 bishop d7 first and let's take it from there yeah? and then somehow you would be more flexible i feel but this queen on a4 is also bothering uh finally knight c6 hitting the knight on d4 trying to open up the bishop on g7 and thanks to the queen some pressure on the long diagonal very sharp position yeah, well, I would. Well, I could already look at some sacrifices, right? Like knight e4, for instance. Knight e4, yeah, and then trying to go for this d6 square with c4, yeah. c5 connected. Well, in fact, knight takes d4, c5 exists immediately, right? But then maybe you have queen c6. Yes, then we have queen c6. Yeah, no, my uh, idea was actually to take on d4 back. So E D, bishop, bishop takes D4, D4. And queen A3. Ah, uh, wow, like this, yeah. And uh, I don't know, this king is not feeling very comfortable. Yeah, not at all. I mean, uh, it reminds me of some pause and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand why you were uncomfortable against Levon back then. Um, yeah, especially with like twenty-five minutes uh, for for twenty-five moves or something like this. It was <laughs> very unpleasant without any uh, additional increment. But I managed to hold that game. You know, it was incredible because usually I'm always losing to Levon with the black pieces. And mm -hmm. it was one of these handicap games, in fact, that I, I did not lose. Yeah, So I'm very proud of that game, but I'm ashamed of so many that I lost uh, completely stupidly. I mean, stupidly because Levon played simply very strongly. But I mean, uh, it's, it's always in my mind Yeah, that, okay, losing almost all the games is a little bit too much. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, this, this is what I feel about my games against you, you know? Should have lost all of them. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. I mean, at least. But maybe you are one of the only guys against whom I have such an incredibly good score, yeah? Now you have a really good score against me. You have a really bad score against Levon. And I have a really very, very good score against Levon. Yeah, sometimes chess works in a mysterious way, right? Exactly. This is so, so true, you know, also mm -hmm. in this... Linares area, yeah, when, when I was era when I was playing like almost every year, and then there were these three, four players, and you know that this guy is suffering against this guy, the other guy mm -hmm. suffers against the other guy, but uh, against the other guy, he has zero problems, and there was just no logic behind it. Yeah, it's all somehow psychological, probably also connected to opening repertoire and, and things like this, maybe some uh, memories, yeah, which suddenly turned out to be negative, and then you are influenced by it. Yeah, chess is so much uh, psychology. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it just it's impossible to get out of this. I also had this. I had two opponents like this. One of them was you, and one was Gelfand. It's like every time I would play you guys, it just you would have a good day, I would have a bad day. Yeah, it just would never change. Um, yeah, but to be fair, I think I also got quite a lot of white against you. Yeah, at some point you had like seven whites or so. Yeah, yeah, this this definitely helped because I mean I felt like you were this type of player who was always very dangerous with the white pieces. Yeah, I mean uh, whoever played against you with the black pieces had to you know first hope to survive and then see what happen ne happens next. But with black you were exactly because if you are so sharp and so dynamic with white, it comes at the cost. Yeah, that your black repeta was not as solid and gave me chances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how I felt. That, but okay, let's uh, let's forget about us. Uh, let's to let's the see. Games, yeah, yeah he, White played f4. Okay, this is a very sharp position. We also have to move on. Uh, one game that I just very quickly want to discuss is is the one I did of Duda game. That okay, this is a special Grunfeld ending. I don't think that things are heating up yet, so we can move on. Uh, the Magnus game is seemingly. Pretty solid, but is uh, Arjun fighting for the d5 squares? I'm taking on f6, knight d5. Well, one would have to calculate, right? Bishop takes f6. How does black recapture? Yeah, bishop f6 played, bishop f6, and then knight d5. And then the question how do you protect the pawn? If you find a good way, it should be fine. Normally, what like rook a c8, and then white has queen g4. Yeah, maybe slightly annoying. Yeah, the, this knight on d I mean, if uh, Black would have king on g7 or the bishop already on g7, things would be perfectly under control. And if Black kicks the knight out, but some concrete problems. Yeah, not so easy to make a good move, right? For instance, you cannot go rook d7, loses a rook. Yes. And um, if you go 
Queen C6, I don't know. Queen C6, I have a feeling that having knight E7 in the air is not helpful, right? It's and you can helpful. also never kick the knight anymore, yeah? You cannot kick it uh, out. And okay, Queen D6 looks very awkward. So Rook AC8 is probably necessary. And, and then you want it to hit me with Queen G4. Queen G4. And now maybe you can... You cannot go Rook D6. This is really awkward, right? Rook D6, Knight F6, you lose material. Yeah, so I will have to play Rook E8 probably. Maybe you can go Rook E8. Maybe I have to. I mean, okay, if I can somehow get out, it should be fine. But yeah, it's so tricky. But it's also very concrete. Yeah, if you get out, you get out. Yeah, and there will be not so much left. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, and Magnus still has like ten minutes against twelve for Arjun. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm basically expecting if already Magnus went for it, then he knows what he's doing. Yeah. No, white, I mean, white has some tricks. Yeah, for instance, instead of queen g4, if white plays queen f3, for instance, then black cannot go bishop g7, right? Because of knight takes c7, or at least it's dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous. But I mean, I feel like king g7 should help black. No, it's uh, king g7 is probably always the um, yeah stability. And now we yeah. are ready to play c6. So yeah, just very quickly to, to reach this position. So HC knight f6. Yeah, what we expected. Yeah, Magnus did play e5. Yeah, Arjun, I feel like also he's trying to be as solid as possible. Yeah, he doesn't want to be provoked. Makes all this sensible. Wow, king h2. Definitely not a move that I would have expected. King h2 feels very early, right? Yeah, it's the, the most mysterious move I have ever seen. It's uh, but but it can't really be a mouse slip because why are you what are you doing with your mouse there? But uh, yeah, very strange. Bishop e6, knight c3, rook d8, uh, bishop e3, a6, takes takes, and bishop g5. Ah, okay, so that's how we got. But it already shows that Arjun's play was a little bit hesitant. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that Magnus feels himself under any pressure because of this. Yeah, I think we can we can try to find the logic behind King H two. Uh, if we try, ah, I thought that you already have the answer. No, 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 we can't try. Yes, well, I I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe we have other things to take care of. Maybe, maybe life is too short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too short for this. We have to ask Arjun after the game, but uh, there is also a stunning, uh, sharp position in. Anish Giri against Pragnanda. I mean, this is this A3 same -ish. I mean, it did start from FC, but basically it's very much the same. Yeah, FC C5. Same -ish stuff of the Ninso. Very fashionable line. 90 to B6. Yeah, it's uh, considered that this C4 pawn is an eternal weakness. Black is getting ready to go for Knight A5, Bishop A6, targeting this pawn. White usually is up for some uh, direct attack to compensate for it. Knight e2, knight g3 played. Castles, bishop e2, bishop a6. Castles, knight a5. Basically, white will have to abandon the pawn on c4. White goes f4. Yeah, quite quite typical, I think, also, that yeah, mm -hmm. f5, bishop g5 is the idea. cd4, cd4, bishop takes c4. F5. Wow, this is not exactly Anish style. Yeah, it's a completely different chess than yesterday. Well, I, he must have uh, had some work in this line also with black, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I mean, F5, H6. Yeah, covering the G5 square. Very logical. Makes a lot of sense. Bishop takes, knight takes, rook B1. I'm, I'm just going quickly because we are reaching some position where white has already made his move. E5, D5. Rook c8 and knight h5 on the board. This is the current position. I so mean, a little the... bit strange. No, I mean, where is the compensation? That's my first question to you. I always thought that this attack was a bit more dangerous than it looked. Mm -hmm. um, at least this was kind of my, my feeling. I know if you've seen um, games of, of Salem in this line, Yes, of course. I mean, I, he's a very good friend, very close friend. So I do know that he loves this type of positions. And when I saw that this happened, I was thinking like, wow, this is Salem style. Anish playing mm -hmm. in Salem style. 
yeah, sometimes um, it doesn't look like an attack. And if it becomes an attack, then it tends to be very dangerous. Um, wow, but I have to ask you, this knight c4 to a5. Ah, this rook b4 is a blunder, no? Yeah, oh, no, it's a blunder, sorry. but... Rook... But he played rook b4, I thought he blundered rook takes c1, but knight takes f6 is actually a check, yeah? Knight f6 is a check, but I, I think that knight a5 is a super impressive move, yeah? That it looks like the knight on c4 is the most active piece, why should you remove it? But Prague removes it, opens up the c file, yeah, for the rook, also covers the bc square, so there is no chance for white to create some rook lift. Mm -hmm. And who knows, after rook c4, maybe the knight will jump to c5, putting pressure on e4 eventually. Yeah, I think mainly he was just preventing rook b3, yeah, which seems very important. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a multi-purpose move. We should mm -hmm. also highlight that, of course, taking on e4 probably runs into queen g4. It does, doesn't look like a good idea with double attack. And, and then knight g5 is met by h4. So Anish opted for rook, knight a5, rook b4. And Prague enters with the rook to c3, making sure that, you know what, not only the rook should not uh, get to the third rank, but nothing should really disturb me in the in the third rank. Rook b4 looks a bit clumsy, right? I mean, this rook is just purely defensive on b4, right? It just doesn't do anything. Doesn't at does. all. I mean, I feel like Salem would have never played the move like this. Well, uh, Salem would rather play rook b3 than rook b4, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, but but this is the point, yeah, that, uh, I mean, stylistically, the positions that uh, Anish played yesterday suited him so well, yeah? And then mm -hmm. he had this total contra everything, this speculative pawn sacrifice whatsoever is not exactly his cup of tea. I mean, I could imagine him much more on the black side. Yeah, well, also... having having said that, look at this. Some incredible action is happening in uh, Liam against uh, Wesley. It it featured uh, knight c6 f4. That that was the moment. So Anish did not want to open up things. I mean, Wesley did not want to open up things. Pardon me. Queen c7, queen c2, and Wesley wanted to sacrifice the pawn with b5, and got hit by knight c3 to b5. Wow. Takes, takes. Bishop b7. Bishop yeah, black FC. lost a, a pawn in a way, but um, but now he has the bishops and some play, right? Yeah, who knows who benefited from this, yeah? Yeah, if he blundered this pawn, then maybe it was one of those lucky blunders. Yeah, look at this. West is down to five minutes. Basically, it signals that it wasn't all planned. Yeah, black is threatening c5, I would think. Maybe white needs to, to play queen c5, yeah? Use this chance to block this pawn. Yeah, that's a nice move. Yeah, Although because if black gets c5... Yeah, classically, queen is a bad blocker, but I do not want to allow c5. I really don't. Wow, white, white tries something similar with knight bc, but I'm expecting that c5 should work, yeah, after knight bc. Yeah, knight b3, c5... Um... Just and can't believe, yeah, that you can hold on to this. Well, he, maybe he wants to take and play queen c4, but then this is a very shaky setup. Yeah. No, this is actually shocking because Liam has 10 minutes on his clock and then uh, going for night. I mean, maybe we are missing something, but yeah, I can hardly, you know, hold myself back. Yeah, c5 is a bullet move. Yeah, c5 will probably happen. Then maybe he wants to take uh, on... Uh... B7, uh, queen B7, I would think. I saw the rook takes. I actually wanted to take with the rook. Ah, and you just threaten C4 and... And I even to... want to double, yeah, just... What about rook C1 now? Rook C1, yeah, it's it's correct, yeah, rook C1, and maybe then just rook C8. Rook C8, queen E4. Putting some resistance, yeah? Okay, well, C4. hopefully, yes. C4. <laughs> But the tactics will work out for, for you. Yeah, C5 on the board. I'm really curious. I mean, I mean, can we... Let's take a look at Liam's face. C5. He's not happy. Not happy at all. And and Queen takes. Your move happened. Queen B7. I Queen B7 does look a bit more um, natural to me. Mm. It's possible that both moves are possible. I think that probably you, you tricked me, yeah? Because uh, you mentioned the blockading move Queen C4 and 
I thought mm-hmm. like I want to hit it with rook d4, yeah? So that's why in my mind I took with the rook. Yeah, but in fact, the, the, the thing is after queen c4, for instance, queen g2 was awkward to meet, I think. Wow, yeah, we have to show this. Yeah, so if white blocks with queen c4, then queen g2 might be a move. At least it, it felt awkward, yeah? Liam plays rook h1. Um, no, but this is this is not right. Yeah, rook fc8. I mean, okay, what kind of dragon is this? This is like... Uh, it, it usually wins by itself. I don't know. Well, white can still block, right? With queen c4. Also, once again, queen is not a good blocker, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah, probably that's that's the reason why white played the move rookie one, so that this queen g2 idea is not met by rookie two. Mm -hmm. But okay, there is just no reason. Maybe you just move queen a8 and then get ready for rook b4, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah queen a8 looks like a good move. Yeah. Man. Yeah, why White's position is is uh, shaky. Yeah, and and very strange because I mean, especially if you know that your opponent is low on the clock. Yeah, you don't want to give him this clear play yeah, because then he can just speed up and and start uh, attacking you, which is mm -hmm. very unpleasant. Your your move queen c five was so much more natural. Yeah, can he go? And and, and, and look at this. Liam was holding his head like he's just not happy of what he has done. Yeah. No, it's very, of course, it's tough. Yeah, when you lose, uh, when you lose a match the way he lost yesterday, and then you know, uh, you are struggling already with White in the first game. But how bad is it if I play Rook E two? Or is it just kind of bad on on general grounds? Yeah, probably on general because yeah, just to highlight that yeah, C four isn't the final decisive threat because then the knight blocks the the bishop. But I'm much more worried that maybe just some very easy, simple like moves like queen a6, eventually also touching the a2 pawn with rook a. I mean, there are so many dangers. Now, well, queen a6 is probably a very good one, yeah, because it creates a threat of uh, of rook a8, maybe even rook takes b3 sometimes. There is a bunch of things going on. Yeah, there. and rook e2 played. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. Actually, rook b3, a, b, rook a8 also might mm -hmm. be a very unpleasant threat. Will we see queen a6? Queen a6 looks looks natural. Also, queen like f3. Yeah, I don't know if it's good, but it's sort of interesting looking. Yeah, too. Wow, I mean, uh, you you really want to use all angles of the board. Yeah, queen g2, <laughs> queen f3. Wow, even queen f3. Yeah, also with the idea of hitting the rook. But to to me, somehow this queen a6 looks so much more natural. Uh, queen a6 looks, looks wow good. and bishop takes b2 but it's spectacular yeah. but is, is it necessary i thought this was selling the advantage a bit cheaply eh? because okay queen takes b2 c4 he definitely has a good position with black but i wanted more yeah it's kind of risk free of course yeah for black but uh but now i can go for instance uh, well, rook d2, I cannot go, eh? Because he has c3, so I need to prepare this. Yeah, something like rook c1 or rook c2 was my other thought, yeah, that you can try to treat something, but it's not so easy. Okay, white king is, uh, is yeah. vulnerable, is immediately vulnerable. It's interesting that black played g5, but it's white's king that is more vulnerable. Yeah, the open files, yeah, this uh, this b file is, is tremendous. This pawn is ready to be pushed. Yeah, bishop b2, I mean, what a turn of events. Yeah, Liam was trying to target Wesley's king and suddenly his king is in a dire straits. Well, sometimes God bless you in the afternoon and curse you in the, curse you in the evening, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, I can imagine, yeah, that this we, we do see the evolution bar thinking that maybe this is uh, not so problematic for white but over the board it's also so scary i mean how do we stabilize that's that's tough yeah yeah i i basically consider myself a good stabilizer but i'm not coming up with ideas here yeah take c full on the board maybe just Go for counterplay G H A F G five. Wow, I mean that's that's the spirit looking for counterplay. I was trying to defend somehow, but C B G H. 
Wow, just like you have incredible nerves, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Wow, and then be a king A1, yeah? Thank be you. Very king much. A1, and I'm also threatening mate, yeah? So, yeah? Yes. Wow, fantastic stuff, yeah. And queen g7 checkmate. It's a threat. Ah, uh, wow. Okay, so Liam has to be very careful. He's under a lot of pressure, but things are heating up in Anish Gideagon's Prague game. White's ops for knight g7. Is this, is this a real sacrifice or a desperate? Well, he has queen c1, yeah? So let's say king takes g7. Yeah, then queen c1, double attack on the rook, and bishop takes h6. So if we don't want to let this have, we can even play a move like queen c8, maybe. What queen about c8. queen c8? Might be a very good move, yeah? Queen c8, queen b2. Queen b2, okay. I'm also tempted to give this check. Yeah, Somehow. Queen c5, king h1. I mean, this knight is also not really going anywhere now that if, if I'm controlling things. Knight c4 I can play because the rook is hanging now. Yeah, it looks like it will collapse for white somehow. But wow, but actually king... plug goes for king take g7. We might be seeing some uh, fireworks, queen c1. Yeah, this is all happening so fast. So rook b3, for instance, um, bishop takes h6. King H7. I mean, pardon me, you said look D or B? B. B, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Bishop H6, King H7. I was just trying to understand. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, something like Queen G5, Rook G8, Queen H4, yeah? But Rook, H, Rook G4 comes. Rook G4 comes, yes. Yeah, that's the problem. And then look at this Rook on B3 covering H this square. Yeah. All right, so we have to slow down. Yeah, queen c1. Is this just a bluff? I, I you know what, what I noticed, you can't bluff plug. I mean, he's so cold blooded, uh, incredible calculator. He doesn't uh, mind being attacked, he doesn't see any ghost. Yeah, he just calculates. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, black can go rook a2 as well, right? Has some sort of also, take take a look, guys, at the playing hole and and uh, the body language of Anish. Yeah, he's leaning back like he doesn't trust his attack. No, this. this what are you reading from uh, this impression? His body language. I think it's the other way around. No, he's trying to create uh, an impression of somebody who is comfortable. Maybe like he knows he everything. Yeah, what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm not buying it. Now, now Anish is leaning back uh, forward on the screen. Well, now he has to think, right? Before his opponent had to think. Now he has to think. Yeah, so he's... yeah but maybe it's too late. I mean, this rook on b4 just completely out of the game. This is not a good rook, yes. And and Prague, that was the point. Yeah, I asked you, rook bc or rook dc, because both moves seemed absolutely logical. Yeah, now this rook on d3, maybe sometimes he can go rook d4, yeah, if it's ever attacked. So maybe this is not so bad. Exactly. No, I, I mean, I just don't believe. I mean, black has this wonderful knight on f6. There are no pieces to, to target the king. And none of the rooks are participating from white side. Yeah, just a single bishop and queen can't uh, really create anything. Well, that's what Ivan Sokolov wrote in his book. You need a knight to attack. You need, yeah, definitely you need. Yeah, and you Ivan was also one of the big specialists of all these uh, Zemi structures, yeah, how to create mm -hmm. the biggest dangers. Wow, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not seeing. I basically in my mind, I already thought like uh, Prague has won this game. I, I just don't see Anish, uh, you know, getting enough here. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe he has to play in a bishop g5 and hope. For the best. Yeah, okay. Bishop g5, yeah, we even go rook g8 and then h4. Yeah, you just try to... Well, try to keep the spin and there is certain sharpness in the position yet, right? Yeah, but... Okay, also he's done on... Now he's going down with the clock as well. He He's not a believer. <laughs> he, he doesn't trust this position at all. It, it just happened and it gives us the chance to bounce back to the Liam Wesley game because Wesley has played your magic touch with Queen G2. I mean, I'm ju just loving already when you announced it and now that seeing this Queen B7 to G2. 
Yeah, I, this was, this is not an easy position for white to handle, right? Black is so active, and the king on b1 is subject to so many checks. Yeah, everything is weak. The structure is weak. Uh, the king is weak, yeah, and and black's king is just so solid. I mean, that fg5 that you suggested, if there was no forced way for black to win, actually, I I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Because you use the momentum that you still had this queen on the long diagonal. But maybe now rook c1 uh, yeah. is possible. c1 probably has to be played. And then we move the rook. Yeah, rook d8. And um, now rook c2. Aha, uh -huh. crawling out, yeah? A little bit, yeah. Yes. But then, okay, I know queen a8. Queen c3, uh, maybe white can sort of sort of hang in there, yeah? but not pleasant, right? Yeah, not pleasant with two and a half minutes. Yeah, rook c1 played, the best defense. Rook d8 played. Yeah, we, I mean, we are calling the action. Yeah, queen g2, rook c1, rook d8 in uh, Lee and Wesley game, and in the other game between Anish and Prague, bishop g5, rook g8, h4, knight b3 on the board as well. Rook c2, defending. A lot of action, right? Uh, four games uh, in rapid will always give you a lot of action. Non-stop action, yeah. Basically, you just have no time to, to catch your breath at all. Queen h1 check played. Actually, it's maybe smart. Yeah, that if king b2, then queen a8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, queen h1 gives white uh, some unpleasantness. I don't know how the players are doing this unconsciously or paying attention that both players have 2 minutes 32 seconds. Yeah, and, and I have noticed this so many times. Whenever I play, I have zero time and my opponent has plenty. Queen a8 played. But these guys are so professional. They always keep an eye on the clock. I think they always try. Yeah. They always try to have at least not less time than the opponent. And if both try this, then they will move in tandem, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Then the, yeah. Queen C C Rook B A check. Basically, it's the same position. King A one. And now I feel that okay. White probably believes that he should uh, more or less have no problems. Yeah, because now if queen h1, one, rook c1, queen h2, then white actually has time to create threats, right? With uh, queen e5 himself. Exactly, double attack on the rook and mm -hmm. on the pawn. So black needs something better than this. Maybe. I mean, black has queen h8 if he is in panic mode, yeah? And we, who knows, we, will we see it in time trouble? It could oh, happen. Hopefully not, yeah, because again, yeah, the queen h8, white has a passed pawn, and who knows how fast it can But run. look at this, Wesley actually went for this queen h2. I'm expecting queen e5, queen h8. Or after queen e5, you can just play rook a8 and... But not with pleasure, no? Although no, not at all. Rook a8, in fact, that's a queen g5, like has king h7, yeah? No checks. Yeah, very funny position. Well, rook a8, queen, queen g5, king... I know, king h7, queen h4 is fine. Queen h4, yeah. So it could be some sort of a perpetual, actually. Exactly, yeah. King h7 runs into queen h4, and if king f8, then queen c5 check. This could be the end of the game, actually, yeah? And then check, 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 check. It could, and uh, Liam should be then be very happy that he survived this. But also Wesley did not play this perfectly, right? Because from a position he had, he should never have to make precise moves now, right? It just yeah, be... this this whole bishop takes b2 operation. Yeah, we felt like it was completely unnecessary. Well, I mean it was a it was a very strong bishop. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So basically Wesley has to make up his mind. We think that it's more or less equal. Yeah, Queen H8 played. I don't think that there is any trouble because you can't push A4 yet. Rook c5 played, clever move. Yeah, somehow the action died down a bit, right? And... Yeah, I mean, okay, we will keep an eye on it, but uh, basically just to 
catch up on Prague. Yeah, Prague, I think, is just uh, cruising to victory. Yeah, it, he's, yeah uh, look, Anish never got any attack and, uh, and the peace state. Never. And then let's uh, let's check what is going on between Arjun and Magnus. Magnus actually sacrificed the pawn with B4 to break in with, uh, with his rook, and he entered the second and hit on F2. Some big step forward for Magnus. Yeah, it looks like white needs to be precise. Yeah, look B3. Yeah, this is very important not to let black look get behind the B pawn. Mm -hmm. And now he wants to push B6 and against look B7, have look C7. So no free roll for Magnus yet. How do you deal with I mean, you have defense like look B7, B6, look F6, for example. That's a good start, yes. Yeah, I don't know if we want to start with look f6 or first look b7. But already seeing that we have this in the pocket uh, gives us confidence. Look f6 played on the mm -hmm. spot. Yeah, it, it feels to me that white is still in uh, well in more trouble than black at any rate. Yeah, Anish has resigned. Yeah, so Prague bounces back after yesterday's loss with a stunning victory over Anish. With the black pieces. And Magnus with Rook F6. I mean, uh, what, what is your take, your feeling? Is is this real winning chance or White has good practical chances to survive? Uh, I, I would normally think that this is um, this is so much Magnus territory. Like this is vintage Magnus, right? He will find ways to continue playing for a long time and keep the position going and I don't like this for white. Yeah, also rook d7, very nice because it threatens mm -hmm. d3, d2, and if the rook moves, then suddenly b5 pawn will be vulnerable. Well, suddenly you go rook b7 maybe with Templar. Who knows? Yeah. Right? It's uh, it's not it's not an easy thing to play a slightly worse rook end game against Magnus. Ah, you cannot even go rook d3, right? Because rook c6 and rook c7 wins the pawn. Wins the pawn on the spot, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he takes on f6. Yeah, now the, the king will just come to c5. Yeah, this is not great. This is not great at all. Yeah, looks very promising. Also, Arjun down to 25 seconds. Yeah, king f2, king e6 played. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the type of position. If it gets bad, it gets lost. Yeah, also, like, Magnus is the worst opponent you want to have in this position, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, basically, Magnus even had, yeah, look, a3, yeah, trying to get ready to activate the rook but maybe just look b7 yeah look b7 played touching the pawn and suddenly both b pawns are very vulnerable yeah well, rook a6 king d7 right and uh, um yeah it doesn't I, well, I mean also rook a5 doesn't really help much king d6 B4? Do do we go B4 stopping yeah. King C5? I think yeah. his, his point is King C5, B6, B6. Check, right? Yeah. And uh, this is what he wants. And after Rook B6, he going to go B4. Yeah, maybe not so easy. Maybe at some point, like, we'll have to go, I don't know, F5 and calculate. But... Yeah. No, in general, I think uh, Arjun also very nicely reacted with Luke AC, Luke A5. It was his only chance. Yeah, I'm taking, uh, yeah, the game Liam Wesley so finished in a draw. And uh, Shakti Amamadja against Duda, this also looks very drawish. So all the action, we, we can focus fully on this position. B6 check played, king d6. I was wondering, rook d5 check, king d6, rook b5, then f5. What is this? King king d3, it feels like some progress for white. Yeah, I mean, something, rook d5 check played, king e6, rook b5. But look at the evolution bar says that black is almost winning. Why? Ah, maybe, maybe f5, king, uh, I thought f5 and sort of h4 and play for some sort of tuk tuang. But... Yeah, I mean, f6 looks a bit surprising, but uh, Magnus wants to provoke g4, which seemingly blocks f5, but in fact it runs into just trade, trade, and then f5, and you break everything. Well, I mean, to play h4 at some point is uh, was... Uh... Uh, no, Magnus just blocks and... everything. But he wants to go king d6, b... king d6, c6, and take. Yeah, take the pawn. 
mm -hmm. protects the pawn on e5. This is his idea, but yeah, computer does not approve. And Tadeas was mentioning to us that actually h5, h4 was a very clever move of fixing this pawn on g2. Mm -hmm. Computer preferred that, which makes perfect sense. But yeah, Magnus uh, visualized that he, he just wants to collect the b6 pawn. Where is the catch? Um, I mean, look at the computer bar. I mean, every, every bar says it's it's low, but why on earth is this low? King c4, king c6? Yeah, difficult. Look b3, no. I mean, look b3, look b6, and then now the king just moves it. It should be a win. King c7, b4, and... And rook c6 check. And rook c6, and white will have to make an uncomfortable choice, right? Yeah, probably king b5, you have rook to... Rook d6, and then try to push this pawn. Yeah, rook c6 check on the board. Yeah, everything has finished. Yeah, so Prague 1 and 2 are the draws. Rook c6 check. King b5, rook d6, yeah. yeah. King c4 back. Going for d3, yeah. We have to go back and then king b6 and it's then b5. B5, d3. D3, and it should win, yeah. Yeah, no, the king b6 is actually tupswang, yeah. You, you will worsen your position after king c4, king b6, who's white. Yeah, so maybe you have to play rook d3, which is also very ugly. Then you give check, check, and then you enter with yeah, the rook. Yeah, yeah, white needs this rook to attack f6, yeah. yeah? And down to 10 seconds. Yeah, now this is a nightmare for Arjun, yeah? Not at all nice. Yeah, no, again, starting uh, the David uh, loss in the first game, very tough. I mean, he started at 130, next game is at 230, and it won't get uh, easier. Well, I definitely will not get easier tonight. Yes. And yeah, every game you play Magnus, yeah? And just not, just doesn't get any earlier, doesn't get any better, no? And also Magnus with, with these peers uh, kind of signals that, you know, guys, I'm ready to take risk and I don't want to give you easy game. Yeah, he, he really wants to get the fighting position. But actually, okay, this game was quite solid. Yeah, king d5, okay, yeah. And there is nothing to, to lose anymore. Let's activate the king. And king b6. Computer says, is rook a6 check possible? Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, I thought black's plan was to go rook c3, to be honest. But uh, no, rook a6 is a blunder. Um, takes takes d3, b5, king a5, b6, and uh, b2. Uh, oh, no, king a7, king a7, yeah, king, a7 king c7. Uh, he has to get out, right? d3, b5, d2, b6, king a6, b7, d1, b8. And queen c2 and some queen ending, right? And then take on, uh, yeah, take, take on e4, e4. Which, which is probably winning. Why shouldn't it be? Yeah, there are also no checks. Yeah, the queen on e4 mm -hmm. will be so great. So the line we are discussing is d3, b5, d2, b6, king a6, b7, d1, queen, b8, queen. And now suddenly this queen c2 check forcing white's king away and then queen takes e4 mm -hmm. but yeah magnus finally goes for the line that we expected first yeah with the king on strange. A5, yes ah, but anyway queen make... a how queen a4 check yeah he's taking the pawn doesn't make so much difference right you could yeah. also go queen c2 check and then queen d3 but queen a4 is cleaner of course yeah because queen c2 king d5 queen d3 king e6 but after queen a4 king d5 then you have queen d7 or what Ah, no, actually, I wanted queen d4, but it's the same, yeah. It's the same position, yeah, basically. Yes. All right, it's kind of puzzling, yeah, because Magnus could have had this position with white's king on c7, and then after queen c2 check, there would have not been any king d5. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but usually Magnus is the master and wizard of queen endgames, and he goes king a4, what well, on earth is this? Well, yeah, basing all this on one game, right? 
No, 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 no. During the tour, he has won a couple of games and Vesti was coming to our broadcast and was saying that, yeah, Magnus is the best player in Queen and games and so on. No, no, it has a history. It's not only the Gao Maya game. I don't know. But I mean, King A4, I, I just don't get it. Yeah, you, you could have taken this E4 pawn with Queen C2 check. Yeah, no, King A4 is, is tough. But also now I think White can go Queen A7 check. And then Queen F7, pick up F6. It... Well, the breaking news. Yeah, Tadeas is mentioning that according to computer here, instead of King A4, the winning move or the strongest move was, in fact, Queen D3. It's uh, kind of not giving any checks, but uh, just calmly protecting from Queen B5 checkmate and uh, hitting the E4 pawn. And also, very importantly, protecting the pawn on F6. Now I can never take Queen F6 because of Queen A6 check. And yeah, also. Important. Yeah, wow. I mean, King A4, Queen B5, and now also White gets, White gets chances. But Magnus is trying to hide his king somewhere. I don't know, but Arjun down to 10 seconds. How do you defend this? Tough. Yeah, Queen D5, blunder, of course. Yeah, it's, it's Queen, Queen D5, Queen game. takes G4, yeah? So this is... Uh... I mean, Queen D5 was so natural, yeah? It was also the first move that closed my mind, but... But why wouldn't you give a Queen C5 check? I don't get it. Okay, then the guy keeps on running King B2 and Queen I don't F2 know. Queen F2 check and then Queen takes F6. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to... Calculate, you have to see things, yeah? Well, you have to see this, yeah? But no. With 10 seconds on the clock, I don't think you can keep a calm head. Well, I, I didn't have a calm head in the beginning, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, Queen D2 check, King B1. It looks like there should be perpetual, but Queen on G4 covers the D1 square. Yeah. And then if you keep on checking, then actually... It's in Black's interest to, to start walking towards the, the, the king side if given the chance, yeah, and then you mm -hmm. hide somewhere. Yeah, a lot of ups and downs, but uh, the Black is finally winning, right? Yeah, Queen F1 check, unfortunately, a little too late because Black already collects both the E4 and the G4 pawns. Yeah, and uh, this is... Queen E4 is even check, yeah? It's, yeah. it's really not fair. King D6. Now maybe just G4, right? Uh, yeah, the, the only trick is that Queen F4, Queen takes E5 is maybe possible, yeah? It's, ah, but he's trying to calculate uh, a Queen trade. Trying to be very professional. Well, and also Magnus has still four, 2 minutes 47 seconds. Mm -hmm. And now queen f4, yeah. Basically, I felt that if he can play queen f4 without allowing queen takes e5, then it's uh, this is then very, it's a very, clean. And... very clean. And yeah, I mean, the, the way Magnus leans on the table is a very comfortable pose, yeah. Just uh, that, okay, let me finish you off signal. Just e3, yeah. This, this pawn is so powerful. Yeah, and eventually the king walks to the f file and then hides behind the e pawn. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't even need the second pawn. Yeah, his one pawn would do the trick quite nicely. Yeah, but also it gives a comfort. Yeah, that mm -hmm. you even don't have to push the e pawn. You can. Yeah, and then uh, Arjun resigns. Magnus wins. What a what a fight! Finally, ups yeah. and downs. But but Queen and games basically only the the computers can play perfectly. Yeah, humanly with few seconds on the clock, you tend to make blunders. Yeah, very difficult end games to play because we also get them so rarely and we don't have the experience. Yeah, and it's all about calculation. Yeah? And, and usually when we get the end game, especially with the new time control and all this uh, rapid, but even with the FIDA Classical, you have just very little time. Yeah, a few seconds or a few minutes. Good luck calculating all this, all this, all the millions checks. Yeah. Um, I said I shouldn't blunder, but uh, that's what what happened. Uh, but uh, fortunately, it was still a very tough end game for him. Uh, and uh, sort of when my um, king started crossing over, and then there um, a big key is that he cannot trade the queens possibly on d1 because I'm just in time with the king. Uh, then I thought it was very difficult for him. But yeah, king b. <laughs> Uh, King B6 was um, not perfect technique, let's say that. Relieved. 
Yeah, obviously. I mean, for uh, for one second, I thought that uh, I was lost. Then I thought, okay, I can at least play King S7 and make a draw. And then I saw, wow, well, actually, uh, I'm very lucky to uh, still have chances to win. So. All right. Good luck for the next one. Thank you. Wow, actually Magnus revealed that King B6 was, was a blunder that mm -hmm. he completely missed Duke A6. And uh, the reason why he has opted for King A7 first, that he he was his first reaction was panic and ah okay, King A7 draws. Luckily to him, he had quite some time on his clock, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he realized that there is no reason to panic. But yeah, this wow, happens, this happens after a blunder, yeah. Your first yes. reaction is a panic, and then you can sometimes. Yeah, King A7, King C7, and and then also mysterious things started to happen. Yeah, because we just did not understand why uh, why Black was not going for this. Maybe we can just once again quietly check what happened here that Magnus disliked. Yeah, that B8 uh, Queen because he was mentioning in the interview that he was finally so happy finding this King walk all the way up, which according to computer was a mistake, and and here Queen C2 check. Basically, okay, the king walks to d7, probably, and queen takes e4, queen d6 check, yeah? Queen d6, king b5. King b5, and then white captures on f6. Oh, queen takes g4, it will be the same like in the game, yeah? No, but e5 is hanging. But it's a check, right? Ah, it's a check. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, then, uh, then maybe I should have gone to d8. Hang on. Can I, can I go to d8 then? Maybe this is very important. Yeah, but okay, take queen d6, king b5, take queen f4. Yeah, no. This we will is, both this... know what will happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, the king just does the same walk as, as Magnus in the game. Yeah, it's uh, it just shows the tension, yeah, that basically Magnus felt that he, he blundered this rook a6. And the reason why it was a blunder, we even don't know. Maybe Tadeas can help us out. According to computer, after king b6, it showed zero zeros. But not because of rook a6, maybe, maybe some other move. Rook a8 or what? Rook. Ah, wow, rook a1 and computer claims that this is some kind of a fortress then or what? Okay, it's impossible. I'm not sure. Do, do you think that in the classical chess it's imp it's possible to understand that this is maybe fortress? I don't know, because king b5 still looks strong to me. Man. Rook a5 check, king and then king takes b4. King takes b4. Oh, uh oh, I mean, also computer is uh, confusing us, or maybe Tadeus has a different position. Stand oh my a. god, rook b5 check. Oh my god. Oh my god, this could have been, you know, the biggest <laughs> save ever. This is so pretty. My God, you know, I'm I'm usually a stalemate king, but I have never seen stalemate on king against king on d5. Oh, this oh. Is so nice. And and we were skeptical about Tadeas. Big apology. Big apology, Maestro. Of course, how could we have I I, I never doubted Tadeas, yeah. So uh, but okay, uh, we still have a couple of minutes till the till the round starts. Yeah, I'll be right back. Eh? Yeah, just, yeah, of course. On. I mean, okay, I'm still stunned. I mean, I am but what a stalemate. How did this happen? I mean, if it would have happened in the game, I'm pretty sure that uh, Magnus would have just, uh, you know, I, I don't know he would what he would be doing. He, he would be smiling, shaking his head, crying, uh, smashing the table, whatever, because, I mean, such stalemate I have never, ever seen. Incredible. Then then maybe I was even right that it, it could be maybe possible in, in a classical chess, but only because you 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 suddenly understand that everything else loses. Rook a6 check, which is so tempting, doesn't give you any uh, benefit. And uh, finally, out of despair, then you discover. But but even then, if if people don't tell you that it's a draw, it's so easy to just give up hope in this position. Yeah, black is pawn up. The king is coming. Black has this powerful pawn chain. Yeah, so a protected pass pawn. B4 pawn is weak, vulnerable. You just don't see chance to to save the game, and then this stalemate. Wow! All right, we have seen one of the biggest beauties in in chess that I have ever seen. What what a save was was possible here? 
All right, and just one minute to to start the next games, the second game of uh, second games of the day, and Magnus will start uh, three four minutes later because they had a longer game. Okay, so let's try to understand what happened. Well, what happened is that uh, Prague actually countered Anish Giri, and uh, if you ask Anish, he will tell you that this is the reason why you are not supposed to play like this with White. Uh, Prague beat Anish with the black pieces. Uh, Liam Le Wesley saw was a draw after quite some adventures. Uh, it looked very promising for Wesley at some point. Uh, the game Mamed Yarov, Jan Shishtov, Duda was kind of uh, more or less probably balanced throughout, but we didn't have chance to, to look at it because all the action was on the other boards and Magnus Carlsen finally squeezed out this ending. And we already have live action. Uh, Pragnanda against Anish Giri, Italian again. Very, I'm very curious to see because Anish's first game choice indicated that he's in a very aggressive mood. So, especially after losing the, the previous game with the white pieces, he definitely will be tempted to kind of invite Prague to some uh, very sharp double-edged territory yeah? to, to have a chance to create some chances for himself. On the other hand, I think for Prague, this was so important after yesterday's uh, unlucky finish against uh, Mamed Yarov, blundering that little simple tactic there. Uh, with Rook takes F5, this will give him confidence. He will settle in. This will be a fantastic match. Bishop BC, Knight BD2, so not the uh, most popular A4 kind of setup. Yeah, recently, basically, this Bishop BC is the old classical way, but A4 has taken over um, in this position. So very nice and uh, interesting to see some old classical Italian positions with Bishop BC. So white is usually trying to go Rook E1, Knight F1, and uh, so on. What else do we have? So Magnus has not yet started his game. Wow, Duda against Mamed Yalov is a very sharp uh, Catalan. A very sharp one. I mean, uh, Shakria goes for the pawn grab with DC4 and after Bishop G2, he opts for A6. The, in, the idea is quite clear. Black wants to hang on to the pawn on C4, but it comes at a cost because he's losing valuable time. He has to place this knight also to slightly awkward square. Knight c6 e3. This is some old classical line. b5 b3 takes takes. Eternal compensation. Bishop goes to b2. Castles is played. Usually the people play rook d1 or rook c1. I think rook c1 and then knight e1, knight d3. And Rustam is the guy, the perfect person to ask all these finesses. Rook c1. Uh, I think you have analyzed quite a lot of these Catalans, Rustam. Oh, they're always difficult to play with black. I can tell you this much. You reveal the big secret. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us well, something more. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, my my mind was a bit uh, a bit away because you were speaking of something eternal, and I was remembering this movie, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. Do you know this one? Uh, with uh, with Russell Crowe. No, with Jim Carrey. Ah, no, with Jim Carrey. No, because that is the beautiful, yeah, it's uh, the, with English titles I have, to, but, but I also have to acknowledge that I'm not such a big Jim Carrey uh, fan, yeah? No, I know, but that is a really, really special movie. That one, uh, I think everyone should see at least once in a lifetime. All right. Uh, our ch our chat agrees that it's an awesome movie. I think it's 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 really really special. Like it's completely different from any movie you can imagine. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, not tonight. I can't promise you tonight. But after after we we will get through the week, then then next week I will check it out. Ah, wow! And Tadeas is giving the Hungarian title. Thank you very much. Okay, like this, I. Definitely have heard it, uh, but I I haven't. I'm I'm not sure if I've ever seen it. Yeah, oh, you I would I would have, have remembered it. it. Yeah, that's yes, for you sure. Would have remembered. Yeah, I remember with with great fondness uh, this uh, several nights that we spent watching movies with you. Uh, 
You remember this? We saw uh, the last king of Scotland and uh, yeah, of course. I mean, Uber. last king of Scotland, one of my favorites. Yeah, I have seen uh, hundreds of times. Yeah, that was one hell of a movie. That was really something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, also now talking here about uh, the games. Yeah, here ninety five comes. This is exactly the reason why I'm not comfortable because I wanted to ask you. Yeah, that. Uh, how do we deal with this problem with black? Yeah, that uh, the knight on c6 is vulnerable. Yeah, white is often threatening some 91 knight dc idea, so 95. And whenever this knight moves, then white gets chance to, to get access to the e5 square with his knight. I think you preferably just don't get this position. But also, for instance, if I go knight fd5 now, is there some trouble? I don't know if there is a direct trouble. I mean, because we, I don't want to take your exchange. I, I know that <laughs> if you are offering something, you should you should just not take that. Just to highlight, yeah, that suddenly white uh, has the chance of going for something like this, but I I don't like the look of it. The d5 square, yeah. At least this is the exchange I would like to give. Um, yeah, I know that you like to give, so I, I won't, won't take it. But yeah, as Shaklia goes rook c8, I mean, it's uh, kind of strange because I'm also pretty sure that he would have loved to uh, sack the exchange like this, but something else disturbed him. I'm getting a feeling. By the way, okay, so Prague and Anish reach this very classical position. Uh, and I did, did see this uh, broadcast with, with you and Jan uh, during St. Louis. And there was a mm -hmm. moment when Jan was explaining the differences between Bishop BC and A4. And then against Bishop BC, he blitzed out all these moves. And then you said like, okay, thank you, Jan, that now in these uh, two minutes, I understood more than all my <laughs> life or something, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but uh, uh, yeah, Gusti has this effect on us. Yeah, he would complain that he doesn't know any theory, he doesn't work, he doesn't do anything, and then he would sometimes just give me details I never thought possible. Right? It just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, this is this is his territory. All his life, he was looking at this, and when I worked with uh, Gusti in uh, two thousand nine, we already discussed this uh, position. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since, you know, I, whenever I see this position, I remember uh, what we analyzed on, on our terrace outside. But, but this ED5 is the new twist, yeah? Because back then, I think people were kind of whole hanging on to the center with Bishop D2 or Queen E2. But E takes D5 took over. And then the big question, do, do we capture with the knight? Do we capture with the bishop? I think, yeah, finally, bishop d5 has a very solid uh, reputation, knight g6, queen d6. Yeah, and then this queen d6 is also this kind of mystical-looking move, which made its way into, into all Italians, right? Sometimes this queen can even go to f8 for defensive purposes. It's a really... Exactly. Really useful piece. Yeah, knight h4. And uh, I mean, one thing is for sure that it's uh, very exciting and very interesting double h positions. And Ani should be happy, yeah, because he lost the previous game with the white pieces in under these circumstances. You should be welcoming this, yeah, knight e7, covering the f5 square. So the chat is actually asking, maybe we have to uh, we have to give this some some attention. The chat is asking, who is this guy, Tadej, who we are constantly referring to? Well, he's our great producer, yeah? He's the mastermind behind the show, yeah? He's uh, taking, uh, he, he has everything under control. He's making sure that we feel comfortable. We have all the info and uh, it's just such a pleasure to work with him. And he's also Mr. Tactics. Never well, and he's tactics. a 25, 40 chess player, mm -hmm. maybe even more, I don't know, but that's how I'm more or less uh, evaluating, uh, have it in mind. Knight h4, knight e7, bishop e3. Yeah, this is... Yeah, let's let's check out. Uh, Tadeas, can you reveal your real rating or you want to stay incognito? That's the big question. 25-20 something. All right. Okay, but but after winning those games in the Polish League, I, I gave you some extra points. 
All right, yeah. So this is the position. Italia, knight h4, knight e7, bishop e the modern stuff. The players are playing quite quickly. They are more or less in familiar territories, but sooner or later the, the preparation should end because it's a stable position. Takes, takes g6. g6? Um, how does black react to like queen e2? Computer did not approve g6. Yeah, queen e2, and then you are just trying to triple, yeah? Well, I mean, he'll have to go knight c6 back. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, this knight c6 would be terrible, yeah, if I have to go there. Hmm. Maybe there is some trick, yeah, but I don't see it yet. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's always unpleasant. Yeah, this bishop is the ID, and then uh, starting to targeting this pawn on e5. Kind of unpleasant. Yeah, it surprised me a bit. Yeah, how um how easily he played g6 with what alacrity. Yeah, it it's somehow I, I feel like it was some memory and queen e2 played, and the uh, computer is not impressed by queen e2. Yeah, maybe black has something, or maybe knight c6 is not that big a deal. Yeah, sometimes you go to e7, sometimes you go back. Especially, it seems that rook e5 is not a threat because of g5, but that would be too difficult for me. Yeah, that would be too difficult for anyone. Yeah, so I basically, so, yeah. rook e5 is not a threat because of g6, g5. Come on, I mean, this is one of the coolest defenses ever. Then, then knight f5 would run into knight takes f5 and uh, the, the pin on the e file and the pressure on the e5 rook. Wow. But this also gives them the chance that eventually maybe we can go bishop c6 and knight d4. Or that's too much already. But bishop c6 also gives white space for bishop b3 sometimes. Yeah, so it has yeah, to plus be also rook e1. Yeah. No, no, forget it. Forget it. Tough, very tough position. But okay, let's let's make a quick tour. Uh, first of all, Magnus against Arjun. Yeah, okay, Magnus is just so incredibly professional. He has noticed that Arjun has played C4, C6 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, let me let me be solid and poisonous at the same time. Yeah, because one should never underestimate the exchange slav. Also. Uh, thanks to Gusti's contributions, I remember that he has done quite a lot of work and he has won quite many games. Mm -hmm. And all these move orders, million move orders, when do you include what? The, the final result and the final result is clear, yeah, that basically white has achieved something. It's uh, 95 is hanging in the air. There is a pressure on the b7 pawn, yeah, so you won't be able to comfortably play bishop d6, I'm guessing. And how do you react to 95? Yeah, it's not a pleasant position to get. I think this is already Slav gone wrong somehow. Yeah, the question, can we maybe play a6? Can we do that? So the, uh, the, the, the chat uh, has gone completely uh, nuts. They really want to know your favorite Christmas movie. So I think we need to give them this so that they can move on to different topics. Uh, my Christmas movie? Your favorite Christmas movie. <laughs> no, I don't, don't have don't have any fa favorite uh, Christmas movies. Yeah, if uh, people ask me what are my favorite Western movies, I can, I can reveal them. But I mean, uh, Christmas movies, no, not really. Uh, you like your Westerns, right? Yeah, I like the Westerns, of course, yeah. especially the, the Italian spaghetti Westerns. I mean, I okay, tell I... me, you, you, you are a man of a serious Western education. I like this uh, Western that nobody else seems to like, uh, the one that is called The Quick, The Quick, The Dead. Do I you mean, you mean the, with Shadow Stone and Gene Hackman? Exactly. And Russell Crowe? Exactly. Well, I, I also enjoyed it a lot, but I'm actually Kaoma guy, you know, okay, for, for Kaoma, I'm just going crazy. I'm watching it, you know, whenever I'm completely exhausted, I feel like, you know, okay, that's it. I don't have any strength and I just look at Kaoma and I feel like I can go on forever again. If if you guys haven't seen it, then then watch it out. It's, uh, it's with Franco Nero, just sensational stuff. That's a very good tip. Yeah, I need to check this out. Yeah, you definitely have to. 
I mean, okay, Sergio Leone's uh, movies are, of course, uh, very famous. I guess everybody knows them, but I mean, Kaoma is uh, very special. And it's a low budget. You know, I always appreciate uh, very much when from low budget, you create some incredible, uh, memorable stuff. But okay, back to back to chess. First of all, we haven't looked at, because okay, this is now Magnus' territory. I believe Magnus is slightly better for sure. But Wesley against uh, Liam looks like a very double-edged, hard to evaluate position. What is your take on this structure? Um... I think why it would cause maybe two plans, right? We can try to prepare e4. So go, let's say, rook a d1, and then, you know, try to prepare e4, or play g4, knight g3, right? So two very different approaches. I mean, normally black is fine, but it also gets very sharp, right? Yeah, it gets very sharp. Uh, it's, uh, it's very double-edged, usually. I prefer such things from the black side simply for the fact that, I mean, okay, double H should be, yeah, and, and there you go. Wesley goes for G4. It's uh, on one hand an attacking move. Another idea is to target the D5 pawn, yeah, because that's the only vulnerable pawn. And eventually, if you get this knight G3, G5, then, then the knight will be pushed away. You might have option to go queen F5 and hit this pawn. It's a multi purpose move. Yeah, and this this has uh, this has potential. Well, for both sides, however. Yeah, yeah, this has potential. Yeah, that's why I wanted to, you know, all these uh, Western movies are brilliant, but uh, Wesley's position is interesting. G four. I know uh, German commentary with uh, with Gusti and also with uh, with Zonia. Managed to find uh, two topics which always get a, a chat interested. One was movies, and another was food. This was a bit surprising. Yes, yeah, how food really gets them going. Everybody is hungry, yeah. All the time. Everybody's hungry all the time. <laughs> yes, I think that's it. Yeah, that's the trick. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Shakria has traded the rooks, and uh, he seemingly has has a pawn up position but computer loves white yeah it's a very special structure this 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 combo this knight on e5 bishop b2 bishop g2 probably this spin along the d i can just take the pawn no what the knight takes d7 or am i seeing it wrong yeah you can also i was trying to create some big tension but you just uh, voice of reason yeah just uh, take the pawn and say that we have two bishops mm -hmm. so the d5 is hanging or a5 is hanging one of them will probably take yeah, queen d7, rook a5, and if knight takes, then we just trade and we take on b5. Yeah, maybe it's so simple, yeah? But then why did uh, Shakti actually play a5? If I, I think was it's really last... impossible to keep everything together because, for instance, if he plays queen b6, trying to defend a6, then he loses, I think, a piece, yeah? To takes, takes, and queen g4. So he probably saw this and decided, you know, maybe I should rather lose a pawn instead. Yeah, yeah, it's so tricky, and and I mean, wow! After Rook C8, White simply played the move Knight AC. I think that Duda uh, must have known this position. Yeah, it's uh, definitely not an easy move that you can uh... at least seen this maneuver before. Yeah, yes, Knight C2. Yeah, Knight C2 because then you eliminate the Knight suddenly. Pawn on A6 is vulnerable, and also the C6 square. Yeah, so basically, Black will be kind of forced to do what uh, Shakriya did. Takes takes everything. Knight C2. Targeting the a6 pawn and also all these double attacks uh, after trading with queen g4. And uh, black opted for a5, and it's now up to Duda to decide how he wants to benefit. Wow, oh, I'm I'm looking at all the games, and uh, all of them look so interesting, so much tension everywhere. You like a kid in a sweet shop, yeah? yeah? Everything looks good to you. Yeah, it's, I mean, for example, Liam opted for G4, B5, yeah, and this is also one of these, I think, typical counter strikes that it might look counterintuitive to go B5, B4, but after A, B, knight, B4, you kick the queen, the knight might jump to D3, and it's a completely different dynamic, yeah? It's not about this solid, stable stuff that you're going to go G5 and target the D5 pawn. 
And there is no time even to talk about this because Duda opts for rook d1. He doesn't want to take the, the pawn. He wants more. He wants to use the pin. Uh, it's fair enough, right? Because black is still tied up. Yeah. Really, really tied up. Really, really in trouble. Whenever black plays this line, you know, this a6, uh, d takes c4, a6, nice c6, I'm just asking myself that why you, why you have to play like this? Why, why you want to suffer? Yeah, that's uh, kind of because it's uh, kind of tempting that I want to play for a win, so let me protect mm -hmm. the pawn. But it, it worked like 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, but with new computers, I think that this initiative is always developing so nicely and you, mm -hmm. you just can't control everything. Yeah, I think even with old computers, Black rarely got winning chances in this line. Yeah, Rook D1, I mean, super dangerous. We also see the evaluation bar screaming that uh, Black is in a lot of pain and a lot of trouble. Wow, okay, this is, uh, this is one thing. Magnus building the pressure simply with effective moves yeah just the king on e2 is perfectly safe because white has the two bishops the knight on e5 putting the pressure on the knight on c6 i mean uh, and black has not yet cancelled you are the big slav expert uh, rustam tell, tell us how do you yeah. feel about this well i think something has gone wrong for black i also think maybe the time to castle has come just, just so castle. just to give the pawn, yeah, and uh, try to escape. Well, I mean, just castles, knight c6 takes if you go... Uh, like rook c8, c8, rook c8 played, asking for, asking for more trouble, yeah? Asking for some tactical things, yeah? Now even, I don't know, bishop a6 could work, you know, things could work. Yeah, there are so many, I mean, this is... I've actually seen this. I had this uh, this year a couple of times that my opponents just did not castle in time. I just think it's such a priority in chess to castle that, you know, you have to castle at the earliest possibility, right? Well, if... Uh, I mean, as long as you have the chance, yeah, you should. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, later you regret it big time. Well, yeah, I mean, once you get mated, you think, you know, maybe I should have castled and we'll have a complete <laughs> exactly, <different> game. <laughs> <laughs> but, but already you are in this uh, sp spinning wheel, yeah, that already you, you just don't have time to castle. And mm -hmm. after rook c8, I somehow feel very much like, like you mentioned, yeah, that something like bishop a6 or, or, or whatever might be very bishop unpleasant. Bishop a6 looks, looks good, yeah. Like, yeah, how, how to react to this? Wow. I mean, okay, just to highlight, b takes a6, knight c6 is somehow terrible. It's a big tempo on the queen. And Magnus has nine minutes, basically, and he's already thinking for like one, one and a half. So he might be coming up with a big tactical blow here. As rook c8 also, for instance, if white just goes, let's say, bishop b5, yeah, black does not profit from having... The rook on c8 and probably force him to to take on e5 at some point no yeah for example i mean let's just com compare yeah castles you take with the bishop i take with the bishop yeah now my knight stays alive and then knight takes mm -hmm. and exactly compared to the other line that you immediately highlighted yeah that uh, instead of rook c8 if we castle then basically if you take on c6 b takes c6 if rook takes c6 happens then first of all you you can destroy the pawn structure you might also have some e5 chance. I mean, you have some some hopes, yeah. I have a lot of hope here. Yeah, take play rook b8, then maybe queen b4. You know, yeah, exactly. Uh, get some get some counterplay going against the d4 pawn, b2 mm -hmm. pawn, and that at least you have a stable structure. So I'm mm -hmm. not even sure if Magnus would have uh, taken this pawn just like mm -hmm. that. But uh, after rook c8, this is looking. Uh, Looking like Black will not get another chance to cancel nicely. Mm -hmm. 
Look, look at this relax, relax pose by Magnus. Yeah, it just shows that he and he yeah, just goes looks too. too. He's way too relaxed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he does not does not really want to, but uh -huh. he did spend three minutes on it. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah, bishop a6. Um, maybe not a difficult tactic. I don't yeah, know. I mean, I mean, maybe he's just enjoying his position so much that okay, I mean. Now with this rook on c8, I'm just going to go rook ac1, pin this rook, double the rooks, and, uh, nah, and, and okay, possible. what to do. Also, Arjun doesn't look like he's enjoying himself. No, not at all. I mean, it's now already 3, 3 a.m., yeah? 3 a.m., one point behind, uh, have lost with the white pieces and now uh, having zero counter chances and mm -hmm. and this kind of a sitting duck. Yeah, it's uh, in Magnus's hand. This looks very devilish. Yeah, it's a, it's a typical three a.m. nightmare. <laughs> Nothing good comes out of those. Huh? Yeah. No, it's it's somehow also too easy. Yeah, yeah. Castle played. Look, AC one will be blitzed out. White's moves are coming so naturally, and Black is in a lot of trouble. The pin is there. Yeah, even positionally, having a rook on c8 is not profitable for Black. Which is not profitable. By the way, even after this, Bishop takes e2, King takes e2, Magnus has gained the tempo, yeah, that. He solved the problem of castling by going rook hc1 in one go. Otherwise, usually you go castle and then you have, I mean, it's, uh, it, it all worked out to perfection. But hang on, did you ever see a rook on f3 like this? What plug is doing? Rook ec to f3, okay, sidestepping some knight d5. But I have never seen this rook. No, I'm sure you've seen this rook. No, I mean, how, how exactly like this? I mean... Um, I want to go e4. I want to calculate some tactics. e4 takes knight e5, rook e3. Maybe this is too too early. Yeah, no, Anish goes knight d5. He's my man. Yeah, it's uh, knight d5 would have been my choice without any fancy e4 business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, e4 is a very typical motive. Yeah, with, with all these pins actually. Yeah, I mean, e I know e4 with, with king on g1, bishop on a7, and queen on d6, that anyway white goes, I mean, black goes e4, and this knight on g3 is vulnerable. I think it's uh, basically very much the same motive. I'm, I'm not liking white's position here. Yeah, somehow I, I want to make some tactics work, but there are no tactics in this position. It's just nothing works. Yeah, black has this very solid construction. Yeah. With... Now I'm looking at some crazy rook f5. It just doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, knight is on c6. Like of course, f5. I would claim that I have also never seen a rook like this. Yeah, that's for sure. Man. Rook f5, knight f4, queen g4, you know, and just... Yeah, doesn't... Just, but doesn't do anything, probably not. No. That doesn't look good. Yeah, it's only for the fun purposes I put the rook on f5. Well, what, what did happen here? Bishop e3 takes takes g6, queen e2, knight c6. Yeah, so basically Anish did not panic. And then uh, Prague was coming back with his knight. Ah, and bishop takes f3. Ah, that's how this look. I, I saw it like rook e3 to f3. I have never seen this, but mm -hmm. yeah, rook captured on f3. Okay. So already makes some sense. Knight d5, queen, queen d2. Pardon me, this rook, rook f5 should be deleted. And queen e7, a mistake. I mean, stepping into d4 already feels a bit strange. And also, oh, knight, h5, knight check. h5 check. Immediately. Yes. Yes, exactly. Very tempting. And if I don't take, then well, I you, have to I go don't, to I don't h7. Think, I don't think you can take, yeah? You need to go to yes. h7. Yes. I mean, then you give check and, uh, and d4. Yes. But I mean, why did Anish, uh, you know, and, and Bishop Beastly played? What is happening here? Well, they're just making fast moves. It's a rapid game. It's a rapid game, yeah. And both close to, I mean, Anish under five minutes, a little bit up on the clock, but also doesn't give him a safe shelter with, with his time. 
Queen Queen seven seven did not make his position more solid yeah because now he's pinned, yeah he's yeah? kind of signaling that I want to go Queen G5 maybe yeah but uh, I don't know so definitely after Knight H5 it, it was not a blunder probably Black mm -hmm. wanted to play King H7 but it looks very scary yeah also because now White has a free move right to do something maybe D4 yes yeah, so. yeah D4 and okay it just looks very dangerous however Prague opted for Bishop B3 Activating the bishop, also not a bad idea. I mean, this fu funky rook, yeah, this this is kind of uh, a tricky rook, this, this f3 rook. It's a very annoying rook. Yeah. It's one yeah, queen g5 played, Janish is trying to trade the queens, but yeah. maybe white can even trade and then go knight e4, knight c5. Well, I, I thought that white can just win a pawn with takes, takes, bishop takes d5. Ah, you don't want to take a pawn, but this maybe I can sacrifice. Look, e8, knight g5. g5. Yeah, also, this is very annoying. Yeah, knight is stupid on c6. Uh, black is definitely going to suffer here. Right? Yeah, no, it's it's in any case, he will suffer. Yeah, basically, after takes, takes the other option is knight e4 and then knight c5. But mm -hmm. if you can take the pawn, it's, it's a very nice idea. Yeah, because knight f6 is a fork, mm -hmm. it's a double attack. The double attack, right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, and Prague is usually very sharp to spot all these things. Takes, takes, and and Prague goes ninety four. Well, in fact, yeah, ninety. I didn't want to allow knight f four. Yeah, that's why bishop takes d five. Mm -hmm. uh, ninety four, knight f four. I did not calculate. Maybe what can go knight g five. What's, what's Black's response? Yeah, I, I feel like we don't want to give up this D3 pawn, just knight c5 would be terrible. Why not? Why knight g5? How do you want to do this? I mean, I just felt like, okay, maybe knight g5, some, uh, but look, this runs into look f4, yeah? Yeah, no, I think we can calculate some. Yeah, tactics. we can. Because knight d3 doesn't work, rook d3 doesn't work, and f6, I can take rook takes f4, yeah? Maybe. How? F6? Rook takes F4. E F4. Knight E6 check. Because you are pinned. Ah, but the knight on C6 hangs at the, the end. The knight yeah. is hanging, yeah. I'm not 100% yeah. sure, for instance, this position. Yeah, knight E6, rook E2, rook E2. and white also has some... Exactly. Uh, ...troubles. It's it's a bit tricky, yeah. Rook yeah knight E4, strong. rook, knight F4 on the board. And... Um... Yeah, G3, I don't know if it works, yeah, but he and takes, Prague takes it. Yeah. Prague takes it. We might be seeing these two pieces versus the rook, yeah, because practically speaking, maybe this is the best what Anish has. Yeah, I mean, he might not have anything better, right? Yeah, F7 is hanging. Yeah, F6 on the board. We're going to see this rook F4, E F4, and then takes, mm -hmm. takes, boom, 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 and rook E2 at the end. Boom, boom, boom is right. Yeah, you called, you called all the action, yeah? You yeah. first... Hit my knight on c6, and then you also help me with rook e2. So I say thank you very much. And probably Anish does the same, yeah, because he he knew that he, he misplayed it, yeah. So if, if he gets a chance to complicate matters, he should be very happy. Yeah, I mean, as you as you mentioned yesterday, right? When you misplay something, you you're just happy to be alive, yeah. First off, exactly. By the way, just because uh, Prague is uh, taking his time, look at this. In Magnus's game, I feel like there is a big turnaround. How did this happen? Like, how did he get all these weaknesses? Yeah, look, AC1 takes, takes, knight h5, bishop h2, f5. And Magnus has started to run with the king. And uh, Arjun kept on, you know, hitting the, hitting yeah. the weak spots. Queen g5. I had a very similar position once against Ivanchuk. Knight five. I mean, I feel like Magnus lost control. Takes yeah, he lost control completely. But I was sure that he was taking. He was going to take on e5 with the bishop. With the I bishop, yeah, yeah. This is. Okay. Let, let's just very quickly go back. Yeah, that after bishop e5, 
if white would have captured with the bishop it would all these complications would have never ever appeared yeah he keeps everything very steady and yeah? this yeah. is this i thought was the point but yeah this is this is arjun yeah that he gets a chance and he immediately uses it with with this f5 and creates counterplay and magnus suddenly showing some sign of of weakness weakness here yeah because suddenly the knights are jumping knight can come to c4 maybe jump back to c6 knight is ready to jump to g3 Normally, knight c4 is such a tempting move, right? Yeah, it was uh, like the first thing I was thinking, like well, how Magnus will react to knight c4. But I mean, also, I feel like he should have something in his mind. Yeah, maybe something crazy like bishop g4. Will it never work? Yeah, shouldn't work. But yeah, it's and okay, knight g3. I actually like this knight g3 because. It's kind of tempting, yeah? I now have white plays bishop g4, queen takes e3 is made into... Yes, this we have to <laughs> show. This is beautiful. Yeah, takes and checkmate. Found a checkmate. Wow. Yeah, and basically this is... You you can't afford to give up the light square bishops because then the knight will dominate this terrible bishop on h2, which means that probably... But if you take on g3, queen g3, all these weaknesses, I mean, all the dark squares will be very vulnerable. Maybe uh, we can go bishop g3, queen g3, and bishop g4. Yeah, this is the uh, but queen takes e5 and then queen d queen d4. Yeah. Well, uh, hang on. So bishop. Uh, so queen e5. I thought white goes queen d4. Uh, but you also can try to mate me first, right? Why didn't you try to mate me? No, I simply lost control because I got the mm. message that uh, Vesli is in a lot of trouble. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, okay, just just quickly to take, I mean, the knight on d3, okay, black has sacrificed an exchange, but this horrible bishop on c3, all the pieces are brilliant from black side. Hmm. Okay, but it's still a fight, yeah? It's not over yet. It might be very bad though, yeah? Like rook e2 or queen b3, it might be very, very bad. Yes. Okay. Queen B3. I'm hoping for some rook A6, but then mm -hmm. also I'm giving up the first rank. Yeah. I, I might get checkmated with knight F2 at the end. Yeah. Queen C3, rook D6, knight F2. Yeah. You're completely exactly. right. Exactly. Just to to highlight this, that suddenly the the rook leaves the first rank. Knight F2 check. It's, it's kind Queen of C1. A, yeah. Knight E1, and then rook E1 and knight F4 check. Yeah. This is brutal. It it ends badly. Yes. Yeah. So it ends very badly. be careful. Be careful. I mean, every single game is 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 striking. I mean, okay, here West Wesley in a lot of trouble. Liam, however, down to one minute thirty seconds. He has to uh, maybe Queen B3, Queen D7. That's what he wants. That's why the move Queen G4. Oh, that's that's true, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, of course, with little time you don't want to give your opponent counter chances. But okay, then it's dramatic. Rookie two played. Queen c8 bleeds out. So does Wesley want Queen takes a6 blunder? Why is this a blunder? Oh, we got this. Yeah, we got this. We just need a bit of time to, to get this. I mean, okay, why is this such a big blunder? Shocking. These computers are queen d7. Queen d7 actually, yeah. And played by the, the queen left the diagonal. Yeah, white was doing this queen g4, queen c8, and abandoned, and that's it. I mean, yeah, knight queen, g3, I mean, knight g3 all, queen h3. This is horrible. Yeah, all, all kind of mating ideas are coming. Look at Wesley, he's he understands what he has done. Terrible. Well, this pawn was not worth it. Yeah, the pawn he took, it, it's a shock. No, I mean simply that this queen on b5 irritated him so much, yeah, that he was happy that he he disbalances this queen. But yeah, queen d7, stunning retreat. It's always easy to miss a stun. I mean, a retreating move. Yeah, we also we did not really see this immediately. Yeah, this was a difficult move to see, but once you see it, it's really awful for white. Yeah, basically just checkmate. You you it immediately hits your heart that that's it. It's game over. Nice.
Yeah, this is one of those moves. Say you understand that today there will be no more miracles. Yeah, simply suddenly all five of uh, black pieces are targeting white king. This is checkmate. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So Liam, yeah, that's it. Uh, Vastly designs. Liam is striking. Yeah, he survived that scare in the first game and takes the lead against Wesley. Unbelievable action. And it gives us the chance to jump to another game. Where should we jump? Everywhere we have action. Okay, we haven't updated on Duda against Mamed Yadov. It's also still a lot of pressure on uh, Mamed Yadov, down to 30 seconds against one minute. But he sort of caught the rook into the exchange, right? Yes, he has, avoid the trade. he has chances to, to survive, yeah. But... Yeah, queen f6, yeah, I, I figure he might. But on the other hand, Duda is also trying to dominate this knight on b8, yeah? He doesn't want to let this, this knight escape anymore in this game. But queen d7... Inviting Queen G5. Queen G7 looks like it could it could be a blunder, right? It invites Knight E5. It invites Queen G5. It invites all kinds of nasty things. Yes. And doing it with 20 seconds. I mean, okay, how how do you do this? I mean, Queen F6. Yeah, looked like uh, such a you know cemento. Yeah, just defend. Yeah, but Queen D7 keeps it loose. On the other hand, it puts pressure on White because Bishop is hanging on B7. And bishop on b4 protects back on f8. Yeah, it is a, it's a very tricky position. Of course, white always has perpetual check, but I, I don't see anything more than perpetual check. Yeah, Duda also down to 25 seconds. Duda is so focused. I mean, whenever I look at him, I see that this incredible focus down to 15 seconds. Queen g5 check. Okay, of course, you, you try to collect some time. Queen f6, king g8. But I'm not, I'm not, not seeing the, the final kill, yeah? There is, where is the... Maybe there is no kill? Yeah, maybe there is no kill, yeah. I mean, the, the bishop defends the rook on f8 and the queen defends on the seventh rank. So um, there is no, yeah, queen g5 check, king h8. It's probably probably going to be a draw. Yeah, it's a bit, no EF five. Duda never goes for a draw. He's such an un uncompromising uh, player. That's why I think he's such a big uh, fan favorite. The same applies to Shakli as well. Queen takes B seven runs into F six, so Rook takes C eight yeah. has to be played. And uh, yeah, now Queen C eight, and he has. He probably still has perpetual 95. For Ketua, wants... for, for it's Duda. No perpetual check. If it, I would play the game, it would have ended already with a perpetual. No Duda. 95. Queen uh, e8, f6, bishop f8. Queen f8 played. Queen f8, I was worried about check and f takes e6. Well, I mean, yeah, he goes queen f6, king g8, Maybe f6. Yeah. f6 just takes and uh, king. And then king g7. And suddenly everything is protected. Yeah, bishop is protected. Knight is protected. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about knight g4? Is that a shocker or, or yeah, knight g4 on the board? Maybe bishop d2, yeah. Yeah, you have bishop d2, yeah. <laughs> Just but okay, after bishop d2, f6, a little bit different, yeah. And then all your pieces are loose suddenly. Now uh, the bishop will be definitely hanging. Um... Yeah, and then whenever you interfere with the queen, queen f7, then the knight on b8 might be vulnerable. Yeah, it's a very tricky spot. Lucky for Shakya that he had 40 seconds, he might be able to find the defense. Look at this focus. Five seconds. Yeah, gotta play bishop d2, yeah. Yeah, bishop d2, but it's a blunder. You see, bishop d2 computer says, that's it, this is losing. So what, what should black have done? We don't know. 
maybe this uh, concept yeah, of making space for your king with h5 or h6, but difficult. Oh my god, queen e8 was only move. Okay, no way with, with 40 seconds that you can ever find queen e8, Yana. Yeah, this was the position I had in mind, and I felt that you will lose one of these pieces. One of the pieces, yeah, queen e5 check and... And just queen e4 check, right? Queen e4 check is brutal. Yeah, queen f5, queen e8 or knight e5. And uh, 95 king f6 maybe still not not yes enough. it's not not over yet yeah it's uh now duda is down to 10 seconds check king g7 back Again, five seconds for Duda. Yeah, queen e5 check, king g6. This is the key moment. Now Duda has to find the, the, the winning move. We still don't know what it is. Queen e4 check. Yeah, that felt right. And queen f5 check. Queen, queen e8 e check. Eight. Yeah, looks very promising. Queen e8, king g7, and maybe queen e7 check. But then queen f7, yeah? Queen e5. And then queen e5, and then, uh, yes, then the knight is hanging. Yeah, exactly. That was... Now, the problem of Shaklia is that he would love to play instantly so that he puts uh, Duda under pressure with the clock, but, th th I mean, every move can cause the game immediately. Well, but he had to play queen f5 immediately because he shouldn't give this time to, to calm down. Uh, wow, well, and 95 checks, so king f6, ah, okay, he just repeats and goes queen e8. Yeah, he just makes time and he'll go queen e8. Very professional. <laughs> I mean, king g5, still not easy. Still not easy. There is also the tempt temptation just to play h3 or something, no? Just to but queen g8 it. is made, no? Yes, H D is strongest also mm. according to Tadeas, but he says that many other things, but H like, is so I can pleasing. Go Queen G eight, right? He Queen ninety five. I mean Queen G eight, Queen G six, and then you Queen have G5 the fourth check. And then King, King G four. Uh, H3, King H3, and I don't have the D7 square. Oh my God, I don't have the D7 square. Because I thought I have Queen D7, Queen H7 mate, yeah? But you're controlling the square. Yeah, yeah, this this Knight on B8, yeah? Still. Suddenly alive, right? <laughs> yeah, but also Knight E5 looks very strong. Also now, White is simply starting to take the Knight. Actually, he trapped the Knight on B8. Besides that, the King is in a mating net. Yeah, I think black is in all sorts of trouble here. Yeah. And 10 seconds. Yeah, queen b1 check. King g2 and queen e4 runs into knight f3 check. Shakri goes queen takes b3. I mean, stunning queen. Yeah, protecting mm -hmm. the knight, protecting from queen g8. But I mean, first of all, knight f3 already wins the bishop. It should be technical win, but... Probably there is a mate. But okay, do that down to nine seconds. I think he will first collect something. Yeah, knight takes d2 should be should be plenty. Yeah, king f6, knight d2, then queen d5, knight e4 check. And then f3, and then the second wave of attack. Yeah. Exactly. And this is no way it's not gonna end badly for black. By the way, Magnus is probably winning. Yeah, that game saw so many changes of fortune, right? And... Yeah. Yeah, 94 check. King f5 and okay, just f3. It's such a pleasure to, to cement everything. I mean, this is really what, what you desire, yeah? And then the king is in a mating net. Mm -hmm. f3 on the board. Queen h5 check now. So. King e6. And maybe queen h6. And then you collect h7 with a check. And then I will collect some more. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, also this king on f5 is 
so I mean it was so tempting to just try to checkmate it, but but okay, I mean if you can collect everything we check and you are completely winning, why not? Why not indeed? Yes. Yes. Queen G7, wow, King E5. No. I mean, uh, Shakri is really asking to be mated. Yeah, Queen G7 now will do the trick, probably. King E6. But Knight G5, Knight G5 is wrong. Yeah, maybe just. Yeah, take I, I think H. actually Shakri is incredibly clever. He knows that he's lost. He at least wants to provoke opponent to try <laughs> to checkmate me. You have no time. This is my chance. Mm -hmm. Queen h7, and now at least the pawn did not fail with the check. That's the positive for Mama Jalov. The, the negative is that uh, the position still remains completely lost. Well, he lost all his pawns, yeah. And... Yeah, and the king is still in trouble. And also the big fight in uh, Pragnanda against Anish Giri also on. I mean, I don't know if I would be Indian fan, no matter how late it is, I wouldn't be able to sleep with, with all, all these uh, pieces hanging just very quickly to update the, the position. Look at this. White knight went to h8, targeting the g6 pawn. The knight on f4 is hanging, but black has this very strong pass pawn on a4. And the players are down to seconds. Also very interesting and dif difficult position to play. I think black can probably force a draw if he wants to. Like a3, rook a8, knight h3, check. King takes g6. Uh, knight g1. I like this, yeah. And Anish goes for it. Knight h3, check. But I would start with knight h3 first, yeah, because now white has king h4 and rook takes a3. Yeah, now you might just end up this uh, two versus one. So Anish jumps back with the knight to f4. Yeah, rook takes a3, king f6. I don't know if this knight is getting out of that corner. Yeah, knight is ugly. The king on h4 is ugly. I mean, white might actually go king g5, knowing that he's leading in the match. I wouldn't it's... rule it out. Or can you give a rook a6 check just to check where is this? Yeah, key, rook, rook a6 check on the board. King e7. Anish did not find this choice difficult. E well, I mean, okay, King e7 wasn't, but now he stepped into knight g 6 check eventually. Well, now again, yeah, knight h3 check. And uh, now king h6 possibly, right? Now king h6. Chess is a difficult game. Chess is a brutal game. <laughs> it's merciless, yeah? I mean, it's, it's, not, it's unforgiving. Knight h3 and king h6. The move Rustam has called. Shouted out. King h6, big chance for Prague. On the board. Rook c3 played. Yeah, Magnus is breaking through. Magnus is winning and already computer is screaming that that's it. Prague gonna take it. Knight e5 check will be very pleasant, of course. Protecting the pawn. What? I mean, I thought that Magnus is breaking through and uh, I'm getting message that maybe not. Wow, but okay. I mean, I want to see Prague collecting this if he has already done this, this work. Maybe not so easy, yeah? Yeah, not so easy. Down to 20 seconds. G5, strongest according to computer. G5 and F4, yeah? G5, F4, yeah. I mean, it was so tempting to centralize the knight, yeah, with knight E5 check with the tempo, but it would give black this king C7, king B7 idea. Mm -hmm. Very sharp play. Mm -hmm. And on each down to 12 sec 10 seconds. King C7, yeah, the king is running, but it, it will be just too slow, yeah. F4 and, and vamos, amigos. Oh no, F4 mistake. I mean, how much? I mean, the, the, this engine is driving me crazy. Yeah, Rook C6, C6 Anish yeah. finds it. And now A2, right? Oh, uh, A2, F5. My God. Okay, A2, F5. And then Rook C6. And again, it's winning for white. 
Uh, what it was King B7 was the move. I mean, I just don't know. It's uh, maybe King B7 threatening Rook A6. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, this is insane with so little time on the clock. Impossible. Yeah, knight H4 is remarkably cold blooded. Yeah, and almost blitzed out instantly. Yeah, protecting yeah. the pawn. The knight protects the pawn. King protects the other pawn, and uh, the rook attacks the other pawn. So. Black will be forced to hang on to his A2 pawn, and then the pawns will start marching. And now maybe G6 is a better pawn to march, maybe? Probably, yeah, G6, yeah, yeah because your king is supporting, plus the knight is taking away the G2 square as well. Yeah. Now this pawn is a monster. Yeah, Prague on fire, yeah, this is when, when Prague starts to win, he gets this confidence, and with little time on the clock, he's just so sharp. Knight f2 g7. Mm -hmm. That's it, basically. Yeah, Among Us game is, is a dead draw, right? So there's. Um... A dead draw despite being two pawns up. Okay, Hianish will have to design, but okay, we already stay till the end. It's only six seconds left for Anish. Yeah, he designs. Wow, Pluck takes the another point and he's leading 2-0. Magnus is up two pawns but his king is boxed in. These, these pawns are not going anywhere because there is no way that he can get out with his king. If he gets out then black starts checking forever. Wow, it, it would be an incredible save. Maybe on this save Arjun could you know, build, build up some momentum. Magnus, of course, will be moving around, but okay, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you, you can just move the rook, stay on the C file, and uh, don't get. Yeah, just rook C3. And actually, do that slowly, step by step, but steadily converts just very quickly. We bring up the position. Yeah, that three pawns are just too much. This eight right. pawn. In this match, how did the first game finish? I already forgot. I mean, uh, we, we had uh, three draws. I mean, two draws and Magnus and Prague has won Yeah, in the first game. So, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, but... Duda is taking the lead and uh, Liam has taken the lead against Wesley. Yeah, so... By now, there is no match in equilibrium, right? Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, now the H-pawn is marching. And I totally jinxed Anish. Didn't no, I say he, he made no did. mistakes yesterday? I mean, yesterday he played brilliantly. I, I mean, we saw the, the best Anish we have seen for a long time. And uh, and this taking too much risk in the first game, yeah, it was not his cup of tea. He, he should have stick to his, um, his, his comfort zone. Well, always easy to say afterwards, right? When yeah, of out. course. I mean, if the plan works, then everybody says, wow, yeah, of course, now he Anish gained the confidence and now he's going for crushing attack and whatsoever, but yeah, and uh, hang on, is there some intrigue here? Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling that everything is a draw here, like for instance, rook c7. Yeah, rook c7 played. Rook b6 will be played as well. And now black sort of stands around. And rook h7, yeah, you just wait. Because the, the rook cannot leave the b-file. If black ever gets king b8, then it's automatically over. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, black has this perfect rook. Can give million checks, but also just, a, for example, rook h7, rook g7, if he, if he wants. Yeah, so now he can go back, yeah. Ah, now he can even try to force repetition. Rook a7, rook h7. Already twice the same position. And okay, also Arjuna has a minute on the clock, yeah? So basically we, we can't imagine any miracles here. King A4. You can just start checking, exactly, because any rook trade, yeah, okay. Oh, thank no, just you very take much. the rook, yeah? Take the rook. <laughs> yeah, just uh, thank you, Magnus. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. he knows that it's a dead draw, so why to waste time? Yeah, stalemate. And Magnus shaking his head, he knows that, I mean, th this, this look and game, I mean, with a perfect look on B6, 
and with his pawns uh, fixed on a5 and b4. It's, if somebody tells Magnus that you are not winning this game, he would have laughed. He would say, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, tell me a number. Yeah, if it's, uh, I'm going to win it from 1 million, million times. And, and suddenly it happened that it ended in the draw. Wow, so we are getting a message that Liam starting on the hour, Anish, at 0, 05. I mean, 5 past the hour, but perhaps you can have a... Well, I'm not sure. I mean, I feel like I can go on. But uh, I, I think, yeah, because the game is about to start, then let, let's stay. Or I, I have to ask you, Lustam, as well. What, what is your take? Yeah, no, I think uh, it's always good to to run commercials for a couple of minutes so that sponsors also get something for their back. Yeah. Okay, okay, then okay, let's do a two minutes break and then we will be right back. Mm-hmm. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Hello, everybody. I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pendala from India. <laughs> And welcome back, everyone. Uh, Liam, Liam Lea against Wesley so has already started. Uh, we have missed the first couple of moves, but I think uh, it's it's fine. It's a Catalan with the very trendy D takes C4, Bishop G2, C5, a super solid line. Castle's knight C6. Wesley has played it uh, quite a lot recently. And interestingly, at Queen A4, we have seen a lot of debate in this endgame. D takes C5, Queen D1, Rook D1. Bishop takes c5, knight b2, already millions of games here with tons of finesse is often in uh, move 35. Uh, but I think all players are a little bit fed up with this. And white is trying to bring the, the line back with queen a4, bishop d7. And d takes c5, this is a line where sometimes black goes knight a5 and then we reach some very complex uh, position where uh, white sacrifices the pawn, everything is hanging and so on. And it might not be the spirit of the of, of D takes C for C5, yeah, because you want to be as solid as possible. And Wesley actually goes for bishop takes C5, queen C4, bishop E7, the solid reaction. I think maybe Rustam is also a perfect guy to ask that. Did you ever look at this position seriously? Well, I thought this was a bit better for white. And the other one that you mentioned was knight a5, I think does exist. Mm-hmm. Um, so it seems to me that maybe Wesley is not perfectly ready to meet this. And uh, uh, But okay, he'll get his solid position. He needs to win 
the last game yeah so this one could easily be a draw yeah well He's basically fourth. on the other hand i mean liam is also playing in the spirit like if he is looking for a very interesting battle yeah he doesn't seem to be trying to control everything it's uh, but maybe he simply believes as you said that it's kind of that there is this uh, knowledge no i have seen some galfan games here mm -hmm. where he played some modern game and won some games with this structure yeah his queen gets back to e2 it's maybe very comfortable for white I think Liam could still be in his prep, right? Why not? Yeah, I mean, if if you play d takes c five, then you have to be prepared, yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, this bishop takes c five is the most natural reaction. But yeah, as, as you said, yeah, e four queen e two, and I do recall Gerfund uh, being quite successful with this. Yeah, at some point Gerfan played some some games with, uh, I want to say one how, but um, no hundred percent sure. Yeah, I also, I'm not exactly sure against whom, but uh, basically, Gelfand has contributed so much to the Catalan. Yeah, in everywhere he was coming up with stunning ideas. Uh, he's, he's basically the boss of, of the Catalan. And Wesley jumps knight g4, yeah, so he wants to anticipate. Yeah, he's fighting for the e5 square, not allowing white to simply enter with the, I mean, retreat with the queen to e2. Yeah, knight e5 and then takes, takes. Probably queen d4 will not work tactically, right? It looks like it shouldn't work. Yeah, it, one, one really has the feeling it, it should not work. Otherwise, it would be very strong. So something like takes, takes, queen e2 or queen e2 immediately are we expecting. But let's see why it doesn't work. Yeah, so if takes, it doesn't work. takes. I mean, wow, knight c5 played. That's uh, That's an interesting twist and... And Liam immediately instantly blitzes out Queen BC like if he knew this. Yeah, he's he's in the book. Yeah, he's in the book, yeah. So takes, 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 takes. 95, bishop g2. Black is still under some sort of pressure, right? And yeah, bishop is hanging, white is ready to develop the bishop with tempo, bishop f4, and then the bishop on d7 will be vulnerable. And wow, Anish is also going again for the very same line. So actually he 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 wants to prove that you know what it was not the open opening and he plays the bishop easily set up not not 92 knight g3 well at, at zero two in the match there is so much there's only so much that can go wrong for you right yeah i mean he he basically wants to to gamble yeah it's uh and interesting yeah because tanya asked him uh, yesterday that did it go according to plan yeah this was your strategy and he kind of said yeah, yeah, it was all according to the plan, yeah, that he was just repeating the same openings and then uh, hoping for his chance to come. Uh, and now he kind of also repeats exactly the same system. Well, I mean, he said so much more in the interview yesterday. I still think this was a remarkable interview. <laughs> just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I felt like only we, we got a very relieved Danish yesterday there, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, but okay, so this is all very interesting and very complex, but it's still just at the beginning. Yeah, knight a5 plug is going for the same ideas like in the previous game. But it's a little bit different twist because the white knight has not yet committed himself to g3. There are all kinds of nuances, but you have to be an expert and you have to analyze with computers in order to understand why you are doing certain things. I, I don't think that without very special preparation you can play these positions or if you can understand them bishop f4 okay so that's uh, that's the position which maybe it's a little bit easier to explain yeah we see that there is a pin bishop on d7 is hanging it's it's a loose piece desirable would be to play a move like bishop c6 but that might run into some rook ac1 knight d5 or I, mean, I, I have a feeling we should we should know this. I have a feeling it's it's theory. I mean, you should know it. Yeah, you are. Like maybe you are rook the f, boss. Maybe rook f d eight also was possible. I was trying to recall. Um, rook f d eight, knight d five, queen a five, or so. There is a, it's some theory. It's some theory from some world championship match preparation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you have you have done at some moment. <laughs> in time well bishop c6 knight b5 okay what what is this exactly so it was now queen a5 knight takes 
A7. Queen yeah? A5, Knight A7, Queen A7, Bishop E5, Bishop A4 wins. Material, yeah? Wins some material, yes. Which means after Queen A5, I'd probably play something else. Yeah, I just want to highlight yeah, that there is this and there is no pin because the bishop is controlling the AC square. Wow, I mean, yeah, Knight B5, Queen A5 on the board. Computer believes that white is doing great. After A4, right? I mean, A4 is... Probably A4 is the move, yeah. Just protect this knight, keep the pressure on the knight on E5. The queen on A5 can be very awkwardly placed sometimes. Um... Actually, Wesley is running a risk of losing this game and then losing the match on the spot. Yeah, could could happen, yeah? Yeah, this is, a, this is the reason why usually if Magnus gets a chance in the knockout stages to to pick the color, yeah, in, in the usual regular tournaments, yeah, then he always picks white. Yeah, yeah that's because the... you could be done in three games, right? And... You could, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's counterintuitive when, when someone would have asked me before all this tour started that if it's a four games match, which color you would prefer, I would have said, yeah, okay, probably black and then I will have white in the fourth game. <laughs> you might <laughs> not get there, yeah? First of all, you might not get to, to the fourth game. And then I also think that picking white when possible is always a strong message. You are not interested in defending, right? You just want to attack and win. This is a good message. <laughs> well, especially if you can deliver the message, yeah, finally. Yeah. It's, uh, because I was never afraid if uh, opponent was playing some psychological games. I mean, okay, let let him do. But if he, if if he, if I understand that he means it seriously, yeah, he's really putting me under pressure. Then, then, then I start to worry. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and now Liam is taking his time. It's interesting that why is he not yet playing the move A4? It's so tempting. Maybe A4, A6, he is wondering about. about but also, I, th I think this is this is a very clever mindset that probably he understood that somewhere Wesley deviated from the perfect play. Mm -hmm. So there might be something at the same time he does not remember yet because, of course, you can't prepare everything. And uh, he has in his mind that I blitzed out everything. My mind is not yet working. Let's take some time. Yeah, get, give my brain the chance to get into the position. I think this is also very important in classical chess, yeah? Because often we are blitzing out some 20 moves of theory and we haven't really started using our brain. Mm -hmm. And then some critical moment comes and we still rush, yeah? And... Uh, and we can make a mistake. I think this is very important to pay attention to. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I, I suggest to my pupils in general not to blitz out opening moves. Even, Even if, if they you know, know yes? Even if you know, yeah, you just take a minute or two here and there so that you kind of slow down and get into the game. Yeah, all right. So A4 on the board. Uh, the Magnus' game against uh, Arjun is... He's a Catalan and Magnus plays his favorite D takes C4, Bishop B4, check A5. He really mm. loves this. He believes in it. Then he wants to liquidate. Yeah, he, he very much believes. I think this is also some kind of a very old line, which you probably know from World Championship matches. Probably 2010, Sofia, yeah? Yeah, but also later we started uh, kind of checking it, of course, because Magnus st started playing it a lot. Um also here, black uh, black has uh, even a choice. Yeah, black can take bishop d two and can even play bishop e seven, as far as I remember. Ah, uh, yeah, this is some new twist. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. People are playing this bishop e seven move. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's also a strange one. Yeah, yeah, giving this option for queen a four check and then you go some knight b seven c six or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but, okay, but this is the plays. old classical one. Yeah. It takes takes b5 b3 is uh yeah as you say sort of classical and then um white usually gets a very pleasant position but black has a pawn now so um, everybody's happy yeah everybody's yeah i think you were also playing this from the black side well i had this one uh, one game that uh, probably caught your attention yeah yes against salem yeah yes i think so yes 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 it was against salem yeah yeah, queen takes b3 and then, okay, all these kind of things. Yeah, that it's uh, very ugly for black, but at the same time, you are pawn up. There is no 
clear plan for, I mean, clear way for White to, to claim advantage. And then White starts to slowly shuffling the pieces. Look, FC1, mm -hmm. Queen B2, Knight B3, Knight E1, Knight D3. I mean, all, all this kind of maneuvering stuff starts. Yeah. Now, in a way, it is very solid for Black because uh, the damage that can be done to Black's position is very limited. Uh, like maybe White can win a pawn back and get a pleasant ending, but that's about it. Yeah, you will survive the opening. You will survive the middle game. Yeah, it's a it's a fair point. And you just forget about the ugliness and the weak squares and and so on. Yeah. Well, ugliness is in the eye of the beholder, right? Uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, Magnus also seems to believe in it. Yeah, he he goes for this line. Look, FC one. Yeah. on the board and we also see a very tricky move order by uh, Mamed Yalov against Duda I do recall that this Rook C1 was some kind of a Mamed Yalov specialty <clears throat> let us bring this up symmetrical English with E3 it can also happen from <clears throat> some semi I mean uh, semi Tarash and then this modern Tarash and so on D5 CDD Bishop B2 and bishop e7, white opted for rook c1. Yeah, this is a very special move trying to target the c5 pawn as quickly as possible. Castles knight a4. Hmm. Tricky stuff. Yeah, I seem to recall some knight e4 here as a possibility. Yeah, there was something like this. Yeah, because DC runs into queen a5 check. Or... Queen a5 black has a check, yes. DC queen a5 check. Yeah, but this is exactly the kind of uh, chess that uh, Shakriya needs now, yeah, because he lost the previous game and get his opponent out of book as quickly as possible and ask all those strange little questions which are so hard to, to answer. Well, difficult to answer in real time always. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. After the game, then you, we usually realize how we should have played, yeah, but real time is always difficult. Yeah, you just open up the engine, yeah, and then engine tells you that, oh, of course, you could play this because it looks dangerous and it's suspicious, but it works exactly. Uh, but in a rapid, and we see already Duda down to nine minutes. The surprise works to perfection. Besides, White is also setting Bishop takes f6. Yeah, let's, let's not forget. I mean, if, mm -hmm. of course, Knight takes c5 is the big stat, but uh, this Bishop is overloaded, the pawn on c5 is hanging. Can I play b6? I'm just curious. Yeah, b6 and then d4. Cd? What? I mean, I'm just curious. Uh, yeah. Wow, b6 on the board. Yeah. Rook c6, bishop b4 check. This is your style. Knight d2, knight d4. I think maybe I can pull it off. Huh? Yeah, this is promising. This is definitely promising. But okay, mm -hmm. after cd4, I can also just steal the capture with knight. Yeah, bishop b4 check, then uh, get the limit of damage. The damage is limited at least, yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, we don't know if there is any damage at all, yeah? it's uh, mm -hmm. We are just uh, impressed that, uh, yeah, Shakriya managed to surprise mm -hmm. Duda, but Duda uh, yeah, after 94, 94 played. 94 is probably more sane, yeah, but I'm, I'm still curious. Yeah, just keeping the tension. Okay, White has also some bishop b5 and then short castle, typical idea in this type of positions to, to get the tempo for, for castling and also the knight on c6 is loose. Yeah, bishop b5 might be tempting. And okay, because the, the reason I was not 100% sure how much effort I should put into this game because we have Anish Giri against Pragnanda and... This is now becoming a very tricky position. How how did so everything happened like it happened? Yeah, everything is logical. Then Prague opted for knight d7. White started immediately this attack with f4, f5, bishop c4, f5. And then Prague captured on f5. And he spent quite some time till up till this moment. He was blitzing everything out. And then he went for knight g3. I have a feeling I've seen this before. I think the idea is that after f5, if black castle short, 
then I think White plays like f6. F6, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this I've seen somewhere, knight f6, bishop g5. And, uh, but okay, the way Pragnaranda played, ef and then fe4 feels uh, asking for it, right? Asking for it, yeah, begging for it. I mean, this is, uh, on the other hand, now knight takes d6, bishop d6, queen d6, I feel like at least the, the king has escape to some safety on the other hand knight on if yeah it's there there is still a lot of danger because this knight can jump to f5 as well yeah, i think the safety is very temporary yeah i mean it looks safer than it is yeah because it's not safe at all hmm. the funny thing is that if you read the, the chat that follows our commentary you would never guess that they are watching a, a chess commentary they're talking about music and about math and about geometry and I completely, completely lost it. Wow, okay. It shows that uh, how many interesting characters we have there. Yeah, that's that's the trick. Yeah, no, they, they seem to be very educated people. Yeah, I'm kind of admiring this. Yes, that's nice to hear. But I mean, okay, here the uh, Anish Gid is trying to attack Plug. Yeah, Plug is leading 2-0. Anish needs to strike back at all costs, and he got his position. He got his position. He's up on the clock. There is a lot of potential. Yeah, this, this whole construction is somehow very poisonous. With I mean, if White would have a pawn on F2, I think all of his initiative would more or less evaporate almost instantly. But uh, but thanks to this F file, yeah, White has this potential. Well, in a way, both his rooks have so much more potential than black rooks that do not have a square. Yeah? And white has the f-file and the e-file and just there's so much potential for white pieces here. Yeah, knight c6 played by Pragya. He's trying to bring that knight back and probably hinting at, at knight e7 eventually to cover the f5 square. Trying to reach there. But but now already some tactics on f7 could maybe happen, yeah? Yeah, now why, why, why it would have to calculate? But maybe it's premature because finally you have knight f6 blockade. Mm -hmm. And to me, queen e4 looked very... Queen e4, possible. yeah, just... But okay, I, I wanted to scare you off so that I'm setting knight e7, but you are not impressed. I, I never thought 97 was a threat, to be honest. Yeah. Because Bishop G5, you Nothing just like see this. Game, yeah. right? <laughs> no, I mean, okay, but I was trying to defend. The F, I mean, because Knight C6 is doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the default pawn is protected. So I had to, you know, sell this move somehow. I thought Queen C7 was the only move for you after Queen E4. Queen E4, Queen C7, and then Bishop F4, you, you play Knight F6. So. Well, then at least I get some, some tempo, yeah, some squares. Yeah, probably. But yeah, it's such a scary position. It uh, it worked to perfection Anish's choice in this game. And now he's kicking himself. Why he didn't start it with this move order? Yeah, in the first game. Yeah, it, he he could have gotten to a to a lovely start with with his opening. Yeah, well, uh, hindsight knowledge is is especially tricky in chess. Yeah, yeah, but I mean it. Uh, it adds to the sorrow, yeah, because uh, then if you lose the match, yeah, finally, and then you are going back, and then basically whatever I did, just I should have started with this, and it would have been fine, yeah, Be because with his black position, I mean, with his black color, he had zero trouble, yeah, it was a absolutely normal position. Maybe he lost it, and he he made mistakes because he was already affected by the first game, yeah. It's it's always a chain reaction. Yeah, now this is also one of those things which which uh, which makes which makes chess so difficult, right? Because it's so difficult not to feel this this regret, right? Afterwards, when you think you know, just one more move, yeah, one other moves would 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 make it all better. Yeah, change everything. Yeah, it's yeah. just one little move. And and often you have even seen that move, yeah. But for some reason you overruled it. That no, the other one is maybe even better, and then you pay such a high price for it. Oh, but I think almost almost always you've seen this move, right? But, uh, and this is especially painful. But okay, we shouldn't talk about the pain of chess. Let's talk about the glory. 
Oh, and the beauty, yeah, that now you have the chance to attack this position after knight c6, everything is loose. The, the knight on d6 is a monster. Mm -hmm. F7 pawn is vulnerable. But how to how to destroy black's position? So queen e4 was your suggestion? Queen e4, that... yeah, maybe queen c7, knight f5 was suggested by the chat. Uh-huh, okay. I have big respect for chat. Threatening queen c6. Yes. Looks good. Important. Because I thought, okay, black has maybe rook e8, but queen g4 is probably bad news, right? Or rook a8, but either way, yeah, queen g4 and knight h6 check, yes. And here queen g4 and g6, at the very least white can win the exchange, but probably more. Yeah, bishop h6 would be exchange. Also, you can include some bishop mm -hmm. f4 maybe, also hurts. Yeah, no, this, this queen e4, queen c7, knight f5 is super intelligent. Very, very clever. And well, by the it... way, because, okay, here we have this incredible attack and Danish has to make up his mind. What about the Liam Wesley game? Looks like After a four. a4, knight d7 happened, knight d6, and black had to play the move rook a8. This smells... Like trouble, knight b7, queen b6, takes, takes, and look, dc1. Wow, what a nice move! Yeah, very, very pretty. Yes, so if bishop b7, then rook c7 wins back the, the piece, and uh, bishop takes a4, then uh, rook enters to c7, knight can jump back to d6 or c5, pawn on a7, now the rook on a1 is already alive, and Vasily in a lot of trouble, he might lose in three games. Yeah, and, and, and basically, Wesley has come with uh, with the global championship title in his pocket. Yeah, but I also feel that whenever you have this incredible success, it's very difficult immediately after to perform at your very best. Yeah, because you are so happy and probably also proud. You want to enjoy the momentum, but um, basically, chess is so unforgiving. Uh, like we spoke, yeah, that uh, nobody cares already in this tournament that you have won that. Everybody wants to beat you. Everybody wants to prove that. Okay, you won that, but we can also win. So, very tough. Ah, uh, chess is just it's just tricky. Bishop d6. What do you think about bishop d6? Or is this not getting enough from the position? Well, you have so many tempting options. Bishop d6 certainly one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have to take and then knight d6. I mean, th this is a monster construction. Well, I think I have to go e5. Yeah, bishop d6 on the board. I have to go e5 to with you. black, yeah. To stop white from expanding. Yeah, so you want to take and then play e5. Okay, mm -hmm. but expanding, you, you say expanding, then I keep on expanding. f4, f6. I mean, I'm only listening to your advices. So, for example, bishop f1. And you want to take rook a4 at some point, right? Maybe, yeah, I want to have it ready at least. And if I play rook a d8? Yeah, rook a d8, clever. And okay, now would be the time, but maybe it's not enough. It doesn't yet look decisive. Yeah, it doesn't look decisive. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you stay alive. You stay alive here. Yeah, by the way, this is on the board and you, you say that e6, e5 probably has to be played. Yeah, because otherwise white gets e5, then mm -hmm. it looks hopeless. Pawn on a7 might fall, yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah, I think e5, f4, f6 is absolutely forced. a5 is no, not a e5 good move. e5 played. a5 does not look like a good move to me. Just, you know, e5, rook b8, rook c5, and... Uh... I think also nerfs are playing a big role. Yeah, Wesley feels under a lot of pressure. He's down to 4 minutes 39. And and wow, what, what did we just witness? That uh, Liam actually outprepared Wesley. Yeah, this is... <clears throat> Pardon me, even my voice disappears because I'm not used to this. I mean, uh, Wesley is my man. Yeah, he usually has everything under control, and Liam somehow managed to to outfox him. 
Well, and once um, Wesley lost with uh, with White, yeah, it, it changes the dynamic quite a bit. Yeah, he was way too aggressive yeah, in that game. Or maybe it was just very clever from uh, from Liam, yeah, that he managed to to provoke Wesley to this unbalanced territory, which also suited Liam perfectly. Yeah, but we should we should we should take a look at Magnus' game, yeah, because yeah. The people are saying that Magnus is in serious trouble. Wow, really? That's uh, that's very interesting because it would create some additional spice to. I mean, we would see first of all game four, but also Arjun would get them the strengths, maybe. Yeah. How did this happen? Yeah, so Magnus actually broke out with knight e one e five. Yeah, it's kind of a typical idea, but. Arjun was not impressed. He forced the queen all the way to h6. Well, if you have to go queen h6, then maybe it's not a great idea, right? It just exactly, and, and immediately start harassing this bishop. Mm -hmm. Rook b8, knight d3. Queen h5, bishop f3, queen f5. And b4, yeah, Magnus is trying to liquidate, but Arjun is not interested. Knight c5, bishop a8, queen takes a5. Well, this is serious trouble with this terrible bishop on a8. And if b3, why well, it just has knight takes b3, right? So this is... Yeah, b3, knight, b3, trick. So I'm wondering if rook b5 is possible or not mm -hmm. to include. Then you will just protect with queen a7. And then do I have some b3 or some some confusion? No, yeah, Magnus he... actually just uh, took on a3 and goes for this bad position. This is a very bad position because bishop, the bishop is there, but also it's very difficult to get it out without losing a lot of material, I guess. Yeah, bishop b7. He's not like he's h6. He's he's just not even trying to get it out, right? Yeah, he has to cover the back rank. Yeah, that was also a big problem. And um, I think Magnus can take the comfort that he knows that he's leading the match by 2-0. Yeah, so. The pressure is on Arjun, yeah. That okay, he knows that he no, has he's not leading to zero, no? He's leading one and a half. Ah, because he did not win that game. Oh, he yes. He did not win that game, yeah. He did not win. Yeah, in my mind, I have already given Magnus the, the point. Of course, yeah, it, we have witnessed this two pawns up end game, which was already drawn then with the double A pawns. Yeah, true. Wow, but then there is a lot of heat here. Yeah, queen a7, king g2. I'm, I'm not sure how easy it is to convert, but it should definitely be possible. Yeah, it's uh, very pleasant. Okay, probably Magnus will try to get his queen to e7. Yeah, it would be a... Wow, e4 immediately. Yeah, I would probably just go queen a7 to prevent bishop b7. I would not go e4. Yeah, e4 is a little bit committal, yeah? That you, we don't want to weaken the squares. I find in general that if you don't play e4 or move one, then you might as well, you know, leave it. Leave it for the end game, yeah? Leave, leave it for later, yeah? Or just never touch it. Yeah, I find the spawn on e2 gives your position so much stability. Yeah, he goes for knight d3. He wants to... Yeah, but, but I'm not liking this. The knight was so powerful on c5. Yeah, it also allows... He wants to go e5, but I think it, it it's a blunder, right? Because, for instance, queen e8... E5, well, also has... queen b5 is an option, but yeah, queen e8 is also just... Well, black has uh, e5, c5, yeah? I think this is not what, what he should have Ah, uh, this is your trick. Okay, but... Magnus goes queen e6. Uh, queen e6, e5, c5, yeah? Either way, this bishop has now a chance to, to get out. Yeah, no, this, this knight quickly has to jump back to c5, but then already black goes queen e7, probably. Yes, so queen h3, I don't know, but queen h3 is nothing, yeah, maybe queen e7, yes. e4 is a very committal decision. Yeah, right? very committal, I don't like it. Also knowing Magnus, yeah, that and e5, no, no, this is running into c, I wasn't even so sure that knight d5 is so bad. I mean, I just don't like this e e four move. Well, knight d five, maybe I can go knight c five back. Yes, and then queen e seven. Even then, I'm not sure. Yeah, because suddenly, at least you have some weaknesses. 
Yes. But, yes. But, but I mean, okay, if your move works with C5, then then of course there is no reason to talk about it. A C5, EF. Uh, no, B6. hang on. If if I take on eight and take on C5, am I pawn up or not? I'll give you this pawn, yeah. yeah. Ah, you give me. Okay, you are very friendly. Okay, let me take it. Uh, knight d7. Knight d7, queen d4. I mean, I'm pawn up and I have cemento. Okay, I thought you know, even f6. f6, you have rook. Do you have knight f4, yeah? I have knight f4, yeah. I feel like your knight mm -hmm. is loose, yeah? If your knight would be on e6, I would agree, but... Uh-huh, maybe, maybe my knight is bad. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's... Uh... Not not exactly clear. Yeah, if Magnus will jump for it or maybe I should bring the knight to some better squares. But then knight h7 or knight e4, knight g5. It, I don't know exactly. Okay, it's Magnus's Magnus's decision. It's a tough call. Less than five minutes on the clock. Arjun is putting pressure, and we talked about this that. Not winning that second game will actually suddenly give Yajun the, the momentum. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's trying to use that. Uh, Tadej is saying queen f5 now instead of c5. Okay, that's brutal. I, I, I smell some, some supercomputer there. Queen f5, yeah. Hit, hitting the bishop. And then probably getting ready for c5. Yeah, bishop g2, knight g4, and then c5. Yeah. yeah, no, this is this is why we hate uh, to face computers. Yeah, because from every no, Magnus goes c5. Yeah, Magnus is human, a superhuman, but but still a human. C5. I mean, this queen f5 is is just so difficult to spot, Be because you know that there is this c5 idea. Yeah, that that's why your heart and your uh, brain is thinking between should I go knight d5, but that's ugly. Or should I just sacrifice the pawn? Yeah, and you are confused between these uh, two choices. And then, okay, finally you say, okay, let me sacrifice this pawn. I think uh, once you had the bishop on a8 and the pawn on c6, you do whatever it takes to, to stop that, no? Yeah, but it's a pawn, yeah? It's, uh... I'm not 100% sure. Well, I mean, yeah, and, and Tadeas you... also confirms that he would have played c5 for sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what we felt. That, but it's so nice to to know that. I mean, computers find everywhere some incredible resources. Just stunning. Queen f5. Maybe maybe we should put the knight on d5 yeah, instead of d7. So bishop a8. Yes. Yeah, so takes takes queen c5. Yeah. Also, uh, maybe queen c5. Maybe we should get one one pair of rooks off. Ah, look f c eight. That's look f c eight for instance. Yes. Yeah. So okay, I will probably play queen d four. Rook takes c one. And now maybe queen d five. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that. Now, do you go queen d five into this torture or not? I mean, I think you will torture me no matter what I do. Yeah, I might as well go queen d five and then hope for the best. Yeah, but uh, somehow, I mean, for, for me, always it's, I believe that this should be winning. Yeah, I understand that black has very good drawing chances, but I believe much more in uh, white should win this than black should hold. Well, I think that's how they uh, they brought us up. That, uh, you know, knight and four against knight and three with rooks or without. Uh, and fine claiming in his famous book that it's winning for white, but... Uh, but as far as I know, computers disagree with uh, with this one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Computers disagree with so many things. But look at this. Arjun goes for EF6. I'm not a fan of this EF6. Because I know Magnus is a brilliant martial player. And whenever I see this light square bishop, I mean, the martial comes to mind. FG, look FD8. Yes. No, I would... I mean, this, this dead bishop is suddenly very much alive. Yeah, this bishop should have never gotten this chance to shine on f3 like this i mean never ever not even at 4 a.m in the morning you know exactly even even this yeah that arjun actually is playing uh, in the middle of the night or early morning or how to call it yeah it's it's like almost four o'clock there and uh it is in fact four o'clock yeah it is in fact 
four o'clock and a bit, yes. And then allowing for for your opponent some counterplay, yeah. This this likes me. I would just you know, I would take that pawn and uh, being as sleepy as I am, I would feel that at least I can't blunder anything and I have chances, yeah. And and it's also not like if he doesn't win, then the the match is over immediately, yeah. So he even has some um, some safety net, yeah. He can just press this end game and he's ready to go for this sharpness. But I think in general, it is just really bad strategy. Just keep your knight on c5, keep everything under control. Uh, take your time, right? It's just, it's just bad strategy. e4, knight, d3, this combination of moves is just a bad strategy. Yeah, uh, but I also feel like, uh, because we are also often praising the, the young players yeah, that they are Thanks to computers, very good calculators, and they have very good nerves. They don't uh, shy away from complications, uh, which is absolutely true. Yeah, this is the, the main strength. But at the same time, working a lot with computers uh, changes the, the view, yeah? Because our old view, like 20 years ago, 25, I mean, if, if your coach would ever see you move that night away, he would say, well, I mean, what are you doing, yeah? It's it just absolutely no go. But with computers, your way of thinking changes dramatically. So you have many pluses, but also somewhere it, it should bring some, some negativity. No, I guess I guess so, yeah. No, I mean, in, in many ways, uh, you should not forget, right, that, uh, uh, that these guys are just still so young. They still There is still so much experience which they do not have. And uh, they still make so many positional mistakes, actually, strong as they are. But yeah, exactly, because they are strong as they are already. It's so easy to forget that they are so young. Yeah, mm -hmm. It looks like, okay, they are brilliant players already. And then you are like shocked when suddenly they make some mistake. Yeah, that how is this happening? Yeah. Exactly. And by the way, we are getting the message that uh, Anish is doing great. So maybe we can then catch up on that because he needs to win. Here, Prague is leading 2-0. Look at the evaluation bar. And this, this knight on g4 is probably trapped. Uh, Queen c3 trying to put pressure on the e1 rook. Maybe rook um, f1. Yeah, also, yeah. But he goes rook g4 and he calculates something. Rook g4, knight g4, bishop d2. Wow. Ah, oh, wow. Just like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Effective. Very effective. Yeah, hitting the queen. There is no way to protect the knight. And queen d3, queen g4. Saturn's checkmate, so the bishop is not hanging. Okay, so queen g4, g6. I don't know how hard that is this. Should be pretty dead, yeah. Well, I mean, since we see the evaluation bar saying that it's over, I, I couldn't really... Believe that there is a chance. Um, yeah, sometimes. all the pieces. So Anish is bouncing back. We might have a hell of a match ahead of us. I mean, Anish will need to bounce back with the black pieces. Clear, but okay. He hasn't won this game yet. Knight have to play it by Prague. Trying to confuse, but okay. It's, uh, it's a very sad position. Oh, it goes with Queen E2 or? Ah, Queen E2 was. I mean, I was thinking that even the end game should be winning, even King takes F2 should be winning, but yeah, Queen E2 makes perfect sense. Well, Queen E2 does lose the pawn on A3. I don't know how relevant it is, but. Yeah, but you want to keep the initiative going. I'm just so tempted to go for an endgame and then uh, because looks it is not possible, but of course, why? Why to go for endgame? King f2, queen d3. Mm -hmm. We see the brilliant playing hole. I mean, it just uh, with this spectacular view. I mean, imagine you are the player, you have this view at the same time, you have to focus because just one mistake can cause the match. Yeah, I've never had a playing hole like this in my whole life. Wow, and Queen G4 he says, what changed? Nothing changed, mm -hmm. my friend. The queen mm -hmm. takes D2 check, Rook E2 wins the game. So Prague had to go G6. Knight E7 check, and then the bishop moves. But where does this bishop move? But where does the king move first? 
ikinci sınavı. That is no more Yeah, this is a problem. No, that is even no Luxi eight. But how do you play? Yeah, that's the big question. Yeah, that how do I play? That 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 question should be answered. Because this bishop is hanging. I'm thinking like queen g5, but I'm also not really liking this. Yeah, there is also the other option of eventually just going bishop c1, bishop b2, and then try to go for d5 check. But yeah, Anish goes queen f4, keeping the bishop. It's a good move. No, I mean, uh, somehow, okay, black has to go rook d8, I guess. No, I can even also go d5, right? And... Yeah, the, I mean, th that's the problem, that this knight actually dominates everything. Okay, Anish down to 28 seconds, so this gives some intrigue to the game, but part of this... I also keep an eye on Duda. Duda probably will save it, but it will be hell of a defense. Yeah, rook d8, d5 on the board. This is a catastrophe, and okay, let us... Quickly jump back to Magnus. What, what is this? I mean, this is what we were afraid of. Bishop dominates the knight. There is a passed C pawn. Yeah. I mean, don't don't tell me that uh, Arjun will lose this. Could easily happen. Right? Could easily happen. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, so rook, rook b2, rook ec1. Yeah, we are holding takes, takes, bishop e4, rook c1. Why rook ec1? I would go rook cc1, I think. Ah, you would go ah, like this, yeah? <laughs> and if c2, then I go king h2, g3. And very yeah, yeah, of course, you want to keep this option. You want to keep this mm -hmm. option. Yeah, this is, this is correct, yeah. I mean, g4 was, of course, a nice move. You have to create this luft. Yeah, Anish is on the right track because, okay, d5 had been played, bishop c1, bishop is getting to the diagonal. And Wesley surviving? Possibly. It still looks. Uh, yeah, dangerous. still very unpleasant. Yeah, this is a. Maybe rook c4 check and bishop c6 saves him in a concrete fashion. But then bishop e2, be careful. Oh, that's true. Yeah, bishop e2, yeah. I should not wonder. Yeah, bishop, rook c4 check played. King e3. And bishop e2 is a threat. And Wesley is also down to 40 seconds. Rook c3 check played. Ah, so check first and then... So after king d2, he has to go back all the way to c8. Yeah, I think maybe also after king f2, yeah, the idea is maybe rook c8 back and hold the rook end game possibly. Yeah. Yeah, he's going back. Yeah, Anish is completely winning. I mean, uh, the both players have little time, but okay, the position is so dominant. There is no, no way something happens. And by the way, Duda is in a lot of trouble, maybe. Oh no, I mean, no, the pawn is not yet on a5. Yeah, if, if white gets the pawn, then with this bishop on d4 and pawn on e3. Really? Duda gives the chance? He wants I to mate? He, he has bishop d6, right? With, with very strong counterplay. Yeah, a5, bishop d6, threatening it. But I don't know. I mean, this h pawn is going. I don't think it's going anywhere, actually. I mean, don't, don't, don't do this to me. I mean, a6, look at a7, the rook moves and queen. Yeah, but I have bishop e5 at any moment and then h4. Oh, you, you have know. bishop e5. Yeah, you have you have extremely good nerves. Yeah, bishop d6. I was thinking that you even want to create some mating net here against my king. Well, if you go rook a8, king f5, I'll definitely consider. Yeah, no, no, I will not move the rook yet. Yeah, that's uh, that's for sure. But even after a6, you can maybe play king f5. Yeah, a6 on the board. Wow, we have three very interesting endings. Because this is very sharp. 
Magnus is ending is also a razor sharp day, reach down line, rook b2, rook cc1, c2, and then knight h5 on the board. What to think of this? Okay, rook b8, he actually wants to go rook b1 and bishop d1, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be deadly. That, uh, that would be unpleasant, yes. And hang on, Wesley is in some kind of a tsuk or not? Look at this, nothing moves. If rook moves, then check comes. King can't move. I mean, this feels lost. King c5, rook d6. Rook d6. If this rook is not lost, then nothing. Oh, yeah, this should be lost, yes. It's, I mean, I, I don't understand computer. It's designs. King e4 and then f5 and... No, yeah, this... even f5 immediately, but king e4 and f5 should definitely yeah. be lost. No, no, this is... It's it's resigns. Maybe 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 your bar is. Uh, yeah, I think the bar collapsed. Yeah, because maybe it has some mental issues. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In the break, we will deal with it. Uh, in any case, yeah, this is hopeless for Wesley, which means that Liam will take the match. What an incredible victory that will be for for Liam. Especially after losing yesterday, but also we see that losing in the blitz, he got this extra point, so actually he can jump to four points. Yeah, yeah, he would just basically join the leaders, more or less. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, yeah, okay, this is, this, this is the worst of everything. Yeah. Okay, we, we're not gonna watch this one. Back to Magnus. How do you save this if, if Bishop D1 comes? As you highlighted. Um, I don't see yet. It looks over. Now maybe you just kind of play rook c2, bishop c2, you move your rook and you fight. No. <laughs> no, no. no fight. <laughs> I mean, okay. No, I'm not a believer in this. Yeah, bishop d1 on the board. And look at Magnus. He's also looking at like, what is your plan, my friend? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he has a plan. Yeah, yeah no, he doesn't. Maybe there is no plan. Wow, Magnus then also seals the match. And from, yeah, he go, okay, but this is Bishop G6. It's, it's Bishop G6 best. and King G7. Yeah, that's that's it. That's designs, yeah. Yeah, Magnus takes the match. And uh, well, Magnus takes the match and then Liam takes the match. Yeah, and by the way, Duda is fighting. And in fact, drawing easily. Yeah. He, he, I mean, the, here there was this incredible catch that after g4, he had, first of all, yeah, that g4 and then rook a3 check. And you can't play g3 because of h4. You have to play, but it, it doesn't bring you anything. What a save by Duda. I mean, what a save. I think you really under overestimated the spawn that White had. Yeah, the spawn really wasn't doing very well. Yeah, but no, I mean, the whole game, Duda was under pressure, yeah? So it was not like uh, only this concrete position, but throughout he had to defend uh, like like a machine. And why is Wesley playing this? No, come on, this can't, can't be true. I mean, I have never seen this being played. Yeah, he shouldn't do this. Yeah, I don't think he should do this. But on the other hand, you know. It is yeah. legal. No, of course, it's, I mean, okay, but yeah, that's it. No, no. Oh my God, yeah. I but mean, this is also some premiere, yeah, that uh, king king versus king and queen uh, people are playing till mate. And hang on, Anish, the, the game that we saw that it will be over very quickly, well, nothing changed, but the game is still on. It's a miracle. It still looks like it will be over. It should be over, but I mean, still looks like a miracle. It should have ended long ago. Uh, but hang on, how many matches do we have left? So Magnus' match is over, right? Yes, Magnus' match is over, Vesli's match is over, and we still have Mamad Yadov against Duda, but now Mamad Yadov has to try to win with the black pieces. But also Anish has the same situation, right? Anish has the same situation, yeah, that if it's... Uh, if he wins now, yeah. If he wins, not... then we have a game four, yeah, we would be very happy. But if not, then actually it's only all eyes on Mama Diad of Duda. But he should win this, yeah, King E4. But I don't know, look at this. I mean, this is a bit tricky at least. 
Can you follow Bishop D8? Yeah, so after B4, always A4 is the move, yeah? It's always he... A4 and Black doesn't have G5, yeah? Yeah, he doesn't have G5. Of course, it should be lost, yeah, but uh, Bishop D8? A Bishop, Bishop G5, G5 yeah. Yeah, is good enough. Yeah, this is this this is it, yeah. Wow, so Anish bouncing back. We're gonna have two two games. Luckily. I was getting worried. You worry too much. I worry too much, that that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but I mean okay, it's uh I mean, Arjun losing this with knight on c5, bishop on a8. This will drive him crazy. I mean, it's a late hour, but how can you fall asleep after that? This is a stuff of nightmares, really. Yeah, to lose this position is stuff yes. of nightmares. That's it. Plug resigns. So Anish has bonds back, but still, he needs to win also with the black pieces to tie the match. A big uphill battle still mm -hmm. ahead. And the same applies to... Mamma Jalov against Jan Shishtov Duda because Duda managed to save with the black pieces this unpleasant position. Just to la let me bring up some position that you understand why I was a little bit worried. Yeah, that he, he can't take on a3 because of this look f8 trick. Look a3 runs into look f8, king f8, bishop c5. And thanks to this uh, trick, there was this dynamic that uh, Shakri managed to eliminate the a4 pawn. So takes, takes. Look a2, and then everything was really depending on this very quick bishop d6 h5 counterplay, which finally worked for Duda. Yeah. If I will now have a re reasonably long break yeah, before the next game, yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, we, we have seven games now. I mean, seven minutes till Duda against Shakriya, and uh, Prague Giri starts at uh, four past the hour, and uh, the Duda Shakriya game two past the hour. I have to restart the, the program to get the evaluation bar back. So I think two, three minutes or maybe even four minutes break and then we will be back with the decisive last round and who knows, maybe potential Blitz playoff. Perfect, perfect. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Antongi Harro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hari Krishna Pendala from India. <laughs>
Seriously? Chess's an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Suit this season. I went Bishop C5, D4, and Queen E4. Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to Tommy. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess. Yeah, welcome back, everyone. We are just about to see the liftoff in Yashistov Duda Shakti Amamadyadov match. It's the fourth game of the, of today. It's a 2-1 lead for Duda. We have seen that there was a little scare that there was a chance for Mamadyadov maybe to to hope for more in, in game three to tie the match, but finally Duda made, brought up some incredible defense. What is your take on this Lustam that does Mamadyarov have chance with the black pieces against Duda? Well, I mean, in rapid uh, controls, there is always a chance, right? Um, I don't yeah. think it's so straightforward, maybe, you know, 20, 30% chance that Mamed comes back. Yeah, but D4, yeah, how to meet D4? Yeah, that's the very big question. Yeah, that, uh, of course, if it would be a Fisher random game, I would say that, okay, of course, yeah, we will get a big mass, massive position and then uh, uh, whatever, I mean, any, anything can happen. But here, with the controlled opening approach, yes, having seen that Duda was going for the Catalan, it's going to be very tough. He plays uh, Knight of 3, B6. Yeah, I would go G6 maybe, but... Yeah, but B6, yeah, he opted for B6. Yeah, B6, G3, I don't know how much of a chance this gives. Uh, maybe there you can go Bishop B7 and then C5, right? Well, yeah, B6 on the board and suddenly I had some technical issue, but yeah, now everything is fine. I got the auto update of the game, games and... I mean, for the moment, only one game in progress. Yeah, B6, trying to play some mind games. Yeah, that if white plays G3, Bishop B7, if white would play Bishop G2, suddenly black can play C5 before white uh, got the chance to go C4. Yeah. And uh, by the way, okay, you are a big specialist. Yeah? If white plays C4 instead, could you just... Instead, ask? which move? Instead of Bishop G2, would black take Bishop F3? How is this? Ah, uh, and then bishop f3, ef, and then maybe even d5 or what? Or c6, d5, e6, d5. I'm never sure, yeah, because I sometimes think this might be just bad for black, but I'm also not sure. Yeah, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good, yeah. But it's uh, never, never easy to judge. Mm -hmm. But yeah, actually, Duda decides that I don't want to 
don't want to fiancat to my bishop. I mean, now that he has played the move bishop g5, he's definitely not going to see g3. Yeah, I'm yeah. expecting much more some e3 kind of stuff. Knight bd2, yeah. So... Yeah, e3, knight bd2, or e3 just bishop e2. But okay, one thing uh, Mamadiyad have achieved that Duda is taking his time. He's definitely not in book. Yeah, he doesn't have a clear plan from the beginning that what to do. And we are getting some Fisher and Domish position. Bishop f6, g f9, bd2. Well, now at least he has a bishop. Yeah, he has a pair of bishops and... Okay. Well, f5, e6, bishop g7. and uh... This is a chess game, yeah. This is what we have been talking about, that if Mamadjadov gets a chance to play chess, then he will definitely have chances. But, I mean, in modern chess, it's so difficult to get at all to, to a position like this. Yeah, but maybe white is still very solid, right? After e3, g3, bishop g2, c3, he has this perfect fortress, right? And Yeah, I mean, okay, white can just put everything on the light square castle and then mm -hmm. sit there and, okay, tell that what are these commentator guys talking about? Black <laughs> getting any chances? Yeah, where are the chances? True. Very I think, true. I think... <laughs> Duda probably doesn't care much for commentators. You think, so? okay, f5 is played. I, in fact, do recall a blitz, blitz game between Magnus and Duda, where something very similar structure was featured, and it was Magnus who was with the white side, and uh, Duda probably needed to win that on demand or something, and uh, it, it, it was, I mean, it... it it reminds me of something. He, he plays bishop d3, right? This is really surprises me. Like, I would think g3 is so much more safe, yeah? But he, maybe he just wants to go queen e2, castle long, and, and crush him, yeah? Maybe safety is not on his mind. Exactly. Like, what, what, what is this safety approach? I mean, queen e2, and eventually, yeah, if, if black plays, for example, d5 trying to stop e4, then white will have a break with g4 as well, yeah? This is... This mm -hmm. is kind of because d5 would close the bishop on b7. It's not, not a happy move. No, no. But d5 played. He plays d5. Yeah, he probably figured he would have to play d5 sooner or later. But it's a little bit too early. It's also very, very passive now, yeah? Um... No, I know Very some impressive. guys that they would go knight g1 now and then play knight e2. No, 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 no. That's already too much of a finesse, yeah? But you know there are guys like this, right? Yeah, of course, because they, they are just so happy to do that. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, okay. no, 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 no. I mean, Duda will not retreat his pieces. He will go forward. His his name is also Husarius. Yeah, he, he loves mm -hmm. this name, uh, Husarius, and... Uh, which means that like cavalry, yeah. He he and he plays chess like this, yeah. Very straightforward, very brave. Yeah, he'll go knight e5 and then queen h5, and yeah. Exactly. This is what I'm envisioning from, from Duda. Yeah, queen h5, then some g4, somewhere, maybe knight df3. The the move d5. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much shocked. And the breaking news: Anish Giri needs to play for a win with black, and after e4, what does he do? C6. Playing the killing Karo Khan. This is how uh, Robert Luke, good friend of mine in childhood, because he was exclusively playing the Karo Khan and everybody was uh, picking him that, okay, you need to win against the match because why are you playing C6? And he says, no, this is the killing Karo Khan. The killing, um, yeah? Yes, yes. You, I mean, because it has such a hidden potential, yeah? Wow. Okay, well, it has a lot of very solid systems, yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, th th that's, you know, and, and also Robert had this sense of, you know, the how he was seeing it. So you, you just couldn't believe if, I mean, you knew that he is not serious. Yeah, that, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, e4, c6, knight f3, d5, d3 or knight c3. Yeah, d3 is usually the solid one, yeah. Yeah, well, but also knight c3 has a very solid reputation. Well, then at least I can go bishop g4, h5, you know, and make you... Uh, make, but uh, knight c3 and during the break we talked with uh, Tadeas about this that actually Prague is not a type of player who who can play solidly. Yeah, he always 
He's such an uncompromising fighter. He likes to play principal chess. And uh, basically, this is also this is wonderful on one side. On the other hand, it might also give Anish some chances. Well, this is, for instance, pretty pretty good, right? For must win. And then e6, yeah. Although maybe white can go d4, right? D4 is very d4 takes and queen e3, yeah. Some they play some some stuff like this. They, I don't know, they queen play, e3, yeah. not here. It's bishop. How does this line go? Bishop e2, knight f6, no d4, no. Yeah, there is some d4, d takes, and then queen is, but yeah, I never really understood what, what's going on. Maybe knight f6, castles, knight bd7, and then d4, something like this, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't really mm -hmm. figure it out how it was, but I do know, yeah, yeah, that this bishop e2, and then often black even tries to play bishop c5, mm -hmm. yeah, stopping d4 and all kinds of things like this. But I, I'm not an expert and I have no idea about move orders here. Yeah, but anyway, for, for killing Karo Khan, this is not so bad. Yeah, just get some game. It's nice. <laughs> exactly. I mean, both sides could and should be happy. Uh, and what about Duda against Mamed Yadov? Wow. I mean, d5, knight, e5 played, bishop d6. You have to kick that knight away immediately. Duda protects it with f4. Takes, takes. We need some long castles, long castles. G4. Uh, G4 is very thematical and take, take F6, but black does not look like he will get winning chances here. <laughs> exactly. I mean, if if anyone, then only white can be better and very safely, very easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, shock then a lot of trouble. I mean, knowing how powerfully Duda is playing and has things under control, I find it very hard to imagine that yeah, no, this this does not look interesting for Black. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we will jump now to the Prague game and we will keep an eye on it. Of course, if if there is any real development, we will be happy to jump back. But for the moment, this is the big big game. Yeah, the more interesting position, at least. Yeah. Yeah, and here the big question also that how much of an expert Anish is in the. I mean, we do know that Anish usually knows all the openings in and out, but. This is a very specific line. I don't recall him ever playing it from the white side. Yeah, and uh, basically, there, there is some very special rook d1, bishop d4 kind of uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I have seen it, uh, but but I can't really tell you what what are all the finesses. Yeah, uh, I think the knight went to e7. Pardon me. Usually, the, the knight goes bishop d4, knight f6, and they put some pressure on the e4 pawn. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I think Anish will have some idea. I don't think there is an opening line that Anish is completely clueless in. Yeah, we are. We know that actually Erwin wrote a wonderful course uh, on uh, chessable on the whole Karokan. But uh, I don't know if this was exactly the choice of, uh, of Erwin. I mean, we are talking about Erwin Lamy, of course, our good friend, very big theoretician. I always used to call him the professor because I just felt like uh, Erwin knows everything. Mm -hmm. Now nah, he always looked like a nice guy, but I don't know him too well. I would always run uh, into him because he was always a second of Anish Giri when I was having my own second in Korea. But he always looked like a nice guy. Yeah, he's extremely nice. He's very friendly. And this is the, the problem, yeah, that if... You are a second of someone, then you are limited, yeah, because you are not supposed to be talking to the other second of uh, of so-called concurrent, yeah. I would I would talk to anyone, yeah. I did not really abide by this. Ah, uh, not yeah. No, no, not at all. I didn't. I never took that 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 job so seriously. Yeah, this is not Soviet Union anymore. <laughs> all right, okay. We we hear all the secrets. Yeah, knight a4, bishop d6, d4. Prague is. Showing confidence. I mean, he, he's playing quite quickly. He gets the center. Basically, if black will be forced to take d4, then I, I believe Prague will be super happy. On the other hand, he's already setting e4, e5. Yeah, he took, right? Took knight d7. Um, and then what can even go? A queen a5. Yeah, this is, this is good. You know, you scared me. I mean, I thought like, you already have knight d7 on your scheme. Why am I not seeing it? Yeah, well, what, what is wrong with my internet? But then queen a5 happened and I'm happy. 
I was just trying to guess a move. Okay. By the way, you are the big Karokan expert yourself, no? You you played uh, quite a lot recently. Well, when you say recently, you mean like six years ago? Uh, time. No, I mean twice. during some Bundesliga, but yeah, I I haven't played for two and a half years already Bundesliga, so mm -hmm. probably it was like four years ago, five. Yeah, yeah, now this is the thing. Yeah, we missed you a lot at Bundesliga dinners. Yes, I, I, and you, what do you think? How much I missed you guys? Yeah, it, it was always so much pleasure. Yeah, that dead now and Baden Baden and also traveling together. And we are no chance. longer traveling together. You know that, right? Yeah, we are not, but yeah, okay. I'm anyway, no, I haven't played for two and a half years already, and I don't know if I will ever play again, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Yeah, we are not traveling together. Yeah, that's that's and Vincent left to Baden Baden also. I mean, all kinds of you know heartbreaks. Why wouldn't you play again? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it just Vincent left. You know, we are Baden Baden is not together with. I mean, this was one of the big motivations, yeah, that we are spending time together and, and so on. It's it's a little bit, uh, and I haven't played not only Bundesliga. I haven't played a classical game for two and a half years. I don't know the how the how the pieces are moving, how you have to press the clock, how you have to make your decisions. I mean, th 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 this is all already a completely different planet. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, compared to you, I'm I'm really active, right? You are super active, yeah, exactly. With, with my 20 games a year, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Be besides, I'm looking all kinds of openings all the time and I'm commenting, uh, but I'm also not supposed to play what I'm looking at, yeah. So it's, uh, I, I don't feel that, I, I feel so tempted at the moment to play, yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot lot of pressure like this. But yeah, okay, back back to the Karokan, yeah, that White occupy the center, White has the two bishops, but... Black has some flexibility, yeah, it, and the knight on OE4 is a bit awkward. Um, yes, I know why it maybe should go rook d1 and then try to go bishop d2, kick that queen. Yeah, rook d1, bishop d2, yeah, try to get the knight back to c3, but okay, already black is ready to start jumping, yeah, with his pieces. Yeah, Black Black has a good version. Yeah, I remember I learned a lot from your game against, I think, Yasser Saravan, was it? Uh, from, was it Bled? Was it? No, it was Istanbul 2000. It was Istanbul 2000, yeah, 22 years ago, yeah. Yes, yes. Greetings to Yasser, yeah, very, very nice friend. Also, greetings to the year 2000. Yeah, greetings to year 2000. Uh, it was a modern game, yeah, I, I managed to... I, I was so happy and so proud because, okay, I mean, uh, Yasser was always very, very high on my list. Yeah, thinking that, okay, yeah, I, I was brought on up on his games. Yeah, he already played against Lajos Portis in Dubai, a chess Olympiad in 86. Yeah, he beat actually Lajos Portis in a sensational game. And that was the first tournament, which I have not yet followed, but I started looking at chess and the, the first chess magazine featured this Olympics from, mm -hmm. from Dubai. Yeah, so... It, it was one of the first games and I thought like, wow, yes, I said I'm beating Lajos Porti. What is happening? Who is this person? It's some young player. And ever since, you know, I have some tremendous respect. Rook yeah. D1, the move you called out. Yeah, for me, the first Olympiad was, uh, was Thessaloniki. But which one? 84 or 88? 88, yeah. Yes. 88 and, uh, and the miracle of, of Polga sisters and everything. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I mean, uh, coming from Hungary, it wasn't a miracle at all for us. Yeah, we were expecting, we were rooting, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, yeah, Judith was very, very young, but okay, she was already so strong that it was kind of the logical uh, follow-up, but maybe it wasn't so obvious. I still took, uh, I think, the Soviet team by surprise. I didn't think they were quite ready for this, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a big big shock. But also that uh, Ildiko Madl had a very decisive win as well yeah, under tragical circumstances because her uh, fiance on the way to the Salonic Olympia died with a car crash. You know, and yeah, yeah it it was like uh, this was all around the news in Hungary and we were like completely you know destroyed and we were thinking like what will happen and then she the next day 
in black dress was ready to play and she won with the black pieces. It was like uh, really this this 88 gold medal of of the women team was was sensational. Yeah, what a story, no? Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I'm still because I I remember yeah following all these things uh, so closely. Yeah, you remember all the details like it was yesterday, right? It's just... Yeah, I mean, I, I this this was so such a decisive and important moment, yeah, in mm. in Hungary and history. It's uh, like it it was super important. But okay, back to back to Prague against Anish. Rook D1 B5. Yeah, Anish needs to win. He he wants to use the momentum that this knight is not yet stable on on a4 he needs to create chances does he create enough uh, he's asking for trouble too right because for instance knight c5 looks attractive now wow knight c5 okay let me take yeah take take and now do i have tactics i was thinking maybe queen e5 wow and... queen e5 okay Queen b6 and then bishop b2 just like this yeah i thought bishop b2 and but then you have bishop f2 king h1 knight f5 knight f5 and i start jumping yeah bishop g g4 bishop g3 and you 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 out jump the jumper yes yeah just to highlight this kicking the queen away from the mm -hmm. diagonal yeah very messy stuff but i perfectly agree with you that Black is playing with the fire. And this line is already also very tempting to calculate, yeah, because if, if it works out, then, then it might be very powerful. Yes. Now it could have some possibilities. That, um... But okay, I mean, let him think. Yeah, he's yeah let, let him think. We, we can also now use the momentum to jump back on the other game. I'm seeing that white has everything under control with a powerful knight on e5. Good structure against the bad bishop on e8. I don't see any chances for a miracle here. Ah, you're just not a believer. I'm not a believer at all. <laughs> no, not, not at all. Yeah, if, if I see a good knight versus bad bishop... You shouldn't be asking me if the guy with the black bishop has any chances, yeah? I mean, with the with the bad bishop. Well, I can, I can, I can see you know works with Abdul Sattarov. Yeah, he but you, uh, you know, does he have bad bishops? No, he just he just really has he has faith in the bishop. Uh -huh. It's a bad bishop now, but you know, 20, 20 moves down the road, it will become a good bishop. It will be a good bishop. Yeah. This, has, this has happened, you know, in his game against Gukesh. Yeah? In exactly. Tragic game at the Olympiad when uh, this bishop that was dead and deader and completely dead at some point dominated the board. Yeah? And it's like, how did this how did this come to pass, right? Yeah, that's uh, that that was one of the more shocking moments yeah, of recent but chess history. It was also such a decisive game for the Olympiad, right? It's just yeah, basically it decided everything, yeah. But the move d takes c5, I'm a little bit surprised because the the knight, the monster knight on e5 is a bit loose now. Well, I'm surprised to say surprised. No and I was shocked, to be honest. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I was completely shocked. You know, dc5 was not on my radar at all. Yeah, what is this? But in fact, he's he's in control by force, right? Because bc, he will go rook g8, rook g8, yeah. rook f4. Yeah, he, he just wants to play move per move, yeah. He just wants to keep it simple. And, yeah. and why not, no? <laughs> exactly, I mean, why not, yeah. And yeah, Shakri is taking his time because he needs to win, but I mean, how to win this? Yeah, okay, this is looking horrible for, for Black because we know that he needs to win. And what about the other games? So White actually played the solid move, Bishop D2. Bishop b4 takes takes and c takes b5. Ah, c takes b5, queen b7. Uh oh, is that a move? Well, but you can also maybe include knight f no knight f6, queen e5. So, okay, c b5 first. Yeah, queen b7 might, might win a pawn of sorts. Wow, 
I mean, also put put a uh, Anish under a lot of pressure because okay, he might have some compensation, but he needs to win. I mean, just some lowish compensation. Okay, well, what I'm talking about is something like Luke B8 and then Queen D7 B A4, and this should be maybe holdable, but holdable is not not something we are looking for. Well, definitely not what Anish is looking for. Yeah. Wow. Prague, yeah, just thing has things under control. I mean, control is a very slippery animal in my experience. <laughs> I mean, in a sense that the max situation and everything, yeah, that he he didn't got uh, nervous because of losing the previous game and Danish is bouncing back and psychological game start. He had the game plan. He probably had the preparation against the Karo Khan. He just uh followed it and and that's it showing no weaknesses at all he's a he's a strong player well i mean but you can be strong player and then still in critical moments uh, show sign of weakness yeah but mm -hmm. this is what i feel that he is he's an incredible fighter and he's a very good practical player a part of being extremely solid so he's i mean uh extremely good he's just a total total package and only 17. Nah, it's just incredible. Yeah, these guys are so good at such a young age, right? Yes. Unbelievable. Because, I mean, usually in, in the old times, it was like, okay, some youngsters appear and then they are very dangerous or very tricky or, or whatever. But it's clear that they still had some, some flaws in their game or they are very solid or strategical, but then they are not good enough in tactics. Yeah, there was always this. But... This new generation seems to be so universal and they're very impressive. Ah, by the way, because Anish is taking his time, we can just update this that there won't be any surprises here. Duda has to decide if he goes yeah, for rookie, rookie two. Rookie two is, is yeah. probably safe enough. Yeah, now rookie five and just enough play. No? Yeah, keep on harassing the rook. And also look at Shakriya, he's leaning back like, yeah, it's, uh, what, what is it? Four o'clock uh, in the morning of half past four in, in Baku. I, I even don't know what is the exact time there, but I mean, he, he's calling it a day. That's what his body language is showing. And okay, the position doesn't give him any hope for, for anything else. Not really, no. Yeah, half past three in Baku. Yeah. Yeah, so basically three hours time difference. Yeah, it's basically the, the right time to, to finish the game probably, yeah. But but it means losing the match. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. And Duda would actually keep uh, pace with uh, Magnus, yeah? Winning both his matches, uh, getting... Uh, three extra points and then leading with six points together with Magnus. Ah, very impressive start for, for both of them, right? Yeah, very impressive. And and Duda has won the aim chess uh, event. Yeah, the, the penalty made uh, two events. So he's, I mean, throughout the tour, he was showing perfect play. But I mean, now winning the event and now he's starting with two victories. I mean, it's super impressive. Wow, okay. I mean, look H5, now Duda has to make up his mind. He even goes for knight F4, hitting the pawn on E6. And uh, look on H5. And he goes for... Wow, is it necessary? Okay. Okay, it's not necessary, but he probably just figured why not, right? Yeah. I mean, this is the idea. King C3, A3, B4, and basically... But I still wouldn't do it. It feels unnecessary, but it's also very clean, right? Co completely unnecessary, but yeah. Good enough. The the wrong corner, the wrong bishop. Yeah. Now at least Shahriar can uh, can enjoy being slightly better, but not for very long. Yeah, that's it. Draw, and this means set and match. 
Duda. So, we only have one game left. All eyes on Prague, Nagans, Anish. Knight F6, Queen D3 happened. I mean, we didn't miss out on any action. Yeah, Anish is trying to compensate for with the with the d5 square for the pawn, and he definitely wants to keep the queens alive. Yeah, otherwise he will have zero chances. But it it does. I mean, white is so so, and now the knight on a4 is perfect. Yeah, it covers the c3 square. It's protected by the pawn. He's ready to go rook a c1 also. I mainly he's pawn up, yeah. And his position really wouldn't be fantastic otherwise, but being pawn up changes a lot. Um... Exactly. Yeah. Rook a d8, yeah. Trying to hint at the only weakness on d4. So now normally some some queen c3 or so, right? Uh... Yeah, queen c3, queen c4. Oh, rook c1, yeah. Rook c1 is also very logical yeah because if black takes the pawn on b5 and on d4 white will probably get queen b4 and rook c7 right this exactly this you you can't even do yeah because it will just it's be probably... material plus uh, black needs to win so this is a no-go rook a c1 Yeah, tough to tough to see anything because we, we would like to or I would love to dramatize the situation, but it seems to me like like Prague is having everything under control and Anish in a lot of pain also down to five minutes uh, in, in the position where you, you don't know what to do. You can't play fast. Yeah, I mean, like after a nearly perfect perf performance yesterday, he'll be a bit upset, right? On being back at two points and uh, somewhere in the lower part of the of the table, right? Yeah, well, I mean, okay, he did win the match yesterday, but yeah, he won in the Blitz playoff, so he didn't get the, the three points. He only got two. For example, Liam is already ahead of him, yeah, if he mm -hmm. loses this match. it's uh, yeah, But yeah, takes, takes, and Knight F5 happened. Hitting the pawn on D4. Yeah, he does get this on back, yeah, sort of. Probably, yeah. And, and if he gets knight takes d4, then there will be this tactical trick with knight f3, so white can't enter with rook c7 just to highlight. Yeah, that is, of course, mm -hmm. white can blunder away. Now the knight hits the bishop, and bishop f1 runs into knight f3 check, and then we take on d1. So white has to watch out. Yeah, I wonder what's the cleanest way to, to do this with white. Maybe maybe just play knight c5 and then just kind of drop the pawn. And But we really can't hang on to the pawn, yeah? Difficult. Yeah, difficult. Knight c5, correct. You called it. So far, everyone who followed your advice is, uh, I think, should be quite happy with their results. So... <laughs> Knight c5 is, is good. And now knight takes d4, knight b7, I think, is uh, is not right. Knight so if... d4, knight b7. You are extremely sharp, yeah? Well, I, I train my tactics. You you train your whole life, yeah, for this, yeah? <laughs> uh, but, but rook takes d4 happened. Yeah, rook d4 because of this, yeah? So now after rook d4, white needs to... I don't know, maybe maybe take on d4 and then play when bishop a6 is probably safe enough. Yeah, yeah it looks good enough. Uh, the, the knight and bishop is wonderful. The c8 square is occupied. Okay, probably black has to go knight d5 trying to... But okay, if white starts advancing, actually white has serious chances. Yeah. Even to be better, but he doesn't need to be better. Yeah, you know, he can go a3, b4. Yeah, black has this funny move of rook c8 now. Um, ah, okay, yeah, L let me highlight this because it's really funny. But it doesn't really change anything, yeah? White can just maybe go B4 or so. I mean, okay, I just want to highlight, yeah, that the rook can be captured, but then there is another fork. But even this, yeah, because this knight is kind of trapped, yeah, after A3. Yeah, this knight is... Um... is dubious, but Plug just goes knight D7. He, he probably knows that, okay, 
he has a clear plan. Okay, I just need to make a draw. So I treat as much pieces and keep the the C file. But I'm hang not on. Sure. Not sure it's good. Yeah, because knight d7, you have to take with the bishop. And then rook d1, rook d1, rook d8. Or you even just want to go rook fd8, I mean, or rook d8 immediately. Yeah, rook d8 immediately, white has um, rook takes um, d4 and rook d1. Wow, beautiful tactics. Let's let's show this. Rook d8, rook d4, knight d4, rook d1, and knight takes b5 runs into knight takes f6 check. Mm -hmm. And knight takes d7 runs into rook takes d4 pin. But in so, fact, black has e5. Yeah, Yeah, black has e5. I mean, black has to play the move e5. Yeah. But okay, I don't know if we are so happy or not. I think we're fine. Yeah, we, we are fine. Yeah. Okay. Some, some in, in any case, the, the problem of Anish is that he needs to win the game. And how does he get chances? 3 minutes 40. Oh, how is this knight d7 line? Bishop d7, rook d1, rook d1, rook d8. Looks like a pin. Yeah, this was the first line that uh, I also considered. But okay, there is b4, bishop a4. But are you happy? No. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, king f1, king e1 also doesn't because then you go king e7 and maybe knight d4, e5 and you start playing some psychological game. Well, I, I was hoping to just play a chess game, you know. <laughs> well, chess game psychology with psychological game. game together, yeah? Maybe but, so. But Anish really needs to make up his mind. He's too, down to less than three minutes, 240. Yeah, he goes for knight. This, yeah, he will pin this. Yeah, he will take on d1 and go rook d8. Yeah. yeah, I feel in some way this knight d7 is a bit impatient. Not every exchange makes the draw easier, right? Yeah, I I, I, I did not like. I mean, this bishop a6 and then just control the situation looked uh, very tempting. Yeah, just advancing your pawns, mm -hmm. you can even be uh, maybe better, but. But look at this. Anish does not does not pin the bishop. He goes g5. Well, he maybe now feels that uh, that things are going his way. Yeah, so g5 is uh, is not a bad move positionally. Yeah, he he creates luft for the king. Mm -hmm. He can bring the king. He can go h5. Rook b8 is coming. A5. It's it's a playable position. Although, yeah, I don't I don't know why rook d8 would not improve his chances even further. Yeah, because now white immediately brings the bishop back. The rook is ready to invade on the d file. Bishop can get back to c4, covering the c c file. Yeah, rook c8 played. Okay, now I don't know. Probably bishop c4 will be played. Bishop c4, rook c7 is a very classical way of doing it. Yeah, and, and then the, the king will come to f6. And... Yeah, carp of school. Yeah, yeah. Now black is um, a tiny little bit better. Yeah, it's uh, th this is exactly what I was talking about, mm -hmm. psychological game. Yeah, that if it's not a direct force draw and if it gets uh, to be playable and the knight jumps around and it will be a long game, then there, there is eventually a potential danger for white. Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, this this didn't uh, didn't work perfectly. Now, he will try some tricks. Yeah? He will try bishop d3. I mean, some... Uh, some ways of solving it tactically, he will try I mean, to to hit this knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop, bishop DC is a nice move. Knight E7, Bishop C4, maybe gain some time. Yeah, again, Rook C7, but you want a tempo. Yeah, that's that's clear. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but, why did not play this this stage well? Yeah, at, at least showing some sign of weakness. Yeah, and I imagine that. White would have this monster knight on c5 against the knight on f6, and, and then you just go bishop a6, stopping any rook c8, and then slowly advancing with your pawns. It looked very, even looked very promising, while actually white only needed a draw, and a knight so easy for black. Yeah. No, I think black is just kind of better, yeah, in a broader sense of the word. 
Yeah, thanks to this uh, pawn e6 f7. Yeah, because this mm -hmm. limits the the light squared bishop and and then black black has easier plans. Yeah, king comes to f6, h5, and easier plans. Yeah, so much more easier. Yeah, and and b4 played a bit nervous move, but actually I like it. Yeah, that he at least he, he wants to do something. Yeah. Yes. Um, rook c2. He wants to go what? I know rook c2, bishop d3 is his idea. Yeah, I saw it and then I forgot. Yeah. Ah, uh, but I was also happy just pushing a4 and then rook b2 you want. Yeah. Yeah, I want to go rook b2 and then, uh, and then rook yeah, c3. So basically, bishop d3, rook a2 takes, and rook d5 would be the dream scenario. Yeah, it would be the immediate draw. Yeah, this is yeah. Uh, definitely one of the lines he calculated. Yeah, thank you very much. Handshake is there. So rook c2 is impossible. I just play probably king g7 now. Because yeah. I'm not really afraid of these pawns. Especially knowing that you need to, to win. Yes, yeah? so basically king g7 mm -hmm. and then h5 getting ready for counterplay if, if white ever goes for the a7 pawn. Yeah, king g7 played. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, given um, given that, maybe white, black would also just play h5, h4 instead of king g7. Yeah, it would consolidate his uh, his mating threats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is h5, h4, uh, because eventually if white gets active, then black comes with a check on c1, king h to rook mm -hmm. c2, hitting the f2 pawn. Of course, white can then maybe just retreat with king to g1 and say like, okay, please show me. For the moment, plug is advancing his pawns on the queen side. Don't know exactly what it gives, but it can't can't hurt. Cannot hurt, yeah. I think a king f6. Um what's your what's your advance? Wow, rook c3, a little bit nervous, but yeah, he wants to get behind. He wants to get behind. And there is a funny line, yeah, just just that if rook d7, for example, rook b3. Yeah, or rook d7 on the board. Rook takes a7, rook b4, and bishop e8 runs into knight d6. Yeah, just to show how mobile this knight is. Yeah, no, he'll probably play bishop c4 instead of rook a7. Yeah, bishop c4. So can we give the check? Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah, you have to give rook yeah, b1 check. Because this, this would be great for white. Mm -hmm. I mean, knowing that draw is okay. And uh, so check... But then also bishop d3 is in the air. Or, or just well, king f6, bishop d3, white has black has rook d1. Rook d1, yeah. Still you can pin it. Yeah, it's uh okay. We will not analyze, we wait for the move. 129 Anish, uh, four minutes for Prague. There is still some tension. Of course, position is very drawish, very, very much equal, but it's not dead. That I think that's that's the important part that it's not dead yet. Look at Prague's focus. I mean, uh, when, when you look at this focus, you understand that if they ask him uh, what is the view outside, he he probably won't won't know, yeah, because he's just so much in the game. Ah, it's a it's a pleasant state to be, right? Yeah, just he did not play bishop c4. Yeah, I mean, how focused can he possibly be? Yeah, he takes on a7. Yeah, rook takes b4. I mean, we don't know exactly from the side. It's it's also tricky. He might be focused, he might be a bit tense. Yeah, we, we, we just never know. But I mean, okay, what are we talking about? White has a passed pawn, white has a bishop and rook against the rook and knight combo. Okay, tricky, I think it's tricky. It's very difficult for white to avoid. Um... Uh, rook three against rook four at some point. You well, think so, yeah? Controls, yeah, because okay, how do you do this? Yeah, you. For example, I I go bishop d three. What happens? Don't scare me so much. Wow, well, what else do I have? Yeah. Yeah, that that's the way how you have to make <laughs> progress. Of course, yeah, you have to scare your opponent constantly. Bishop d three, knight d four. Knight d four. Okay, let me try to push. Rook b three. Rook b3, okay, the bishop moves, uh, I don't know, bishop e4, yeah. 
No, I mean, just saying that uh, why are we worried for white when there is a passer there, yeah? Well, I know. Rook, uh, I cannot go rook b1, yeah? This well, is... bishop d7 played. And rook b1 check king h2, king f6. I mean, I'm not liking this bishop. Yeah, no, now black has a plan, yeah? Maybe just go h5. Um... Rook f1. Anish rook f1, ahead. yeah, creating mating threats, yes. Yeah, that's why I did not want to leave this diagonal with the bishop. Yeah, I don't know how dangerous it is, but I, yeah, do, I, I don't we'll... like these questions, you know, when it's the question how dangerous it is. It shouldn't well, I mean, be dangerous at all. F3H5 will be really dangerous. Yeah, F3H5 is H4, knight, GC, rook H1, checkmate is, is very scary. We need to brace ourselves for a long night. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it's uh, also... Prague was so much up on the clock, but yeah, the last couple of moves, uh, Anish bleeds out and Prague is hesitating. No, yeah, but it's also obvious. Yeah, I mean, like Prague is very strong and we, we 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 see that, but we also see that, okay, strategically, there is still something missing. Uh, I think he shouldn't get outplayed so easily from the position that he had. Yeah, but I think it's also connected with the match situation. I, I don't think that he would have ever played like this if he, he didn't need a draw. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a very tricky spot to be in. Yeah, but again, an experienced player would know that this is not the way to play for a draw, right? It's just... Yeah, it's it, it's it just scary, yeah. yeah. It's scary. And now he's uh, he's taking his time, but it's a little bit too late. I mean, unless he comes up with some brilliancy, yeah? That's Maybe some he can play a6. Move pen, move tactical. a6, rook f2, rook c7, put that pawn on a7 and say, you know, I don't care. I'll just put it on a7 and I will survive. Like in this more enterprising manner, c7. I will survive, yeah. Knight d4, you have bishop e8. Well, I mean, I have a feeling with a pawn on a7, somehow tactics will work out. Yeah, it, it should, yeah. But okay, Prague done to 1 minute 15 and he has to make a decision. He goes g4. Yeah, no, there is this rule about g4. Never play g4. Yeah, with all these dark squares. Yeah. Okay, he sees knight h4, bishop e8. Yeah, this is a tactical justification of his uh, uh, of his move. Uh, but yeah, yeah. But uh, those those g4 moves. Yeah, knight h4 played. Bishop e8. I mean, rook takes f2 check and uh, black is getting closer to white's king. The king gc runs into rook g2 checkmate. Oh, he of has course. to go king g1? Yes, has to go. But then, okay, the rook just moves away on the second rank and then all this king e5 knight f... I mean, this is very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is remarkable. Anish is not actually losing this much. I mean, that's that's really sensational if, if it happens. Yeah, rook, rook a2... It yes. also shows that the tension, yeah, well, what, what it does to, uh, to the players, yeah. Yeah, this was not well played, yeah. Look A2. I mean, uh, this, this construction, yeah, this is this is very poisonous. And yeah, and it's the same. Start... It's like, why is the of past pawn on A5? Yeah, it just doesn't do anything. It's not dangerous. Uh... Well, I mean, that form was dangerous. Yeah, it didn't go anywhere. You you, you called it out. But, uh, I mean, now this pawn is also vulnerable. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, this is a dead pawn. Yeah. yeah, this pawn is not going anywhere. And also the rook cannot, because you have to keep an eye on this FC square. Yeah, bishop c6 played. It has to be played. But, I mean, even maybe black has something better, but uh, just look a5, look takes e7, king f4 looks also very scary. Ah, it's really horrible. Huh? It's 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 beyond looking scary, it's just really yeah. horrible. It it might be just lost. Yeah, no, the ease with which he's losing this position is uh is remarkable. Huh? Yeah, we all have been there, yeah. That uh, when when you only need this one one little draw, yeah, and the position looked innocent. Uh, you think like you're al almost there, and then you you make one bad and King F4, the the most tempting move, and computer for some reason does not does it look B7? Yeah, look B7. 
a rugby seven and suddenly he gets side checks, yeah? Well, still the big question because you can go rook a3 and then king g3, yeah? But rook a3, maybe king f2? King f2, then... Uh, then okay, but then the pawn is hanging. And there is that, yeah. There is that. I mean, okay, maybe rook a3, you just go king h2, yeah? That's uh, kind of a computer. Is rook a2 and then king g1? But it looks very dangerous. Maybe black should have brought the knight to a four and not the king. Yeah, it's possible. Maybe on the other hand, okay, this, yeah, rook, rook a1, rook a2, it's the same position that we discussed. Then the big question, how to improve? Yeah, knight g6. Moving the knight, trying to get knight e5. It looks pretty disgusting. Yeah? yeah, and he opened up this way. Yeah, that king g3, rook b3, and then king h4 hides, and knight jumps to f4. I think that, that that's where he's going. Yeah, he's. Uh... But that's why rook b3. Yeah, you have to cut the king now on f4. But you're right. Yeah, he's keeping a remarkably cool head. Yeah, under the circumstances here. Uh, this kid. Yeah, I would be shaking already. I mean, I would be. You know, shaking my head that how on earth did I misplay it like this? I should have mm. never. But but those are the thoughts that you you can't uh, let let happen yeah, during the game. Bishop g2. And he's up on the clock. Yeah, now he keeps those those very important twenty seconds. Rook d2, getting ready for knight d3. This is still hell for white. Apparently now he has to go king h2. King h2, very tough move, yeah, because it doesn't well, do anything against knight d3 and... Well, in a way it does, right? Because, uh, why? I mean, I thought that, uh, like, rook a3, knight d3 threatens king g3, right? So, but king h2, knight d3 threatens knight e... It does not threaten knight e1. This is a point, right? Because then white has rook b4, rook e4 check. With yes, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, okay, I thought like I just want to cut this rook and then maybe e5, e4. It's uh, now Prague is down to 25 seconds. Well, he has king h2, knight d3, and then rook c3, yeah, and then rook c4 check. Yeah, but rook c3 played first. We don't know the difference, but. But hang on, knight d3, king h2, knight e1, rook c4, check is holding, yeah? King well, e3. Can go king e3, rook e4, king f2. Very scary. Which is really very scary, yeah. And then good luck with 30, yeah, knight d3 on the board. With 30 seconds to figure it out, it's basically a lottery if you can manage to find the only move. I don't think there, there is a defense, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, apparently his idea was to go king h2 and then rook b1, yeah. Yeah, but okay, yeah, you, you definitely don't want to do passive defense. Bishop b7, now king g3, then king f1, yeah, that's the defensive idea. Now black can maybe go e5, e4, yeah. yeah. e5, e4, yeah, it's devastating. Wow, Anish is fighting back, it seems. I'm mainly devastating my plan to go to go to sleep anytime soon. No, there, there, <laughs> there is no chance. No chance for this. Whenever we, we, you feel or we feel that there is a chance that we might have a little bit shorter uh, evening or night, it means that we'll be punished and it will be our, it will go down to Armageddon. Yeah. Mark my words. Mark my words. You 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 you've done this for a long time. Yeah, I I know how it works. Yeah, I know how it okay. works. Yeah. Now King F three is checkmate. Yeah, so yeah. I also have a feeling that Pragnanada's technique had something to do with it. Yeah, not not just our uh, our attitude. Yeah, and the nerves and everything. Yeah. Yeah, King G one. Okay, this is. I mean, if Anish would be done to few seconds on the clock, it would be different. But with thirty. He yeah, he's just king, king g3, take pawns. It's also just so disgusting to play this with white. And... Yeah, why not? Yeah, why just not take the pawns? King g3 on the board. King f1. 
Also some Rukev 2 check and then Rukev C and then Ruki C, Ruki 1. Yeah, also maybe this will be an issue. I mean, we, we, you know that. Yeah, that that's it. Look FC, look C, Anish is my boy. Yeah, we'll be. I mean, okay, I don't, I don't like to talk in in future, then, but it will be very tough for Prague to play the blitz after losing this. Yeah, it's pretty much dead. Yeah, Knight F4 even just go for the Rukan games. Yeah, White is so passive. Yeah, just horrible. Well, I mean, sad news for, for Prague. I mean, brilliant news for Anish fans. The, I mean, Anish has also really shown his tremendous uh, technique and, and class in this endgame. I mean, very Karpovian. Yeah, this is... Yes. Yeah, Knight, Knight takes H3. Takes, takes. And and look at this now. Now you see that yeah, Prague is devastated. How could this happen? How did I mess this up? Look at four, yeah, old school, or just go for straightforward already something. Yeah, I think rook f4, king g4, and taking it from there is enough. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, easy rook e4, we don't want to, to let happen. Even maybe king g3 is just a tsuk tsung and it wins. That too, yeah. And then, yeah, look at this. Um, plug is, I have hardly ever seen him so angry, so disappointed. Yeah, look wow. f4, of course, Anish goes for look f4. No reason to make any move which could potentially have the chance that you, you can make a mistake. So king take g4, rook e5, yeah, trying to put the rook from behind and overload black's pieces a bit. Yeah, everything is tied, but I mean, black can just go king h4 and then yeah, g4 king probably. king h4, g4. But okay, then rook e8, it's a bit tricky. Yeah, and uh, he actually lined up. Maybe he maybe just go the long way around. King h5. Rook e6, g4. Uh huh. Some little sign of weakness for mm -hmm. Manish. Yeah, because all of a sudden it's not so trivial. I mean, okay, king, but hang on. King f3. King F also should be a win, yeah? Just uh, cutting the king. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the evolution bar. Will we see a miracle? Rook e8? No, rook e8 blunder. King f5. Had to go rook a5, yeah? No. Rook a5 was only, yeah. But of course, rook e8 was so tempting. You want to stay behind the e-pawn. Oh, your rook a5 also... Was cutting the king, yeah? Yeah, cutting the king, keeping an eye on the g5. Wow, I mean, there was a potential turnaround possibility. I mean, I, I don't think that Anish would ever recover. I mean, ever means that in the next uh, couple of days from, from that shock, if he does not win this. Yeah. But now it will hurt Prague all the more, yeah, that there was a chance, yeah, after all this completely lost endgame. Yeah, but also, I mean, he, he played Rook E8 so instantly, and yeah, just... Uh... Yeah, now it's just over. I mean, E3, this is what I've been talking about, yeah, that this king can simply be cut. One can even sacrifice the pawn. Okay, Rook F3 check, doesn't matter. Rook D3, why? What are we witnessing here? Rook but D3, I mean, why, is, why is this a draw? Rook G3, King H4. This is lost, yeah, with uh, with a cut king. What? Rook G8? But okay, no, it's impossible to... to and yeah, King G5, I mean, of course it's... But I mean, why to play Rook D3? You are not cutting the king on mm -hmm. the D file. Okay, now it's uh, cut... cut yeah, with, with, the... A, with a cut king, there is really no chance. Yeah. 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 No, but I, I mean, I was just shocked that... Uh, how did this Rook D3 appear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's now it's over. 
Oof, Anish, yeah, showing brilliant technique and then just when it looks like, okay, it should be like some kindergarten job, then uh, with little time on the clock, it's so tricky. Yeah, there are many mistakes in this Rukan game. Yeah, many mistakes. Yeah, just shows that how much tension it, it is there on the players and how much it means for them. Yeah, they are fighting for 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 glory. I, I don't think that the money really matters because, okay, we know that it's seven and a half thousand dollars for winning a match but uh, here it's not about money this is about feeling yeah that i'm doing good i'm very strong you know i'm advancing in the tournament standing and okay this is now okay king f4 and just the king is coming this is the lucena no i mean this is, yeah, this is basically the Lucena. It will come to E1, pawn will come to E2, and uh, Lucena yeah. will do the job. And then bridge, or depending mm -hmm. on how your mm -hmm. defend opponent is defending. I basically, yeah, the straightforward Lucena. That guy won so many rook end games. Really, yeah? No, I mean, like, every time you win a rook end game, at some point... You ah, get yes, of Lucena course, solution. yeah, the, the Lucena, yeah, it's, of course, he's just cashing in, yeah? <laughs> he has the patent and cashing in on, on, on this. Yeah, if, you would, if you would get a dollar for every time his position was reached, you know? That... Yeah, that, that would be the best investment, yeah. I know. Yeah, look at to King F3 or King, I mean, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and Pug is getting mentally ready for the for the blitz because this will be very tough. Look at this. He's not, not even getting up from the board. Ah, okay, this is not a way to play for a draw. Yeah, we know this. Everyone knows it. And just exchanging all, all, all pieces thoughtlessly doesn't do the trick. Never did this. Never. Yeah, but look at this. Anish is not even leaving. Yeah, like he's also very happy. Ah, because he's trying to understand what is happening. Yeah, that when they will continue. And, and, and who, gets, who gets the color? Yeah, so Prague apparently will choose the color. Yeah, He'll Prague probably selecting. Choose black because he will not like to see white color for a while. You think so? Yeah. I mean, he just had a white game and look what happened to it. No, I mean, just look at this. Well, but uh, I mean, here he is now very upset because it happened because he only played for a draw, yeah. But if if he can play again a real game like where he is so good at, yeah, just forget about draw, just play your best chance. Then well, there is uh, nothing wrong with playing for a draw. He just didn't do it well. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, okay, we have the match situation. So Magnus Carlsen has won two and a half half against Arjun Arigaishi. And there was also, wow, we are getting the message. Yeah, this is the most important breaking uh, in news that the Blitz playoff will start at 11 past the hour. So basically in nine minutes. Oh my God, actually Anish won two games, yeah, to come back into this Two match. games in a row, yeah. exactly. Oh my God. Okay, we still have like nine minutes. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the shortest of all breaks. Yeah, well, maybe actually we need to because I also need to recharge after after this roller coaster mm -hmm. and we felt like, okay, Prague is uh, getting there, then it looked like Anish is winning, then suddenly the time trouble, there were all these uh, crazinesses. Of course, completely crazy. Look and game, don't blame the players that uh, with 10 seconds on the look, they did not play perfectly. But it's a, it's a good time to, to take a, maybe two, three minutes break and we'll be back then. For sure. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, 
with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India. Seriously? Checkmate! Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew! Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have unpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I win Bishop C5, D4 and Queen 4 Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to trophy. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. To study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. It's time to take control of your journey. Welcome back, everyone. We have just witnessed the sensational comeback by Anish Giri. I mean, uh, after 
being done 0-2 against Prague, we thought like that's it. Prague was also showing some incredible performance there in the first two games. And then Anish won a very convincing third game. Then this fourth game was was a roller coaster ride because, okay, Prague had everything under control. It looked like Anish will never create any chances for himself. But then suddenly Prague just played for a draw. Rustam called it, no, that's not the way. And then Anish, we could also see how he was getting more and more confident that he has a chance and managed to bounce back and now it's all tied 2-2. But hang on, Rustam. Prague did select the white pieces. So it's, it signals me that he wants to put all his anger into his, this next game. Well, maybe, yeah, but oh, it's very difficult to come back from this, yeah. You 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 already thought you won, and suddenly you have to play two more Blitz games, possibly an Armageddon. Uh, my money would not be on on Pragnananda. Yeah, this is now a very double edged sword. That uh, I mean, uh, on one hand, it's great to see that he has this character that after losing two games, he wants to go on and and play with the white pieces. On the other hand. Uh, I think that in order to perform your best, you have to calm down. Yeah, if if suddenly he plays out of anger, especially against a player like Anish, it can heavily backfire. He has to play his best chess, calm chess, not not to rush and not to force things. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, basically, one minute the match is supposed to start. Are the players getting ready? I do see that that's Anish, yeah, there. Walking calmly in the playing hall. Yes, Anish. And taking uh, taking inspiration from the view. But I think after winning two games in a row, yeah, coming back, uh, you are inspired anyway. I mean, just, just like you put it so eloquently, yeah. It already feels good to be alive, yeah. <laughs> well, the players are fresh, yeah. They don't feel this night session. It's San Francisco. Uh, they are in their comfort zone right now. And the players did arrive ready to take on the Blitz playoff. Now I don't think we're gonna see Karo Khan. Do you agree? Um yeah, probably now it will be back to normal, but also yeah, ah, but D4, all D4 right. Opening. London system from now it's already blitz repair to, right the, the, the different openings will kick in I can't really recall Pluck playing the London but it's certainly a surprise however how do you surprise Anish and Anish goes G6 Knight C3 so we're gonna see this I mean reverse rate business yeah now this is very fashionable this is what they call Jabava system, right? Or... Yeah, Jabava system. And also this is... H4. I mean, H4, there is also Bishop E2 and then slow chess so with Knight B5, yeah, all these kind of things. Mm. Or H4 just to go H5 and sacrifice, yeah. At least, basically, Plug is trying to play aggressively and get Anish out of book, yeah? So it, it makes certain sense. Knight of the castle, knight e5 or queen d2, queen d2. And knight e5 and bishop d3 look a bit more natural to me. Yeah, knight e5 and then, yeah, c5 comes now. But I think I've never played, like, London in my life. Only maybe when I was, like, eight or so. Not since then. Me neither. I just always felt like, you know, London is for lazy guys. And I, out of principle, I wanted to prove myself, you know, the hard worker. But in fact, now London changed so much, yeah? Well, I mean, these lazy guys in London, they work so much, yeah, to make it playable. Exactly. <laughs> just everything changed. Yeah, Long Castle. But okay, now I'm really not liking what Plug is doing, yeah? Because all this CDD, Bishop F5, and then the C2 weakness... It looks like the most fantastic dragon for black, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, and, and this knight on CC is a bit strange, yeah. Awkward yeah, no, piece. Just not, not a good position for white, I think. But then again, yeah, he's not trying to get a good position, yeah? he's trying to get some sort of a mess. And yeah, C takes d4 played, yeah, bishop f5, yeah, and then f3, knight b4, g4, bishop c2 probably will not work for white. Yeah? 
Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, now night before seems to be a threat. Yeah, take take f3, queen a5. It just feels that white is half a move too short. Yeah, also rook c8 is a big threat. Yeah, just bringing the rook very comfortably. Yeah, and I remember there was, I think, some some Nakamura Karakin game. Yeah, that uh, that Karakin won was blocked very easily in some in some tournament. But how did uh, Karakin ever put uh, the pawn to g6 and bishop on g7? I think it somehow happened. Aha, uh -huh, it happened, yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was Rajab, but maybe I'm mixing something up. Yeah, it's also possible. Yeah, because somehow it, uh, it, it's a bit tricky, but okay. Bishop f5 and, and Prague has to make up his mind. Yeah, the, the move that White would love to play is fc with the idea of g4. But yeah, there is all this idea with knight b4, rook c8. Bishop b5 played computer hates it. We hate it as well. I mean, Bishop b5 can't be a good move. Well, he wants he's he's going into defensive mode. Yeah, knight b4, bishop a4. Yeah, but and oh then my potentially God, no. b5 will probably just win somehow. No, F4. this doesn't work like this. I mean, chess doesn't work like this. Yeah, chess is not like this. Yeah. No, yeah, bishop bishop a4, b5. Uh, um, it's probably a bit tilted also. Yeah, he's tilted. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that he's tilted. Bishop a4 played. Also, now he's not anymore up on the clock. Yeah, that's what frightens me because at least I felt like uh, Prague is playing very quickly. There will be a chance to put pressure on Anish on, on the clock. Yeah, b5 blitzed out. It's not, not a particularly good position, yeah. Anish is getting the momentum, yeah. Yeah, he will probably end up losing like four games in a row, yeah? Just uh, something. Could easily happen, yeah. I mean, if, if he loses this, then he will be in a must-win situation with black against Anish, which already also invites trouble. Yeah, you, you can't really take on b5 with the bishop because the c2 pawn is hanging. Uh, if you take with the knight, then, uh, okay, all kinds of queen a5s plus knight a2s and, and whatever. Yeah, I just don't things. know. Don't even know how to calculate this knight b5, queen a5, b3, rook c8. It just looks like why we exactly that rook fc8 is the, the rook is joining the party. So Plug goes for bishop b5. Yeah, he wants to keep the knight on c3. But uh, this knight actually can later be traded with the other knight. You yeah, with, with some knight e4. So it's it's not not a guarantee that this knight stays there forever. Yeah. Queen a5, rook c8. Uh... Queen a5, maybe white has knight c6, but I didn't have time to calculate this. I thought maybe knight c6 is strong now, or like gives chances. Knight c6, take... but even then, knight takes a2 is also possible, but knight... even just take on c6 and look fc8. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay hd played. Both play, I mean, plug down to two and a half minutes against 315. But again, now it's a chance, right? Because knight c2, knight c6. Knight a1, the knight takes, knight a5. takes a5. Yeah, one therefore, yeah, protecting <laughs> against mate, yeah. Just to show this knight c2, knight c6, hitting mm. the queen. I wanted to trick uh, white with knight a1, knight b3, but knight takes a5 protects, takes the queen and protects against checkmate. So be careful, don't play for the gallery. Yeah, don't do this at home. Yeah. yeah. Also, so probably, knight a2 check is possible, but we don't want to play like this. No, probably just rook fc8, yeah, and just challenge white to make a move threatening c3 like what what you gonna do now uh, makes perfect sense but i mean look fc8 maybe a b queen a1 knight b1 look fc8 played and this is apparently a mistake anish is playing for the galleries but uh, can can i just take on b4 yeah this is probably what what he just didn't look at yeah a b yeah a, B, Queen, A1, Knight, B1, and then you take on C2, I sacrifice everything, and then we have two pieces and the Rook for the Queen. That's a lot, yeah. Wow, and Anish is thinking like, what did I do? I mean, I had this golden opportunity, everything was totally under control, and yeah, Prague is not, not missing such chances. The Beast is awakened, That that's how I feel. I mean, this this will be punished now, and, and Anish will be regretting this. 
giving the chance to to Prak to to show his talent not a good idea uh, still looks like a completely unclear position to me knight e4 queen somewhere a5 you know just yeah but at least i mean Prague is in the game yeah there i mean he lost two games in a row he was completely tilted as you said yeah i perfectly mm -hmm. agree and now he knows that he can fight yeah there is something to fight for well he at least has a piece yeah i mean he was so dead lost but now he actually has a piece to show for his troubles yeah now anish has to show some brilliancy how to keep this going mm -hmm. I think rook c2 is probably wrong, so probably knight e4, a5. Yeah, rook c2, basically, four. practically, I think it's it's over because even the queen is trapped. Yeah, the queen is not well, yeah? So he needs to, to really play for mate. Yeah, knight e4 is good because it it prevents white king from escaping on d2. Yeah, also uh, loses the, yeah, knight e4 plays. Mm -hmm. Played, yeah, it's also, we see the computer says that black is perfectly fine. It's a, it's a mess. For some reason, I felt queen e3 was more natural than queen e2. But I mean, okay, of course, Prague wants to keep an eye on the c2 point. He's dreaming of rook h3. Yeah, he would love to sacrifice this rook. But a5, yeah, a5 and play for mate. Yeah, you are scaring me with this a5. Well, I think you're right to be scared. You are scaring me, and I know that you are very dangerous if you get what you want. Down to 48 seconds. Anish needs to find some brilliance is here. A5 on the board. Rustam called it. Yeah. Wow. And computer agrees. Wow, wow, wow. A5 on the 90 for A5 out of despair because, of course, it was not planned. Anish uh, probably faced with horror that what he has done to his brilliant position. Yeah, but Bishop... C6, it's just mate, yeah. Bishop C6, A, B, Bishop D5, Knight C3, yeah. And then, so with the Queen on E3, White had this Queen A3 sort of bailout, yeah. This, uh, this I saw with the Queen on E2, no such bailout exists. Yeah, that that was the key, yeah. That Queen B3 or Queen A3 trading the the Queens, yeah. And this is now, and now Prague has to find something, but how can he find something, yeah? I don't think he'll find something. I think the best he got is probably like bishop e8 and then b5, but uh, but it will not help. If it opens up, it opens up. Yeah, there is no way to defend. Yeah, it's just. Uh, I mean, rook h3. What do you do? Probably just. Okay, knight c6 played. Yeah, knight c6 probably just a b. Just give everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a b played. Yeah, very difficult to to stop uh, an avalanche. Rook A2 is a threat. Yeah, Rook A2 is a mating threat, yeah. Uh oh. It it looked like there is hope for Prague, but it seems to vanish. 97 check. 97 is really not gonna help. Well, he wants to get rid of this F5 monster, yeah, but Rook A2 comes. Rook A2 is just kind of mate, yeah. This is uh... so brutal. Uh, this is, yeah, I mean, today was the evening of, of dwindling hope. Yeah? He would get hope and then it would dwindle and then he would get more hope and then it would dwindle again, right? Yeah, it's it, it's a crazy fight. Yeah, and, and it's only 20 moves played. Rook A2 will be played on the board. Yeah, also White has zero counterplay, zero checks. Yeah, I mean, Queen H5 is a check, but it's not very helpful. In fact, Black's position is so strong that after Queen H5, I can go King G8, yeah, and still win. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, look, this is okay, but this is checkmate. I mean, basically, even maybe Rook takes B2, yeah? Well, in fact, Queen B2, Queen takes B1, and then Rook takes C2 is the most dominant position we've seen so yeah. far. Uh, just... That's it, and the designs, and, and Prague is in a lot of pain. I guess yes. Yeah, Queen is three. Okay, this is this is such a hopeless position. Yeah, down to eight seconds now. The players have three seconds bonus, but oh, he can just take all pieces. Yeah, knight f two, knight takes d three, queen c one, and uh... and the rook on h one is also and it's also mate. Yeah, <laughs> just also mate. 
was some of them. That's really not helpful, yes. Look at it, wow, playing for, for the gallery. I'm not sure how it's playing for the gallery, but it will not hurt, yeah. I mean, okay, but just to put the look M3, yeah, then okay, now he just takes everything. Will he play queen b2, look cc, or will he just take and take on h1? Yeah, professional. Yeah, that's it. Prague resigns, and now Prague will be in a must win situation with the black pieces. What a turn of events. Yeah, no, this was this was a uh, a very nice attack, even if it was not perfectly well played. But uh, it was a very very nice attack. Yeah, Anish is definitely very pleased with himself. I think that he he bounced back. He had that uh, power performance in the third game. Yeah, then in the fourth game he showed some incredible technique, and now he managed to show some uh, brilliant attack. Yeah, it's. Uh, but nothing is over yet. Now all eyes on Prague. Prague needs to win in five minutes. Basically now in four minutes time, we're going to see the second blitz game. And Prague has to win suddenly. He's in a must-win situation. What do you think? Is there a way for Prague uh, back from here? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it's not just uh, the difficulty of the task. Of course, it's always possible to win a blitz game with Black, but he will be broken. I mean, even when you are 17 and brilliant and very stable, losing three games in a row for no reason uh, breaks you. Exactly. It just breaks you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the problem. And we have already seen him in this blitz game kind of tilted, yeah, because, yeah, he did get a chance by, because uh, Anish somehow mixed up by sacrificing... Mm, the the pieces, but in general the picture didn't look good. That's, no, the that's picture the problem. Didn't look good, and his chance that he got was a bit random. Yeah, uh, Anish actually winning with a mating attack was not random. Yeah, it was it was built up. It was well executed. It was not not bad at all. Yeah, basically it was the logical follow up, but there did did happen this moment that after ninety four. The move that you called out that queen e3 was was the way to go with the idea queen a3. But I still think like a5, I would probably lose this. Because queen a5, a3, queen a3, 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 b, yeah? Queen a1, rook a1, and uh, f3, knight c3 was my plan. And I think that somehow black would probably win this. So despite that we traded the queens, you are... bc, bc. So... Optimistic, yeah, because I'm completely pegged. Well, this is a mate forever, you know. <laughs> I mean, you just want some rook b8, rook b5, yeah? Yes. Okay, maybe you can play knight c6. Or I, I have to play knight c6, yeah. Maybe maybe you can sort of hold me, yeah? Rook c7. No, hang on, I have a bishop I know, I know, on f4. Sorry, yeah? um, because I have bishop h6, but you have f4, yeah? So I have f4. Quite... Luckily, I have f4, yes. That... Uh -huh. No, maybe you can hold me, yeah? Yeah, but okay, it's uh, it's clear that yeah, this this is very dangerous. But it should have been played. Yeah, this mm -hmm. this queen e two a five probably Prague just completely missed the a five idea. He was thinking that I keep an eye on the c two pawn. I gonna go rook h three and and it's fine. But a five was just mm -hmm. just in time. Yeah, I think queen e two was also kind of a bit um, yeah underestimated. Um... The danger, he didn't feel the danger. Ah, we are getting told that also, yeah, the, the point is that when you have queen on e3, then after a5, black, I mean, white can go knight c6. Ah, yeah, yeah, and then you have queen b3 at the end defending from mate. Right? Exactly, yeah, this is a, this is a big point. Mm -hmm. I mean, also against rook a2 is not a threat, yeah, and, and this, this is the key, yeah. Well, such a little difference can can cause the match. Yeah, I mean, okay, the the match should have been won long ago for Prague, of course, after getting the two zero lead. But uh, yeah, it, it's not not the reason why he should be kicking himself. That's that's what I'm trying to to mm -hmm. say. In any case, a spectacular blitz game.
Wow, 1.30 at night, Central European time, and we know nothing yet. Uh, Anish has won three games in a row, getting the lead. The players are getting there, ready for the last or the penalty mate. I mean, who knows, if, if Prague pulls a rabbit out of his head and, and bounces back from this, then, then all hell will get loose. I mean, this, 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 this will be completely out of control. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if he manages to to sort of pull off a proper game. Yeah, that's that's the big question. And now we won't be seeing any extravagance from Anish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he goes knight f3. It will be Catalan, or he, he will go for yeah. So bishop b4 check played, going for the Bogo Indian. Anish... It turned out this is just not a very good opening. Yeah, this this one. I you found out Bogo, to, my, yeah? to my surprise that oh, this is what we learned. Yeah, this bishop g2 now, bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, knight e4, queen c2 is actually good for white. Yeah, I was very surprised. Ah, it's standing good, yeah, for white. This, yeah, well, this was this used to be a, a trick for black, right? That he goes knight c6 and then bishop d2, so that white cannot recapture with the queen. Uh, but computer disagrees with this one. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. There were some some recent games, but already some couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think computer just disagrees with the whole premises of uh, what our education was built on. Yeah, but okay. At least I mean, Prague has a plan. Yeah, he is trying to play a slow game at the same time keeping the pieces. Um, there is some hope. Yeah, I mean, he gets to play a game. Takes takes e five. If he somehow gets a stable structure, but uh, White is by no means forced to play d5. Uh, there is no true desperation without a little bit of hope. Yeah, yeah d takes c5, d takes c5 has to be played. Queen c2 stopping bishop f5. Very important. Yeah, normally he can make some moves. Yeah, a5, bishop g4, whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, bishop g4, but I mean, bishop g4, usually in the reality, they go for this. Somehow they target this bishop over here. You can't do that. Well, maybe you can go h3, bishop h5, knight h4, knight d4. and uh, But okay, white, white has actually a good position. Yeah? He can do pretty much whatever he likes. Yeah, he opted for rook d one Yeah, the big question is black needs to win. So just going for some rook ad trades doesn't feel like it will help. Yeah, queen e6. It does not stop h3 because of knight g5, but black wants to go bishop f5. That's the idea. Well, I mean, h3, bishop h3, knight g5, queen f5. Is also possible, yes. It's some something, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, in general, of course, yeah, black wants to fight for the f5 square. Also hitting the c4 pawn. I mean, I'm kind of liking what uh, Prague is doing. I mean, I know that it's almost an impossible task to disbalance Anish, but he's trying something. Yeah, this is not bad. Yeah, it could be much worse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, give him one more move to play h6, yeah, then, then we would be... Thinking like maybe we have something under control. Queen e6, nice, nice little move. Forces Anish to spend some time. How how do you deal with this, or let Anish deal with it? Yeah, I I, I mean I know I've, I've seen a, a a game like this recently that. Uh... If black gets to play all his moves, that then white's um, bishops they get really neutralized. Yeah, look at this, and he goes knight g5, but c4 pawn is hanging. What am I missing? What are we missing? Queen c4. Maybe he thought bishop d5 and blundered queen takes e2. Yeah, queen takes c4 played. Bishop d5 played. Yeah, queen queen e2, e2. Yeah. Rook d2. And then, I don't know queen a6. Yeah, queen a6. I mean, okay, in any case for Prague, this is this is the chance, yeah, that, okay, he has nothing to lose. If it works, it works. But why would Anish go for this? And he goes for queen c5. He doesn't take on e2. 
Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, queen e2, rook d2, queen a6. Maybe it looks awfully dangerous over the board. But I don't get it. Yeah, he has really nothing to lose. Yeah. He... So apparently, yeah, queen e2 was just bad for white. It's interesting, yeah, how quickly he... Maybe he just didn't see e2 was hanging. Yeah, because there is always this mutual hallucination option. Yeah, in in a in a blitz game, especially also in a rapid, that you believe your opponent, yeah, and you think like, ah, queen e two, rook d two, and I'm getting mated. My queen is in terrible shape. So, but, yeah, but you shouldn't believe your opponent. Well, no, especially you know you must win, and you can go two points up. Why not? Yeah. But in fact, okay, one point up is also not so bad. Yeah, he's a. Uh... He's a minute up on the clock. He's uh, a pawn up in the position. And uh, Anish is, uh, seems to be malfunctioning a bit. Yeah, suddenly he's up on the scoreboard. Yeah? And he has just played a brilliant mating attack. Yeah, it's, uh, He needs to calm down and just focus on this game. So we have to say that yeah, the time control is 5 plus 3 seconds. Yeah, the, This is the usual... Matt Water Champions Chess Tours uh, regulation for the Blitz playoff. I kind of really like it. I, I don't like immediately to jump to, to 3 plus 2 because I feel like the players have played a rapid time control. 5 plus 3 is much more like a normal way of, of blitzing than, than 3 plus 2. 5 plus 3 is still much closer to rapid, right? Exactly. 94 played by Anish. Now he just wants to stabilize the position. After all, he only needs a draw. Queen e7. Can he get a technical position? Well, I think he can maybe take on f6. So take on c6 now. Bc, take on f6 and then play queen e4. Or yeah, just... looks, looks very solid. Yeah, and then this is like Catalan f3, queen e3, and then he actually gets a technical position. Yeah, very promising to to make a unbreakable position for himself. But uh, he's hesitant and he's done to a minute. Only one minute, 10 seconds. Yeah, bishop c6, bc, yeah, takes, takes. Of course, this is the this is the way to go. White has this beautiful bishop on c3. And I wouldn't rule out that plug even takes GF knowing the match situation. No, he takes queen. Yeah, I think GF is just too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's too bad. But okay, the, the desperate time score for desperate measures. But yeah, yeah queen f6. That's what Ali Reza did at the candidates, right? Against Nakamura. Yeah, it was. Just out of the blue taking G takes. Uh, G takes wow, but f4, why? I mean, you only need a draw, why not just queen e4? The, the players are losing their minds. But queen g6. What is this? Trade of queens? How can you win this? Uh, queen g6 is uh, yeah, just take and rook d2, right? Yeah, no, I, I think Plug uh, lost his nerves because he was three minutes up on the clock. I mean, he needs to win. Just don't trade whatever. Uh, queen e7, yeah, keep the queens. and. Uh, I mean, queens whatever, also... yeah. it's uh, At least uh, opponent weakens something. Maybe there is a chance, but... Yeah. Now, sometimes he's too fast. Yeah, now takes, takes, Anish will go rook d2, just defend this only weakness, and then king f2. Or king f2 first, yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, rook but again, d2. he does have very little time left, right? Uh... Yeah, he played this game very... I mean, it shows how nervous he was. Yeah, this is very strange. Rook f8, rook d2. Because maybe, maybe Prague thinks that he just will win this very easily. Bishop f5 and then f6... Yeah, who knows? I mean, okay, he, he got some chance. I also did not understand why not rook d2 and then try to be ready to immediately play some, I don't know, what. it's strange. Yeah, but you can also play rook e4, right? Rook e4, then rook d4, I guess this is Anish's idea. Rook e8, uh, are you happy? Yeah, and then, okay, we, we trade, then I put pawn on e3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, f6. Yeah, your, your move f6. Yeah, this makes sense. Anyway, rook d4 played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prague is up on the clock, but there is three seconds increment. 
King F7, there is a vulnerable pawn on H2. This is the idea. Yeah, Rook yeah, H8. He, found, he found that pawn, yeah. He find that weak spot. Yeah, H4, Rook H8 will be played, and Rook H5 trying to double and get access to White's King. Mm -hmm. There is this special extra spice that you need to win a game. Rook H8. Doesn't look like it will be enough, right? No, Rook H5, I'm, I'm a believer now. No, because at the end, he's not really threatening anything because White can take on A7, take on C7, or maybe even just go Rook H1. Yeah, and, uh... yeah that's why Prague played A6, but now at least White has some headache. Yeah, he has to spend time. It's oh. not, a, not a routine do anymore. Rook D1, Rook H5. E4. Wow, E4. And, and this whole Rook H8, Rook A6, Rook H4 is... I mean, it looks very scary. Now, maybe we'll have to calculate. Maybe Rook takes A6, Rook H4, Rook C6, and then run, yeah? And then run, yeah. But, I mean, Rook G4 check. Ah, Rook H8, Rook H1, he first protects, but... Um, and after G5? I thought G5 would come in handy. I also thought that G5 will come, but uh, Anish is G5, not worried. Maybe G5 is F5, like positional understanding. But that's already two pawns here, yeah? taking bishop C8. Yeah, it's uh, this isn't so simple. G5 on the board. Also, maybe FG, FG, look, F1 check, but uh, G doesn't G look... G6, yeah, with 20 seconds. Good yeah. luck defending this. No, Prague is actually fighting back. Anish down to 13 seconds. Will we see a miracle? We've seen enough miracles today. I don't think that it was enough. King G6 and then Rook A6, yeah? GH and King H2. And suddenly White gets counterplay. Yeah, but maybe I take with the rook on h4 and then rook g4 check I'm coming. Anish goes hg5. I think we have lost the evaluation bar. It can't be that this is 0-0. Zero, zero. Rook takes g5 or... Wow, well, um, Anish down yeah. to 8 seconds. Rook g5, king f2 should be dangerous for white. Yeah, although I don't Should see be. That. I mean, I'm never buying this that this is equal. Yeah, no, this you shouldn't buy. It, it it can't be with this king running around. Of course, the bishop on c3 gives the stability, but rook g5 check. King f2. Look, but the, the bar is alive, yes? Seeing that white is not running away. Rook h2, king e3. I wouldn't check him into safety. I don't understand this. Like, why give rook h2 check if you don't have a follow-up? Yeah, because the king might run away. Just bishop c8, yeah. And bishop c8, rook f8, I don't understand this. Very yeah, sad, what? yeah. But king h7 played, this is losing momentum. Rook f2, rook g3, rook f3. Wow, and now the king is super safe on the dark squares. Yeah, and white will take on a6. Yeah, he whatever chance he had, yeah, he probably lost it. Yeah, there was a chance for a miracle. And also now with the clock situation, the nerfs, everything. Yeah, he lost the momentum. Now nah, this one will not help. Yeah, against Anish, it's impossible. Yeah, now he has bad bishop, bad structure. Yeah, and rook e5, e7, yeah, there is just there is just no no mechanism for this. Yeah. And so easy the hand plays for white, you don't need to think. Rook c5 down to nine seconds. Bishop d7, rook, e, rook a5. So Anish keeps on harassing the a pawn. Oh, now he will run the g-pawn uh, to an unclear destiny. Okay, g4 check. Let's continue. g4, king g3. King um, h5, yeah, this is the problem. Rook a8 and then the rook comes from behind. So Prague wants king g4. Rook 
Rook G it feels like a mouse slip and probably doesn't hurt. No, he's harassing the, the, the G5 pawn. Mm -hmm. Now where to go? With 10 seconds on the clock. By the way, Pragosa has only 13 seconds. Yeah, Bishop C4 check. But I think it's just there's just no potential for black. Yeah, and then yeah. Bishop's, Bishop A2, yeah, just snatch that pawn. Yeah? yeah, white is also collecting. Yeah, there is not much material left. Five seconds for Prague. Bishop C4. Three, yeah. two. And then Bishop B5. He goes back with the rook. Yeah, he protected the pawn. He okay, forced white king this is away. Still playable, yeah. I mean, you have passed pawn and you have rooks. Exactly. I mean, this rook d3, rook d6 was great. Rook g7. I take the pawn and bishop d bishop g6. Yeah, and then if. Wow! Wow! Okay, this is some some drama. Rook, rook d5, d5, bishop f6. Not, sure, not sure how I feel about rook d5, but maybe it's great. Yes. Yeah, okay. Protecting the pawn. Bishop protects the c6 pawn. Yeah, and Danish can take and king c5. Oh my god. Beautiful save. Plug is I told so you, upset. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about rook d5. I did tell you. Did I not tell you? You told me. You called it. Yeah, this. king c5 and then b4, b5. Prague cannot believe. This is so lucky, yeah? And Anish removes the headphone. He knows that he doesn't need it. That's it. What a match. Wow, what a match. I want to hear the interviews. I mean, this was really so much of an emotional roller, roller coaster ride. I mean, big congratulations for Anish for this stunning comeback. And of course, we, we feel for Prague. Let's hear it from San Francisco here from the winner <laughs> Anish a smile on your face a tough tough day can you take us through the match no I mean I was of course very lucky um, I think I played a good third game but coming back from 2-0 is very hard and in the fourth game I was just lucky he had um, um, I'm slightly worse in the end game and uh, winning that is just impossible without his enormous help I want to ask you, what was your mindset after that game two? You're down by two match points. Did you still have faith that you can come back in this match? I was not that focused on the match situation. Um, I knew, to be honest, up front that today um, I'm going to play risky stuff and um, I, I could, uh, it could end badly. But I thought um, the circumstances were good. I played uh, well yesterday. He played bad yesterday. So I thought if I'm ever going to go, go try and uh, do something different, it's going to be today. But it didn't work out. But at the same time, I knew that, um, well, I had still an idea to play with the white pieces. So I wanted to play a good game in game three. I didn't think necessarily of coming back uh, all the way, but I just wanted to play a good game because uh, what gives you confidence is most, mostly your games, not your results. You mentioned you wanted to play risky from, from the very start. Was that part of the plan, playing against Prague? Yeah, but of course it backfired. Um, and the second game, uh, he... Okay, at some point I was defending already, and then in the end uh, he found some very dirty stuff. This knight h8, uh, like I already thought it's already draw, and then he found knight h8, and then I have two different checks with the knight. I thought mine is more accurate, but then I missed king h6, and it was uh, uh, it was very resourceful on his part. Uh, we both, um, he even had less time, but uh, okay, his position was risk-free and easier to play. And finally, uh, the fact that I had like I don't know 30 seconds against 10 wasn't of, of enough help. But that game, yeah, it was good on his part. Um, first game, I was the one where first and third game, but the third game is normal to take risks. Anish, now we were talking a lot about the shift in momentum. You were down by two points, and then you made back-to-back -back wins, coming back, taking it into tie breaks. We feel that as an audience and commentators, but what is that like for players? Do you also feel that there is a shift in momentum after getting these points? I don't think there is that. Uh, if you look at the history of the event, very often people after coming back lost anyway. But I think uh, what we can see time and again is that people play quite poorly in uh, must draw, must not lose situations. And even my last game, I played very poorly. But uh, I think that's just, it's really hard to get that out of your system. Even uh, Carlson is sometimes f f falling at this uh, hurdle. It's just really difficult to play with that mindset. What would you say was the turning point in today's match? I mean, of course, the fourth game, uh, I was not going to win in terms of the match. But in terms of like, uh, I would have been OK at that point, uh, even if I had lost. At least I played a good game three. I was very happy with that all the way. Um, so OK, I wouldn't be happy, but I, I would have something to, to enjoy today. But of course, after he lost the fourth game, then uh, I'm in business.
Two match wins, both in blitz. You're making a bit of a business out of that. <laughs> well, it's good to have just 24 as partners. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be. It wouldn't be a profitable business. All right. Well, congratulations once more. Thank you. Prague, it was a great start for you today, but it didn't go your way. What went wrong? I think everything went wrong. Um, yeah, the fourth game was crucial, and I thought um, I had a, like a risk-free position. Like um, I really thought that what could possibly go wrong there. I mean, I had this outside possible. Maybe even before that, I was winning, but I thought like this position, I can't lose uh, any time because okay, this outside pass pawn, and then okay. Just even without two, the, those two points on the queen side, I think it's holdable. But okay, it's just uh, yeah, I just started to panic a little bit after this rook f1 and uh, knight h4 stuff. Yeah, that was just bad. Was it tough after that to go into this blitz tie break? Uh, yeah, it was tough uh, because okay, I, I had like I had to make a draw in two games and okay, lost both. And also in the <clears throat> first game, I was probably lost. In the opening, but then I think I got a very good chance after I won the piece. But then it's not uh, easy when you have less time, like 30 seconds, to find the precise moves. So, okay, th then in the last game, I think I had a chance after I won the e4 pawn. Like I could maybe put the bishop on b5 and then try to play with the g pawn. But I just missed that rook g5, just makes it easy draw. Prague, you mentioned that the fourth game was so critical and we felt that you played so well up till a certain point, but then it just it seemed as if move by move it was getting passive. Do you think there was this thing that you wanted to be too solid in that game? You mean the fourth game? Yeah? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I should have probably just forgot that I just had to make a draw. Like there were probably so many ways that I could just continue pushing for a win even. And um, yeah, it's just bad that uh, I lost. I mean, the thing was that even like when I got this A pawn, I could just maybe come back with the bishop or or do something else. Like there are probably 100 ways to make a draw there. So it's just upsetting that I lost that position. Two amazing wins and then tie break. Anything can happen, Prague. It was a tough match at the end. But in happier news, congratulations on the Arjuna Award. Yeah, thanks. Huh. And share with us, what does it mean for you? Yeah, it means a lot. It's uh, um, highest award for the sport uh, in India. So it's... Uh, it definitely feels good and um, it will motivate not only me but also other players and I, I hope uh, other players also take up chess seriously like other other rank kids, let's say. It's really big for the chess community because chess hasn't won an Arjuna award since 2013. Yeah, it's uh, good that they're recognizing chess back now and yeah, it's, it'll be nice if they give uh, awards every year and I, I think it's going to happen so yeah, it's good for the game. What was your first reaction when you found out that this year you'll be conferred with the award? Yeah, I was surprised. I wouldn't say surprised because I don't know, like I just felt happy, but I was not sure what to, what to feel. We were not surprised that you, Prague, absolutely deserved. Congratulations one more time and all the best for tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, wow, I mean, it was... Uh... Very hard to, to watch this interview because uh, one could feel that poor Prague was so upset, uh, so, um, I mean, how, how to call it? I mean, just so sad, yeah, that, and ashamed also kind of that he let this match uh, run away from him, yeah. He was blaming it on game four that, yeah, he had everything under control, absolutely. I mean, he was playing the game well and then suddenly with this knight d7 trade, you immediately called it Rustam, yeah, that it, it was the wrong direction. Yeah, also, I felt from his interview that um, even after the match, he did not quite understand the dangers of this type of an endgame. I think this is one of those things that comes with an experience, right? You lose a game like this and then another one, and someone you understand these positions are not so easy. Yeah, the one, yeah, once this knight uh, d7 trade, yeah, the knight on c5 should have not been traded. I really feel for Prague, yeah, because it was the big day. Yeah, we heard that he got an incredible award in, in India, but Knowing chess players, yeah, if you lose a match and you lose a match in the way he lost it, then okay, no matter what kind of award or prize you will be awarded, you, you just can't get that out of your mind.
what just happened. Well, yeah, but uh, luckily for him, he has five more days of chess, so there will be plenty opportunities to forget about today. Yeah, this is the best therapy. I mean, uh, basically, if he plays tomorrow a good game, he immediately gets back the confidence, then he forgets everything. But he has to he has to get rid of this this tilt. And he said that in the second blitz game, yeah, there was also at the end this this chance. Yeah, well, you you immediately, I mean, you have this incredible instinct. Yeah, you said you don't like rook d5, and then it ran into this uh, mm -hmm. end game with with rook take g5. Prague was also very upset about this otherwise with few seconds on the clock he could have played a very long game yeah no it looked like he was he was actually winning it also anish had no time and uh, and the game was slipping from him but then yeah anish got lucky with this uh, with that he had this tactic suddenly it was a, it was a draw but okay these things happen in blitz a lot yeah yes of course it's basically uncontrolled territory already with with few seconds on the clock how do you keep the focus the, the mouse, how you are playing the moves, because sometimes I believe that even your hand does not make the move that actually you your brain dictates. Yeah, it's uh, I, I don't know how this uh working exactly. Do, do you have experience with little time on the clock and uh, playing online? Well, I, I, I know that even over the board, when you have little time, then at some point, just things are not controllable, right? You just make some moves, your opponent makes some moves, it's a complete chaos. Yeah? Yeah, well, I mean, basically, we had this incredible dramatic match, yeah, between Anish Giri and, and Pragnanda. Bouncing back from, from a losing situation, Anish Giri managed to win another, I mean, first of all, tie the match and then win another Blitz playoff. Maybe let's take a look at the results and uh, let's take a look at the standings. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so basically, we have witnessed this dramatic match between uh, Anish Giri and Pragnanda, which ended with... Uh, with the blitz playoff, Anish taking it. Uh, Magnus Carlsen did win two and a half half, but it wasn't as smooth as as the the scoreboard shows because there was this incredible third game. Yeah, when White had everything under control. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that match? Well, I mean, I have a feeling that that Arjun is just not playing well these two games, these two days. Uh, so something is not quite right with him. Yeah, I mean. Um... Of course, he had a chance today. He had a chance yesterday, but in general, his 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 quality is below what we used to. I think. Yeah, but also let's not forget to mention he starts at one thirty a.m. Yeah, Indian time. It's definitely, uh, I think, something to do with it. Yeah, that he's mm -hmm. not as sharp as as usual because he has also set the the standards very very high. Then we had this big match between Duda and Mamed Yarov. What was your feeling? Uh, basically, Duda has finally won that match. Uh, I just have a feeling that Duda is just playing a bit better now. I mean, in this tournament, just he seems in a better shape. I mean, lost yesterday, lost today, and um, and Duda just seems very confident, very strong. Yeah, Duda is uh, Duda is doing great, but no, Mavadjalov has won yesterday. No, didn't he lose against Pragnan in the first round? No, pra Pragnanda lost uh, the the first match. No, Mavadjadov, I mean, we are losing, our, it's 2 a.m. I mean, sorry, guys. We also will bring up the standings to, to help us out because I only know that Anish has won two Blitz playoffs, so he has four points, that's guaranteed. Magnus Carlsen and Jan Shishtov Duda has six, six points, yeah. And uh, Liam with winning today uh, the, the match against Wesley So, that was kind of a stunning performance from Liam's side, countering uh, Wesley in the second game, and he also has four points. Shakri Amavajal of three points there. Uh, Pragnandana, one point. And Arjun Eligaishi and Wesley So, they both lost both their matches. So Wesley So, the winner of the Global Championship, is actually on last place shared with Arjun Eligaishi. What is your take on this? Yeah, there was, I mean, we have five more days. A lot of things happen. Yeah, it's just the beginning, but it's always very important to get a good start because you get the energy. Uh, well, we are trying to hold on. It's going to be a very tough week for, for all of us. I guess also for the fans, I would like to thank everyone for joining us, being with us despite this late hour. And uh, no matter where you are in the world, a lot of greetings, good night, good morning, whatever from, from us and uh, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Yeah, it will be very exciting. Yeah. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. That's it Bye. from us.
Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.